because it's my 50th birthday. Bestie since college. Celebrating 17 years of friendship on the Today Show. Today I turned 10. From, From now out in Maryland. Maryland. From El Segundo, California. To celebrate my baby 70th birthday. Today's season of Giving Food Drive is sponsored by Jenny O Turkey, making it easy to eat well. Here's the deal, gang. Uh, we are kicking off our season of Giving Food Drive in a big way this morning, just in time for Thanksgiving. All morning long, my good buddy Jacob Soboroff, who is in Chicago at a food bank, and I have been helping to unload turkeys while trying to break a Guinness World Record with the help of our friends, and our sponsor, it. Jenny O. But before we get to it, okay, there's, uh, you can see Jacob's group there. They're doing a good job. Uh, all you need to do is scan this QR code on your screen if you want to learn how to get support to local food banks in your community. It is so important, especially on this World Kindness Day. Here at City, uh, City uh, Harvest, in Brooklyn, we're getting near the finish line. We are attempting to break a Guinness World Record of the largest turkey donation in 24 hours. The number to beat, 142,000 pounds of turkey, which is roughly about 7,200, 7,600 turkeys. This morning, we are hoping to more than double that with more than 320,000 pounds of turkey, which would be about 15,000 birds. Whole operation started yesterday with eight semi-trucks filled at three different food banks in Chicago and here in New York. The race to unload the birds continues this morning. We happen to have one of our good friends, Michael Emprick, adjudicator from Guinness World Records, standing by. He has been watching, monitoring it all. But first, we want to bring in Jilly Stevens. She's the CEO of City Harvest. Jilly, nice to see you. Good thanks see for, you, thanks, thanks for inviting here. us here. So, uh, uh, what's the need this time of year? I would think it's probably one of the greatest times of year as far as food banks are concerned. It is a very important time of year, but always important to remember that the need is great year round. Mm -hmm. Here in New York City, we know that over 3 million working-age New Yorkers struggle to make ends meet, so that's a year-round problem. And what about the rest of the country? The same is mirrored in the rest of the country. Last month, the USDA released a report that lets us know that 44 million people in America are considered food insecure. That's an increase of 31% from the year before. Oh, my God. So, highest number of food insecurity rates we've seen since 2014, so it's a big problem. So, what kind of impact will this donation this year may. This is a fantastic donation. Um, everybody likes to celebrate Thanksgiving. Everybody or most people love a turkey and turkeys are hard, they're out of reach for many of the people that we're serving. So such an incredibly generous donation will go a very long way to helping thousands of New Yorkers and other people in Chicago put a meal on the table. Yeah, I guess whether we set a record or not, this is going to make a big impact. Record or not, All it's right. a fantastic impact. Jilly, thanks so much. In fact, you just mentioned Chicago. Let's go to Jacob Soboroff. Jake, what's going on there, buddy? Al, this is honestly, this is truly extraordinary and feels so incredible to be a part of the last turkeys. Where these guys, this is the Bucket Brigade. They are racing to beat the, you guys doing okay? All right, they're doing all right. They're racing to beat the clock so that we can all together hit this Guinness Book of World Records. This place is incredible. This is the Greater Chicago Food Depository. This is the CEO, Kate Mayer. Kate, thank you so much uh, for doing this. We really appreciate it. We are thrilled to have you here. Al, I was telling Kate and, and you guys, when you walk into this place, Kate, the scale of it is so massive. It is so impressive. But really what that says is that there is an extraordinary need in the Chicagoland area. Something like, what, one in four families with children. One in four families with children in Chicago go to sleep hungry, not knowing where their food's going to come from. Is that right? That's exactly right. And we see there is the need has always been high, but it has gotten higher over the last couple of years. Julie just referenced there was a USDA report that came out last month. 44 million Americans are struggling with hunger. 44 million Americans. Ultimately, you guys have 800 facilities all throughout the Chicago area. You got 230 something uh, employees, so many more volunteers. 
what happens with all of these turkeys once keep going keep going keep going once all the turkeys are loaded in and we count them for the record so the turkeys are going to quickly flow out across our community 800 food pantries and soup kitchens as you said and those in turn are going to serve our neighbors so people are going to show up at food pantries tomorrow and in the days ahead and there's going to be food for them for the holidays and beyond this time of year in particular thanksgiving Am I right that you're up in demand for food 13% over the same time last year? You are, and I would say this is a time of year when we tend to think about hunger, but I would also say we know that the need is all year round. So there are people turning to food pantries this fall. We anticipate it's going to be a difficult winter for a lot of Chicagoans. And so it just underscores the need for, organi- for, for donations like this, people to come out and support the work that we do. I guarantee you people are watching this as we attempt to set the Guinness record saying, I want to help. I want to be a part of the work that you do. What do they do? So the good news is there's a Feeding America Food Bank in every community where everybody is watching right now. And people can go to the Feeding America website and they can find out where there's a food bank, where they can volunteer and be a part of the solution. Okay, that's amazing. Kate, thank you so much again for doing this. And guys, thank you. how are we doing? We're doing all right? Woo! Come check it out. I'm going to take you guys up to the end here. Al, I'm going to throw it back to you because I know we want to get the counting started, all right. but it is looking good. It's really, really cold too. It, it really is. And you, you are a tough taskmaster, Jacob. I've got to tell you. Okay, here comes our last, our last <laughs> delivery of turkeys coming off the truck. Let's bring in Michael M. M. Perk. Michael, how you doing? Good to see well, you. I'm so glad to be here. It's a little cold. Yes. And I've seen all the turkeys come off the truck this uh, morning. So, did we set the record? So the mark to beat was 142,000 pounds. Today, Jenny O. had. 320,450 pounds. It's a new Guinness yes! World yes! Record title. Yes! Yes! Congratulations, yes! everyone. You're officially we amazing. Jacob, thank everybody in Chicago. And thank you to everybody here at City Harvest, all of our friends at Jenny O. This is fantastic. Job. Oh, my gosh. One of the most meaningful Guinness World Records we've ever sent. Absolutely. Michael, thank you so thank much. You so much. Really appreciate you. Thank everybody Ooh, at Guinness Absolutely. World. So great. And again, if you want to donate in your local community, just scan the QR code you see there on your screen, and you, too, can be a Thanksgiving hero in your community. All right. Back to you guys. We did it. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you, Al. Awesome. Brilliant, brilliant. brilliant. All right. Very we're gonna, cool. It was great. I feel like Al has a lot of world records. Yeah, he does. Right? Yeah. He does. Yeah. And he yeah. said that was one of his yeah. more meaningful ones. Yes. That's awesome. I, but, um, the internet broke this weekend. Yeah. I don't know if you guys were aware yeah. of this. And it's because of what happened over the weekend with Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, and all of their fans. All right. The pop superstar launched the South American leg of her Eras Tour, making headlines on and off the stage. Who else but... Emily Aketa could bring us details. Hey, Em. Good morning to you guys. Let me tell you, my jaw dropped when I saw this picture. It's the kiss scene around the world, viewed millions of times on social media. And that's just the icing on the cake for Swift, who not only sold out three shows in South America's largest venue this weekend, but she was also just nominated for six Grammy Awards. Over the weekend, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey appearing to make their romance official with a very public kiss. The sweet moment quickly going viral and throwing the internet into a frenzy. It happened after her show on Saturday, the pop superstar running off the stage and into Kelsey's arms, planting a kiss on his lips in full view of her fans. Swifties screaming their approval on social media. Kelsey taking advantage of an off week for the Chiefs to fly to Buenos Aires to spend time with his new sweetheart and see her in concert. And she did not disappoint. The singer even changing the lyrics of her Grammy nominated hit song Karma to reflect her current romance with the Super Bowl champion. The newest Chief Swift fan adorably holding his face in response and Swifties shrieking in glee. Swift's dad enjoying the moment as well. On Friday, the couple was also seen holding hands and heading to dinner after her concert was canceled for bad weather. We love you, Taylor. And one of Swift's surprise song selections further fueling speculation that she's falling in love. love. And it's not just her love life that's hitting on all cylinders. 
Swift was just nominated for six Grammys, including Song of the Year for Antihero, her seventh nomination in that category, breaking a record held by legends Paul McCartney and Lionel Richie, and further propelling her superstardom. And meanwhile, 1989 Taylor's version is having stunning success, even for the pop star who is used to topping the charts. The re-release was bigger than the rest of the top 50 albums on the Billboard 200 combined, according to Forbes, when looking at sales and streams. And guys, remember, this is her re-recorded album. It's mind-boggling. Wow. It really is. And Tom Yamas was in his closet looking at that video. Yeah, no, I, over I, over I, I, no, no, I was not, but I caught my wife Saturday night like... And I was like, what's going on? And she's like, I thought it was something serious. She's like, oh, my God, Travis Kelsey, you went to our... I was like, I can't. I was like, I'm, I'm out Same of here. Jen, same. Yeah. Me too. I was like, did that really, really happen? happen? Okay, let's Shout get this. Jen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Jen. No Even Kanan was looking at yeah, it, guys. Okay. Fans of the iconic 1997 film Good Burger, get ready to flip. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, it started with Kenan Thompson and Cal Mitchell was the zaniest fast food workers. <laughs> and now the long, long-awaited sequel, Good Burger 2, yeah. premieres exclusively on Paramount Plus next week. Keenan and Keller here. Guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What good took you. so long yeah. for Good Burger 2? It's just life. Time is. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, but it's yeah. here now. It's yeah. Here. yeah. I'm excited. It's the right time. Yeah, this is the day the right time. I kind of feel bummed out that Roger's not here because he's in this movie. He's coming Does he up. steal it? Like, what happens? Amazing job. He did an amazing job. Yeah, yeah it, it's super cool. We got like a weatherman Ed part in there. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he improv and everything. It was, oh, it was he awesome. Did his own oh, thing. Yeah. He expanded his yeah. role. Yeah. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. <laughs> Rope dog. <laughs> <laughs> he's coming back just to see you. He's in Brooklyn. He's on his way right yes. now. Yes. Yes. Right for the, the third hour. Yes. That's my guy. You guys grew up together. You came yeah. up in the business. You you had a huge career. And then you reunite. Did yeah. you guys, when you started shooting again, did you pick up right where you left off? I mean, was it so fun to be back together? Immediately, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like no time had passed yeah. when a lot of time had passed. But mm -hmm. it was such a, a pleasure because probably yeah. that hiatus, you know, like, you know what you miss when it's gone kind of thing. And... Man, it was just like such a pleasure to be working so much with my brother again. Like, yeah. who's most this guy makes me to... laugh the most. I was gonna say, yeah. who's most likely to break up when you shouldn't? Like you? No. Yeah, because <laughs> of him. Because of him. Yeah. Is that right? It's his fault. Like, he, just little subtle. It doesn't take much. It's just yeah. a little. Bit Did you go yeah. back and watch the original yeah. as you were thinking about doing the sequel, or you didn't need no. to, or was it like? You ready? Nah, yeah, like Ed just lives rent free in my brain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's there. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're so excited, Cal oh, Keenan. We're excited. By the way, uh, the, your baby yeah. face skit on SNL you was, like that? was classic. <laughs> Come on, that's a catchy song. Yeah. I'm not singing it. I with, know. A, with a Keenan and Kel shout out in it. That was uh, there was a Keenan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we saw it. It was. Yeah. It's yeah. all It'll be in a classic. There. Yeah. Thank you guys. We are back with Shop This List today. This morning, we're highlighting some great picks for anybody looking to entertain guests, elevate their, their kitchen set, uh, decorate their homes, and all that stuff. Today, contributor Alejandro Ramos is here for all of it. And don't forget the QR code right there on the corner. You can scan it. Just with one click, you'll get it all. Alejandro, I like that all of these things are something we may not have thought about. Yes. For instance, 
an adjustable rolling pin. Exactly. Like, when have you thought of that? I love this. This is from Figment, which is Target's new kitchen line. And it basically has, look, it has the measurements built right in. Right in. And then you can pull these little wheels and you can yeah. roll them in. Uh -huh. And that means, so depend when you say you have a recipe, like one of my recipes, yeah. that says roll your pie crust out to a 12 inch circle. Now you, you know can just exactly use it how exactly. to do it. And if you need it to be like a quarter of an inch thin, this will help you achieve that. Brilliant. All in one. And you can make it bigger or longer as needed. And speaking of yes. adjusting, for size too. Yes. If you're making a pie, there usually there's one pie crust. That's all there is to yeah. it. So the, well, the, here's the thing. So the pie crust, when you're baking, the outside can burn faster yeah. because it's much thinner, right? Mm -hmm. So this cooks faster than the inside. Okay. But what you do, if you cover the outside, it slows down the baking process. So you can get this perfectly crisp, flaky pie and crust. And this is an adjustable? And this is adjustable. So oh. you can use it on like a big pie or a smaller one, depending mm -hmm. on what the size is. A lot of times people will do DIY this with like foil, but that's wasteful. So that's right. why you can use this again and again for years and years, every holiday. An adjustable and two adjustable things. Two adjustable things. All right, let's get in the holiday spirit for uh, breakfast. I love this little guy. This is under $10. I think it's $9.99. This Cutest. is from Dash. It's a pizzella maker. So pizzelles, pizzelle are a traditional Italian treat. They're basically waffle cookies. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're so simple to make, but you can also use them to make waffle cones. You can use them to make cannoli like we did here. And they're really beautiful. If you dust that with powdered sugar, it just looks like Christmas magic. And by the way, you can just put regular pancake exactly. mix also, in there yeah, and make do, something so cute for simple. breakfast. It's so simple. It's cute. This is fun to do with the kids. It's really, I mean, it's just like one thing. The price point's crazy. Nine ninety nine. I can't believe can't that. Can't go wrong with All right, that. let's have a nice display oh, of cheese. I love and, a cheese and charcuterie board. And this one is such a cool option. Mm -hmm. This is made from bamboo, which is a wonderful, durable um, material. Well, and show this, them the it, best trick it about it. It comes with all of this. So see this little guy here? You're like, what is this. that? What is look that? Oh, it is a place to Wait, put your cheese knives. So you can store them and you can grab them. So, you know, sometimes you kind of kind of shove them in the cheese. Yes. This no. is just a much better, much more Such elegant way to do it. Such a smart way to do it. It also comes with the little markers, so you can put like what you know, what, what kind of cheese, cheese everything is, is. You can put it right into the cheese layer okay. like that. Okay. And put a little tag, and it comes with these little ceramic things, which also can be removed when they're you know they're and not glued down. And by the way, down. it's it's pretty beautiful when you look beautiful. at it. It's beautiful. It's elegant. And it's got those little grooves too, uh -huh. so you can use it as a carving board when you're not using it as a charcuterie board. It's it's very useful. I love products that are multi-purpose. You can use yes during the holidays, but again all year long. Speaking of of things you can use over and over yes. again. When you get an advent calendar, usually it's one and done, one but and done, you not throw this it out. one. This one is so cute. This is a countdown calendar. It comes with these little houses and you can fill them in with whatever you'd like. So you can put candy in there, mm -hmm. little mini cute. beauty products, little pots of jam. Cute. Have fun with mm -hmm. it. It's such a fun, I mean, advent calendars are so fun. Love. I'm a grown up and I still love them. Love so. it. All right, the so what fam. do we do with all of our Christmas cards? This is such a beautiful, easy way. This is from Magnolia and mm -hmm. it's such an easy way to display them because you can just put your cards like this. You can put this on the mail. Mm -hmm. and your console table, but also once the holidays are done, holiday, uh, save the dates. You can put birthday oh, cards, pictures, clever. maybe just the mail, the bills you need to get to. Yeah, that's actually You clever. can use it again and again. Yeah, you can put it on anything. your desk with like motivational messages. Easy. I think it'd be so cute. All and right. you can, again, bring again us home. What All is this, right. What is I this love this. lighting switch? Basically, you're t bringing on the Christmas magic. You want to do it? Yeah. One, All right, here we go. Two. All right. And the lights go on. There we oh, go. Cute. And then this is wireless. I don't know if you guys can tell, but that turned on the Christmas tree. So this connects to the Christmas tree. It can do it wireless or with the cable. Wait, what are you yes. talking about? <laughs> it's like Bowers. Rockefeller Center. <laughs> we turned on the Christmas Three, magic. Three, two, yeah. one. That is incredible. Yes. Is that right? That is super cool. It's giving me like elf movie vibes. Very it's so cool. cute. Ve yeah. That's such Yay. a cool idea. You can do cool. this every night with the kids. It's so fun. Oh, no, 70, one for you. <laughs> we got it. It. All right, Alejandra, thanks. Purchase these items. All you have to do is scan our QR code, head to today.com slash shop the list. And we should mention that we do earn, today earns a commission on the purchases made from this segment, which solely features products available at Target. Coming up next, we're going to take you inside the game with some hidden heroes of the NFL. Stephanie Gosk has that one for us coming up. But first, this is Today on NBC. So turns on the lights, which is easier than yeah. unplugging it.
now 8-51 with our series Inside the Game. Yeah, fourth quarter touchdown to help the Raiders defeat the Jets on Sunday night football. Take a look. The final score, 16-12. to And while each team had 53 players on their game day rosters, another 16 have a special unsung role that often gets overlooked. NBC's Stephanie Goss visited the Jets training facility for this one. Hi, Steph. Hey, Hi, yeah. guys. Good morning. This is so much fun. You know, every NFL team has a practice squad, paid players who don't suit up on game day but are a crucial part of the team. You don't hear much about them, so we went out to the New York Jets training center to learn a bit more about who these players are and how they're involved in prepping the team for games all season long. Football players like Jalen Holmes, and Malik Taylor train all week with their teammates, knowing that most weeks they won't be in uniform on game day. But they still play one of the most vital and selfless roles in the NFL, members of the practice squad. A phrase NFL fans hear just about every Sunday night. Malik Taylor was in the game in part because Garrett Wilson's on the sideline. On game day, there are 53 players on an NFL roster. But during the week, every team has an additional 16 players practicing and helping their teammates prepare. How important is the practice squad and how they play during practices? Oh, it's everything. It's everything. Essentially, is to give a look for the active roster um, for the team that we're playing that week. Members of the practice squad function as what coaches call a look team. They try to mimic the possible plays and techniques of that week's opponent, matching up against the Jets' starting lineup in drills and scrimmages. You're giving the exact same looks, the exact same routes that your team are facing this the coming week. That means six foot five defensive tackle Jalen Holmes is keeping the Jets' starting offensive line sharp in practice. Right now, my role is, you know, whoever the top guy on the defensive line is on the other team, they want Jalen to be him. While Malik Taylor practices against the Jets' highly touted defense, mimicking superstar opposing wide receivers like the Raiders' Devontae Adams and the Dolphins' Tyreek Hill. You were literally running the routes that the defense is going to see. So, I mean, that also tells you how the defense plays. They've been practicing our offense, our own Jets offense, all year long. And now we have to play on a team like Miami or something like that. And you got to go emulate Tyreek Hill and the crazy stuff that they do. That's pretty difficult. Then that means that the practice squad has to not only know the Jets' formations, yes. they have to know the other team as well. Yes. During games themselves, the practice squad is typically on the sidelines, acting as perceptive scouts for their teammates. Players will come off and, and you'll be like, hey, I, this is something I noticed on the field. Yeah. So it's like, you know, hey, like this, he's, he's setting you like this, or hey, they're doing this. Because playing the games, you, you are locked in on the smallest key, so you may not see everything. For Holmes, Taylor, and the hundreds of other practice squad members across the league, their ultimate goal is to make a roster full time, something both have already accomplished during different parts of their careers. But for now, in many ways, they're putting their team first. When I was younger, in my career, I saw it as a punishment. But as I get older and you see teams win, you see talented guys on the practice squad. And those practice squad players are giving those valuable looks. Like you have to prove something every single day because it literally, I mean, essentially it's a job you're gonna do every single day. You have an extra chip on your shoulder, I would say, for sure. The players say they appreciate every practice and every opportunity. For every day you walk in the doors, you have to feel blessed. This is what you work for. There's a lot of guys that that's not on practice squad that will wish to be in this spot and just waiting for that call. So I, I don't try to take that too lightly. So when I do have that opportunity, I just give it my all. What I would say is it takes a lot of fight to be an NFL player. It takes even a little extra fight to be these yes. guys. Yes, they have yep. to know it all. Yep, they have to know it all. And they really want to, they want to be tapped. Right? So they're working extra hard to get there. I mean, often you think the people who either sit on the bench are like, oh, God, when am I getting in? But these guys are full of enthusiasm. They're, they're part of, of the team in a big and way. Yeah, they're a huge part. I love that they get called up, too, to the game. That's pretty yeah, cool. it's terrific. And, and they bring it every practice. Wow. Yep. Cool. Very cool. Thank, Thank you, Steph. That was awesome. awesome. Thank you. All right, coming up on the fourth hour, HGTV stars Dave and Jenny Marth are going to help you get set for your Thanksgiving day. But first, coming up in the third hour, more fun with Good Burger. Two stars, Keenan Thompson, Kel Mitchell, they're coming back. Can't wait to chat more with them. Scarlett Johansson's coming back. She and is? Hannah What's Waterman she going to do now? She already back. directed the whole what? show. We had everybody. All the stars are back. That's all coming up right after your local news and weather.
welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, it worth coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. This morning on the third hour of today, heart health alert. A new study finds a popular weight loss drug could also reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. We're breaking down what it means and will more doctors start prescribing it? Then Hollywood rolls into Studio 1A. Kenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell are live to share some good news. Welcome to Good Burger, home of the Good Burger. Can we take your order? About the return of two classic characters. Then superstar Scarlett Johansson stops by to share some exciting news of her own, just in time for the holidays. And speaking of the holidays, Ted Lasso's Hannah Waddingham is here to spread some cheer with help from some famous friends. We're rolling out the red carpet today, Monday, November 13th, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. Good morning and welcome to the third hour of today. I'm Chanel here with Dylan. Our friend Peter Alexander is here with welcome. us. Good to be Good with y'all. Good morning to you, the old weekend crew. Yeah. Here sitting at the table. <laughs> Craig is off this morning and we are going to check in with Al in just a minute. He has been doing something really exciting this morning to help families for the holiday season. And there is a big sign of the season as we speak right now outside of our window here at 30 Rock. Look at this. The Rockefeller Center Christmas tree has arrived. The 80 foot North way spruce is now being decked out if you will in anticipation of the big reveal you were here this weekend when it rolled in this right? is a gorgeous tree i know i mean not yeah. to judge right but this yeah. was actually a really pretty one when we saw it at the house where it came from in vestal new york it is just a gorgeous it's one beautiful. people are gonna love to come mm. to the plaza. so here's the deal you can watch us flip the switch later this month for christmas in rockefeller center it will be on november 29th right here on NBC. I can't believe we are talking about Christmas trees. I don't know how it trees. happened. I felt like it was just summer. I mean, I'm like, I need to squeeze in that last bit of summer and it's <laughs> yeah. not. We're it's like over. still trying to, to come up with our Thanksgiving plan, <laughs> right. right? And people yeah. are already talking about oh, the holidays. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, the tree isn't the only reason we're feeling good this morning. Yesterday, we all had the chance to celebrate one of our favorite people here on the show. It was our senior producer, Allie Markowitz's oh, wedding day. We haven't seen these pictures. Picture. Beautiful bride. She and her husband, oh. Jeff, uh, married now in the Third Hour family. Of course, we we all got together for such a memorable night. Allie is, we call her our measured kind of, um, what do you call her? Like she's calm. Yes. Like she's very zen all the time. All the time. So to see her last night was such joy. Aww. It was it was a pretty special it was, night. It was really special. I, I was telling Peter, you know, when you know someone through work and we're a big work family here and we yeah. all know everything about yes. each other. But then when you see the family, oh. you meet their brothers <laughs> and sisters, you meet the the parents. It's like, yeah. oh, this is why you are. This the is why you are. You're an and, it's just, and you see them have so much fun. I love being a part of that. I love that. I Always love that. nice to have an excuse to say celebrate. We right? have a nice and there's day. always a great photo booth. You got to have fun <laughs> oh, with that. Oh, too. <laughs> all jump into the party booth. animal. I love that. Co -album. I love so that. Nice. Yeah, so congratulations to Allie and Allie Jeff. And Jeff. So happy I I'm you. thrilled for them. We had a special weekend as we well. Did. My wife, Allison, who has been in the news business, a TV news anchor in D.C. Mm -hmm. for more than 20 years. We just celebrated that she is leaving television news. She's, She's going to spend more time with our daughters because Aww. they're 10 and 8. And we just felt like this was the time that they needed their mom around. She has yeah. not once picked up our kids from school. Just yeah, the idea just that she could be there. So there we were with some friends this weekend in D.C. celebrating her. And I'm so thrilled, not just for her, but really for our daughters. To and have for those who are watching yeah. in, in, the, in that market, it's, it was so nice to see. She talked about it on Instagram, all of the comments. I mean, people yeah. love his 
wife. You know how we all feel about our local news anchors. And so for them to step back, but we also can understand, understand to it. not be we able to be miss there. Those moments, I know. You know, and, and it goes so briefly. For our, for our family. Congratulations. Congratulations. Are the kiddos excited? Yeah, they're thrilled. Emma's first thing was, wait, you're picking me up at school? Oh, that's good. <laughs> right? So that's good. Sweet. It's, it's awesome. sweet. It yeah, goes by quickly. Into a new norm. So yeah. congratulations Thanks. to your family. Excited. Uh, we did mention that Al was doing something really special and exciting this morning. He is now on his way back from a food bank in Brooklyn. Wait, is he coming He's, back in the building? The guy moves quickly. How did you walk in? Um, he kicked off our season of giving food drive in a huge way. Al and a large team of volunteers helped to break the Guinness World Record for the largest turkey donation in 24 hours with help from our sponsor, Jenny O. Yeah. And they set a new record. Look at this. More than 300,000 pounds of turkeys donated, and the turkey himself is, is walking in as we speak. Wait, all of a sudden I see like the mic folks come. The makeup folks. <laughs> How did you make it from they, Brooklyn? They said you'll have them by 920 if you're lucky, but well, you just made a beeline. Eddie Ortiz, my driver, uh, you know, he's, he put it into turbo and boom. Here we are. So. Wow. It's amazing you can go into turbo in New York City. Traffic, Here, turn your phone so off because there's feedback. Oh, so, wait, Al, you guys set a Guinness World Record today? We did. Uh, we ended up with our friends, our folks at uh, Jenny O. Okay. Uh, they donated. Uh, over 150,000 pounds of turkey. Wow. So and where is it going? It's going to the City Harvest uh, Food Bank. It's going to another food bank in the Bronx. Okay. Uh, eight, eight, uh, eight trucks, eight, uh, 18-wheeler trucks. Jacob Soberoff was in Chicago and gave out to... Sorry, my, uh, my phone, phone is still on. <laughs> There you go. This is his first yeah, time I was like, why am I That's here? right. That's right. I'm very excited. The technology. Just turn it off. Well, I'm trying to hit turn the red, it off. The I did. There we go. Nope. I'll hit the volume down. Yeah, there you talking. go. Just okay. to hit volume down. There you go. Anyway, so anyway, Jacob so Soberoff was in Jacob Chicago. Jacob Soberoff was in Chicago uh, for their <laughs> Chicago food banks. And so it, we gave Guinness World Records, said we set a record, over 350,000 pounds of turkeys going to needy families. Today's World uh, Kindness Day. And so we thought this would be a perfect way to do this, set this off. It's our, our season of giving week. We're starting that the, yeah. today. So we were just thrilled uh, to be able to do that and be part of uh, this, this organization. There's so many world records out there, but to do one that's actually helping people oh, is a world record worth celebrating. Day. Exactly. So thanks again to the folks at Jenny O and all of our, our uh, sponsors and every, uh, the folks at the Chicago Food Bank. Had a great time. Uh, it was freezing in there. But. I was also impressed as they were passing the turkeys. I mean, those are frozen turkeys. Those are frozen turkeys. turkeys. Nobody was wearing gloves. I know. It, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a cold, hard business. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, world, it, we were glad to do it and warm some Absolutely. Oh, That's Al, great. Thank you so much for doing that. And if yeah. you would like to help families in your community, you can scan the QR code to learn more about how you can support your local food banks. I love that. Yeah. Let's get on to another headline that we're watching, a potentially major medical headline today. It's a new study just published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It says that the popular weight loss drug, Wagovi, you've certainly heard about, may reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke in some adults. This, as you can imagine, is grabbing uh, a lot of attention today. So here to break down the findings and what they mean, we have NBC News medical contributor, Dr. Natalie Azar. We should mention this study was founded by, I think it's Novo Nordisk, right, which produces both Wagovi and Ozempic. But tell us what they found. They found that if you are an individual who has pre-existing heart disease, so that means you've had a heart attack, you've had a stroke in the past, if your BMI is 27 or higher, and if you don't have diabetes, mm. that if you take this medicine Wagovi weekly, you will cut your risk of having a major cardiovascular event by about 20%. And this was largely fueled by a decrease in heart attack. We showed those numbers between heart attack and stroke. I think it's important to mention that Ozempic, which is the sister drug to Wagovi, is already FDA approved to reduce cardiovascular risk, but in diabetic patients. Mm. So this is the first, the thing that makes this so monumental is that this is the first time an obesity drug has been shown to, to lower cardiovascular mm. risk. So to be clear, is it the reduction of weight that's to credit for the decrease or is it the drug itself? Something else. So they, the, the investigators can't say definitively. We obviously know that obesity drives a lot of heart disease. So certainly that's part of it. But what they speculate are the other explanations is that the medicine also was found to reduce blood pressure, reduce people's cholesterol, reduce people's blood sugar, re reduce inflammation, and even decrease what's called the waist circumference, that extra fat around the middle. And that actually happened before people lost weight. Wow. So it probably, there's, you know, I, I think it's probably couple 
coupled to the weight loss, yeah. but I think it, there's also some independent metabolic things that are also happening there. We know with Wagovi and Ozempic, you know, as soon as you go off the drug, yes. the weight gain comes back. Right. Is it the same risk, you know, if, if you're taking this drug to reduce your risk of heart? problems? Ostensibly. Yeah. Um, but we don't know because they only followed patients for a little a little over three years. Um, and we don't know what's going to happen to them if they stop the medicine. Mm -hmm. I think one probably can assume that there will be some, you know, mitigation of that yeah. benefit, right? right? Because we know that people who do stop the medicine on average will regain around two thirds of, of their weight. Two thirds. About two thirds of the mm -hmm. weight. Wow. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, researchers, a colleague of mine said, we don't know exactly who regains and who does it. We don't know that yet, mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I imagine that a lot of that benefit will probably go away when the drug is stopped, but we don't know. Okay. okay. It's great Thank news today. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's Thank you. All right, when we come back, Peter is sharing the inspiring story of a man who took on the Iron Man challenge for a very special reason. Then later, what a lineup of Hollywood hey. stars we have in studio. Keenan Thompson, <laughs> <laughs> two, and the one and only. Yeah. Are we doing a salsa? with us this morning to talk about her exciting new venture. We're going to catch up with them when the third hour of today continues. I love that. We are back now with an Iron Man who has shown incredible strength, resilience, and grit after a truly unimaginable loss. And recently, Peter, I know you sat down with him. Yeah, he is so impressive. Zach Wiener is proving the power of love and perseverance while honoring the memory of his sisters. I first heard about his experience a couple of months ago from friends and went to visit him to see what lessons we could all learn in the face of grief. For an athlete, training can be an intense, solitary journey. But for Zach Wiener, it's sacred time when he never feels alone. When you're training, who are you thinking about? Jillian and Lindsay, always. My training is really my time to remember the happy times. And there were so many happy times, Jillian and Lindsay, not just Zach's sisters, but his best friends. Jillian, she was adventurous spunky, soulful, but also had this silly, goofy side to her. Lindsay is the epitome of love, would walk into a room and light it up. Just over a year ago, Zach and his family were all together enjoying a summer vacation at a rental home when their world was shattered. In the middle of the night, woke up and uh, the house was on fire. My parents made it out. I made it out of the window in my bedroom, but Jillian and Lindsay didn't make it out. They were just 21 and 19. Is there even a way to describe that level of grief, losing your two sisters? I mean, it is a pain and sadness that is more intense than anything I've ever felt. They were my people, you know, they're the ones that I did life with. Life without them was unimaginable. As Zach describes it, simply putting one foot in front of the other felt impossible. But as time passed, Zach knew to heal, he needed to honor his sisters. How can I do something today that they'd be happy about? I had started to look towards fitness. But fitness alone was not enough. Zach set his sights on completing one of the greatest challenges in sports, the Ironman. A more than two mile swim, 112 mile bike ride with a marathon to cap it off. Did people say you're nuts or did they say 
That's brilliant. I, I got a little of both. What, what's your, your personal best in the marathon? I was like, no, I haven't done one of those. So uh, big cyclist, right? I was like, no. Okay, so college swimmer. Yeah, like, no, I don't really know how to swim. Zach teamed up with a coach and spent the next year focused on a Saturday in September, the date of the Ironman Maryland, also his 25th birthday. I'm running this race in honor of Jillian and Lindsay. Hey, go get it! His motivation, their voices. This video, a graduation gift from his sisters that he now cherishes. I have a six minute video of Jillian and Lindsay being themselves on my phone and telling me how much they love me, how proud they are of me. You're our role model and our best friend and we love you so much and we're so, so, so proud of you. That's gonna stay in my heart uh, and be what I'm thinking of the, the entire race. I cannot be more proud to call you my brother. I love you so, so much. And cheering him on, family and friends, all decked out in pink, Lindsay's favorite color. 11 hours later, exhaustion and exhilaration. For Zach, more than a race, but a moment to remember. He thought he was going to pull the cord off. Oh, oh my gosh. Man. What a moment for wow. Zach Wiener, for his family. I had a chance to speak with him again this week. And by the way, since, the week, since we first met, he ran the Chicago Marathon. Wow. The guy does not stop. So impressive, so inspiring. And I was so moved by the smile on his face mm -hmm. when he described to me the hugs he would have imagined from his sisters yeah. when he crossed the finish line oh for that Ironman. Wow. But really, more than anything, it's a story of strength and resilience, yep. right? How you can overcome. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to have that video from his sisters yeah. to, to be his motivation memory. to keep going. Yeah. That's amazing. That's Thank, Thank you, you Peter. Thank you. My All right, well, coming up, we are going to take a turn. We have some big stars right here in Studio 1A. Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell, they are here to tell us about I know, right? everyone's favorite burger joint. I love that. Then later, Scarlett Johansson is sharing her new role as entrepreneur, and we get to finally talk about some movies, too. <laughs> Third hour of today, we'll be right back. Finally! <laughs> Okay, who can't forget the often quoted movie line? Ready? Well, welcome, welcome to, to Good Burger, Burger home, home of the Good Burger. Burger. Can I take your order? order? Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Good work, right? Uh, of course, that is from the iconic 1997 film Good Burger, based on a sketch from Nickelodeon's comedy series, all that about a restaurant cashier named Ed. <laughs> so hit the big screen, Ed and his good friend Dexter found themselves in a pickle trying to save their beloved fast food joint. Well, who's counting, but it's 26 years later, yeah. and now Good Burger 2 and the return of literally the classic combo, Keenan Thompson and Kel Mitchell. What, what is time? Right. I will have one of whatever the most expensive thing is on the menu. Classy. And for you? Oh, I'll have a burger. And would you like super salad? <gasps> a super salad? What does a super salad look like? Wow, what is the superpowers? Wait, how did it get its superpowers? Was it bitten by a radioactive cucumber? <laughs> salad it is. <laughs> Peter and Kel, good to see you guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Right. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Yes. And now that we've greeted everybody for the morning. <laughs> so first of all, Kel, I, I know you, uh, you, you're, you're here. Yes, I'm so thrilled. You had a bit of a health scare earlier. Uh, yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling healthy. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All good. Happy to be, I'm all good. All, all right. All good. Super. Happy to be here. Okay. Good luck so, <laughs> so first, first film, you guys, uh, you uh, get together, save the good burger. Yeah. What happens this time? Mm. Um. A lot of saving the good burger. Save the good burger. <laughs> you got to save the good save, burger. Save the good burger. Pretty wow, much. good burgers yeah. are, are, are always in, in trouble. Always yeah, in trouble. It's a, it's What's going business. on with the good burger? It's a tough <laughs> business. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, just more hijinks, man. You know, and we really wanted to get the the comedy tone of the movie to match the first one. You know, so that that was one of the bigger victories, I think. From what I've been hearing, I haven't seen it yet. You, you haven't know? seen it? Kale's seen it. No, I've I wanted to it. watch it raw. <laughs> Like oh, really? Yeah, 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 and when yeah. does that happen? When do you watch it raw? Uh, tomorrow. tomorrow. Wow. Yeah, what does watching it raw mean? I'm, I want to. As a fan, I want you, want you to pure. purify. Pure. Pure. Okay. Pure. Okay. Pure. Okay. Pure. okay. 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 Only clothed. Okay. Just boots. Yeah. He said, "Wait, what is that?" Pull the cap down, sit in the back, and watch everybody's reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That that kind of thing. Like I, I wanted to, like a genuine experience. That way, I can like know if people are telling me the truth, if they liked it or not, That's or if fair. they're just saying it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 26 years since the original. You guys have been friends all this time. I mean, like, yeah. what, what's it like to actually get back on set? And then with the, the string of cameos that are popping up, I mean, how much oh. fun was it to, to film this? Man. So, so good. It was it was awesome to be working back with my brother. You know, we laughed the entire time. The, time. <laughs> the entire time. Had the crew laughing, uh, the amazing cameos that are back. I mean, we're like, we're like family. So yeah, this is awesome. And Rail right there. Yeah. I was just about to say, you've got Lil Rail. How are you? Have Rob Rankowski. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We I mean, a folks, couple man. of original cast members returned too, right? Lori Beth, Jeff yeah. Server. Yeah. There's just a lot of love <laughs> yeah. for the movie. So, like, you know, anybody that we asked whose schedule you know could accommodate we're like yeah totally we would love to do it blah 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 so it was a real pleasure man yeah. i love it i love that yeah. so another cameo we have is the man to our right oh uh, yeah mr the master how do you do how do you big broke look at him look how happy he is look at him. <laughs> he did amazing it was a fun i gotta tell you i watched because i got to sit on set for a few hours yeah. watching them it was like the, the the behind the scene vibe was almost as much fun was probably more fun than what was happening it on is camera. Yeah. I love that on camera is actual work <laughs> yeah. everything else is cake it's easy yeah, yeah going man, to the behind the scenes so uh, first of all I should say so my kids 10 and 8 years old they don't have a clue what SNL is but they love you from all that right fantastic. So Netflix has been very very good fantastic. to Keenan Thompson fantastic <laughs> Kelly, yes. I want to talk about <laughs> I want to talk about your kids Wisdom yes. and honor. These are little nuggets in your family right now. Yes. They're actually in the movie as well. Pickles oh, and Luster. Yes. Oh, yeah, Pickles oh, and Luster. Please. Wisdom and honor. Oh, got to play. God. Look at my baby. Oh, you as not dad, goodness. but as Ed. <laughs> I love it. Oh. They're, they're super excited about the movie. Of course, the premiere tomorrow. Oh. Uh, they were handing out flyers at their school. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, they were so like seeing them oh, in the my same goodness. hair. In the, <laughs> I mean, in the scene, I was like tearing up because yeah. I was in daddy mode, but I was like, okay, wait, wait. I got to be Ed. Whoa. Oh, that's it's crazy. so sweet, oh, man. Very sweet. Uh, hey, Ke Keenan, let me. Twenty first season of uh, SNL. How's it? How's it going? Twenty one. Uh, it, it's going pretty good. I mean, <laughs> we've had four pretty great shows in my in my personal opinion. Like Timothy just crushed it. Then that was a baby face sketch that we did in the monologue. Yeah. Shout out to Marcelo. So That's good. me as Lester Holt. <laughs> a little bit. Neil deGrasse Tyson. I, I guess I was Do you busy have on Saturday. A favorite. Like impersonation? A, a, yeah, or anything that you just, or skit, or just something. It helps with Cornell West. It I helps mean, when they're character have, people, like okay. a right. Cornell yeah. West or a Steve Harvey, you know what I mean? Because you tones, you can hear it, and then mm -hmm. that lets me kind of yeah. impersonate it a lot easier. Yeah, Steve. Like well, he's God done, bless he's you done guys. Al Roker. Uh, you've done them all. Oh, that's the right. Dog. Speaking it was, it of characters. A, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was an exaggeration, I'm sure, to say the sure. least. Not really. <laughs> Thank you both. <laughs> Thank you both. Seriously, really and truly for bringing joy into our homes oh, for all oh, these years. Of course, and and right. now it's like we get to enjoy it and our kids do too. So. We hope, man. Yeah. We hope everybody enjoys it and gets to watch with watch the entire family. Yeah. On that note, Good Burger 2 premieres exclusively on Paramount Plus on November 22nd. And we are going to show you Al's cameo in Good Burger 2 among others he's had over the years a little later this week. We'll have to wait for it. It's so good we're saving it. There you That's go. That's it. Yeah, there you exactly. go. All right, coming up, two more talented actors live in Studio 1A. Scarlett Johansson is here to fill us in on her new project yeah. away from the screen. And we're going to ask about a big Marvel rumor that we hear going around. I'm sure she can talk all about it. Then Ted Lasso star Hannah Waddingham is spreading yeah, cheer and sharing her new yeah. holiday extravaganza. We'll be right back. Good stuff.
We are back now with a Hollywood superstar who has been entertaining us for years. Scarlett Johansson has been super starring as Black Widow in the Marvel Universe and showing a different side in dramatic films like Marriage Story. Recently, Scarlett has been starring as Entrepreneur, having co-founded skincare line The Outset. We are so excited that she is here to talk new products. So much more with the holidays coming up. We can't wait to hear all about it. Oh, Good yeah. Morning. We have a whole holiday shop oh, going yeah. on at The Outset <laughs> to be gift-giving easy, lots of travel sets and all kinds of fun stuff for everybody. How's it been? I mean, we were just talking about the fact that it's been two years, I guess, in March, marking the outset. This, I was about to say the outset. The outset. The outset. <laughs> the outset. Isn't that funny? Uh, how's, that it been, how's it been growing this company? I mean, it's like your baby. You it know? is. It definitely is. You know, it's really, it has its own unique challenges having a startup. You know, you're definitely like trying to get it in front of as many people yeah. as possible. I love this line so much. It's all I use. I believe so much in these products. So it is like having a baby. But mm. when you meet people that have told you that they've never had better skin, mm -hmm. it's cured their acne, it's wow. cured their eczema. That's what makes it worth it. It That's really does. Incredible. Yeah. So speaking of the holidays, what products do you have coming out? Mm. Oh gosh, well we have our travel set, we have spa in a box. Colin and I did a whole mm. like facial at home. <laughs> um, so that's really exciting. Spa in a box. That's spa in a box. So good, I right? am so here for a spa in a box. That's, that's yeah. right. You can, yes, you, he honestly, I have to say, was pretty like exfoliating somebody else's face is um, <laughs> not something that I ever thought I would I have to do. That, that's, that's, that shows love. That's <laughs> true. But also, also for husband, Spa in the Box sounds good, right? So can I just have the Spa in the Box? That's just easy. Just <laughs> gift exactly, and you exactly. I'm like, here, just you take care of it yourself. You can do it yourself. No, yeah, we have all kinds of fun stuff going on. So asking for a friend right now, is this mostly for women or men getting into this sort of skincare? It is well? for everybody. So Colin and I share all of our products. Mm -hmm. um, we make lucky refill. You. Yeah, lucky me. <laughs> We have refillables, so we don't have to fight over anything. Okay. Um, yeah, it's great for teenagers okay. too. Yeah. So yeah, anybody right, yeah. who's got skin. And who's got, here you go. <laughs> anybody who's got skin. Good. I like that. That's it's a good. It's made for sensitive skin, <laughs> fragrance-free, gluten-free, vegan, cruelty-free, all, all of that stuff. Oh, all the all the freeze. We all like the that. Freeze. So, all the freeze. so all now you are stuff. free to talk about uh, other yeah. projects, movie projects, since the uh, uh, actor strike, SAG actor strike's over. You are connected to some Marvel uh, rumors going around. Oh my. Uh, I, but of course, in, in Avengers Endgame, allegedly you died. That is, yes, I believe, I, I know I did that scene. You did that scene. You were there. Yes, no AI. There. You yeah. were there. I was there. <laughs> but c could you, there be a resurgence? Like a loophole? Yes. yes. I, I mean, we like know about multiverses. Can do that. I don't know. You, you guys, the, I mean, I feel like that's kind of the end, right? Like, can oh, you come back? Is it, but, but, is it? but in Marvel, could it is be it? like a vampire version of the character? Because I would, I'm here for that. Okay. Like, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. a zombie version. Okay. Have you been approached to, to through, reprise yeah. the, your character? Um, I, God, you and you really ask the hard and it's hard because he's Al Roker. You know so what I mean? I know. So you I don't like have to tell smile. you, but yeah. I know I actually don't have to tell you. You don't. I do not. <laughs> but you want to. I do. I want do you to. You want that? to so badly. Yeah, yes. Change okay, the topic. So quickly. you've been working on a Tower of Terror um a movie. Yes. Is that true? So based off the ride? Yeah, it is based off the ride. Now that the writer's strike is also over we're finally mm -hmm. able to like dive back into uh, polishing up this script. So yeah, it's a massive, Exciting. huge undertaking, but so I'm a huge Disney fan. I love that, so. and I love that, uh, that ride. I can't, I can't go parks. on it. I'm too, I, I, can't, I can't handle the drop. Why? It's, it's absolutely terrifying. That's why it's called it the Tower of it Terror. It's my absolute Tower of Terror. Oh my gosh, you have yes, to go on I that know, ride. everybody is so trying to get me on the it. The Tower it's, of Joy, folks. You know, yeah, it's the Tower of it's Terror. Just it is exhilarating. <laughs> Come on, my nine-year-old daughter can go on it. You can know, do it, too. I know, I've seen them online, and I just, I can't. Okay. Yeah. Come on. All right, well, so, uh, one thing you true. can do, yeah. whether you, every time you've been here, you've done weather with me. Uh, that's why I come, actually. I, I, it's <laughs> not to talk about the outset, it's to do the weather. Well, let's okay. do it. Well, let's come. Oh, my God, yeah, yeah. Earlier, so come Yay. to the oh magic God, map. So and in fact, we have made it a Scarlett Johansson <laughs> weather map. Oh, my God. Except with the exception of that Albert, Kansas. We don't need Albert. Don't need but Albert. <laughs> but let's. We need, look at this weather, you guys. Yes. It's cray cray. Okay, so there is, oh, God, there's good rainfall happening. Yes. Right Beneficial <laughs> rainfall. It's, it's good. It's reasonably warm. Mm -hmm. are, are we happy about that? We're happy. That sounds good. If you're in the Plains, you're very let's happy. Go, oh, rain and mountain snow. That, that's, that's right. Good. Does that mean you could start skiing? You could if you're in the right spot. Great. You could ski. So this is the spot for skiing, mm -hmm. you guys. And then if you want to get like a tan over Thanksgiving, right. this uh -huh. is you're doing it over here. Over here, it looks 
pretty we, warm, actually. And, and in fact, Not we just bad. heard from Scarlet, Indiana, Scarlet, West Virginia, and Scarlet, Georgia. Yeah. They are adding a T to their to that's, their town. Is that official now? Just for you, you for 24 hours. I'm, oh, that's, I'm so <laughs> happy. So we're going to correct this. You guys, there's a bunch of stuff happening over here. This looks like a warm front. Mm -hmm. This seems like a Very cold good. front. Yes! Oh. Yes! And I would say She's this good. looks sort of like a wavy front. There you go. There. That's yeah. the technical term. That's right. And so and the, now that you've done weather, are, yeah. are you on your way to the Marvel set? Uh, wait a minute. I thought we talked about this earlier, Al. <laughs> I, I need you to sign some paperwork before <laughs> okay, we talk, all right, okay? All right. My gosh, asking so the hard great. questions. Oh, it's what we do. I love it. Gosh, All it's right. so fun. Thanks. Uh, we always put you to work when you're here, but thanks, thanks I for know. being here. Do it. I get benefits from this? Yes, stuff? you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, great. You I need them right now. Yeah. Guys, the outset is available at Sephora and theoutset.com. All right. Yeah. Coming up Sweet. next, Ted Lasso star Anna Waddingham is here live. There she hey. is. Oh, I love that dress. Pretty Sharing dress. her new musical extravaganza that will put us in the holiday spirit. Third hour of today, we'll be right back. Hannah's done weather, too. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Our next guest is helping us ring in the holiday season just a tad early. Hannah Waddingham is an Emmy-winning actress known for her role as Rebecca Welton, the boss in Ted Lasso. Well, now Hannah is starring in a brand new musical extravaganza. It's on Apple TV+. Plus. It's called Hannah Waddingham, Home for Christmas. And she is here with us this morning. So great to have you back in Studio 1A. It's so good to be back. Yes. It's it's exciting. Exciting. It is so fun to have everybody back here. Okay, so you're the star and executive producer of this holiday special. Guys, wait until you hear this woman's vocals. Next level. <laughs> yes. So good. I mean, she like yes. belts it out. Um, we saw Leslie Odom Jr. You have some wonderful guests. Yeah, Was Luke Evans, something? I'm writer. Yes. Did yeah. you all, have you always wanted to do something like this? Look, I, you know when people say, you know, did you want to be a singer, did you want to be an actress? I don't remember a time ever when I didn't sing. Mm. So for people kind of discovering that I sang, like yeah. you were saying, in, in, in Ted Lasso. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is this, this is, your is life. what I was put on earth for. Wow. That's, yes. And it runs in the family. Yes, my mum is an opera singer. Both her parents were opera singers. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I think my mum just thinks I shout. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, Are your vocal cords all right? You know. But it's it's just in my in my DNA yeah, yeah, for sure. You. Yeah. So when Apple gave me this opportunity, I was just like, Can it please be old school mm. and beautiful? No gimmicks. Just make everyone smile and make all generations sit around. Like we grew up with. Exactly. Yeah, That's that. exactly what I wanted. You're no stranger to the stage. You've been talking about your mom, an opera singer. Yeah. It runs in your veins. Deeply, yeah. This was shot at the London Coliseum, which yes. is meaningful for you personally. Yeah. My mom was there uh, as a mezzo-soprano opera singer mm. from uh, when I was eight. And so when Apple and I were putting it together, um, they were saying, you know, and the privilege it would be to, to come to Carnegie Hall or Radio City, whatever. And I went, can I just hunker down on the fact that I've been in the London Coliseum since I was eight years old mm. as a little girl running around those corridors. Mm. And that is my second home. And the privilege of being able to say that, I needed to just 
hunker down yeah. and say this is where I want it to be. So awesome. they were amazing and and got it for me. So wow. Yeah. Obviously, you're a big Christmas fan as well. Do you traditionally host? I mean, this was sort of a, a small extravagant affair. Well, <laughs> I mean, you're saying we're going early. I don't think this is early. For <laughs> <laughs> this is right on time. I'm a November kind of gal. As oh, soon okay. as it starts on the radio, I'm like, we're in. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I'm a Christmas obsessive. Like, really, Christmas. Really? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Someone else can do the cooking, but I am <laughs> in for all the rest what of it. What month did you film this? I filmed it on the 27th of May, which was an unusually hot day oh, in nice. England. <laughs> we were all a bit like, oh, no. Yeah, that's fun. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, it was a look that but, Yeah. And we were like, can you come in Christmas clothes? And people were like, you have to be kidding. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, a- another Christmas gift for you would be... Uh, uh, getting an Emmy, another Emmy. You've been nominated for Ted Lasso. <laughs> yes. So, and a Christmas gift for us would be maybe I don't know another season of Ted Lasso, oh. or a spinoff. Any I would, possible? I would love that. But I mean, one thing's for sure, unless. Unless the man himself is is down with that, then <laughs> that's not for me. Could yeah. there be could there be another character who gets a show? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm very much you know AFC Richmond is so close to my heart. Mm-hmm. I mean, I keep trying to get all to get too. like a tiny greyhound tattoo, but no one's down for that. <laughs> you would, I keep going everybody? tattoo. Yes, yeah, that would be fun. Yes, all of us greyhounds. I think we should have a little something, like something, a little, idea. a little stamp. So when we go to the next life, people know where we've come. I love that. Jason, well, Brett, and Hannah with their matching. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> and now it's just a WhatsApp. That's what first. made the show so special because you can see the chemistry. But then when we all had you in studio last time you were yeah. here, you can see the chemistry off camera yeah. too. I mean, I mean, do you guys all see each other still? Oh, I we we are so firmly in each other's pockets. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I have an uncommonly large amount of them on my Christmas special. (laughs) Oh! Oh, Yeah, I was like, Mama needs some help. Yeah. Oh! Oh, I'm sure they answered the call. Well, there's a little something. I'm so excited for it. So that's kind of a reunion. It is a big reunion. There you go. And the whole it. audience went completely nuts. Oh, I can't oh, wow. nuts. I thought, We were yes, told we couldn't say this. Ah. <laughs> we're not saying no, it's no, it's in the trailer. Yeah. It's in the trailer. Yeah. There's okay, like, well, now, yeah. it, now it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. We you, travel as a pack. I, I don't do anything. That. I love it. You are Boom. such a I light. Thank you so much Oh, my gosh. Thank you. And being Dylan's hair inspiration as well. I know. I want to do all your hairstyles. I mean, I'm kind of close. You're very close. I'll just chop off another inch or two. Thank you so much. I just look like I had Hannah Waddingham I'm home for Christmas premieres November 22nd on Apple TV+. Plus. Goodbye, Yay. America. <laughs> Goodbye. Love you. Up next in Motivational Monday, we're going to explain what it means to be deeply curious and how could it benefit all of us. Are you curious about that? Well, third hour of the day, we'll be right back and we'll explain. Aren't you glad that I'm not usually here? <laughs> back on this Motivational Monday with a deep look into what it means to be truly curious and what curiosity can actually bring. Scott Chigayoka is a fellow at UC Berkeley and the author of a new book out tomorrow titled Seek, How Curiosity Can Transform Your Life 
and change the world. Oh. Good morning, Steve. Good morning. Hey. Nice to nice have you here. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I already remember <laughs> the, the, when I, growing up, the, the saying was, curiosity killed the cat. But yeah. the, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the fact is, you, the natural curiosity yes. Yes. is something that, that we really need to push ourselves yeah. into. Totally. With, with, what are the benefits of actually pushing your curiosity outside of your, your curiosity box? Yeah, well, I think you four are, like, great examples of curiosity ambassadors. You know, you're asking questions. You're very open. You're leaning in. Like, those are all, all things that represent curiosity. Mm -hmm. But we often think about it as just this intellectual tool. You know, I want to learn about something on Wikipedia or want to read something in a book, which is great. But there's also a heart-centered curiosity. And Ooh, that's what I heart-centered. Heart -centered, you know, it comes from the heart, and it's a way of connecting. You know, it's what we use with our kids, you know, our parents, our family, our loved ones. We ask them questions, and we're genuinely interested in them. And that's mm -hmm. what it's all about. Curiosity is about making people feel like they matter because you're genuinely mm -hmm. interested in getting then, to know them. And sometimes yeah. the key to being curious, I think, is asking the right questions, right? Yeah. Like not just yeah. asking something superficial, but something that seems natural and like you're really genuinely interested. Totally. How do you do that? Yeah, you can start, you know, there's like, a, curiosity is a spectrum. So there's shallow on one side, which is kind of like, you know, what's your name? Or what do you do for a job? Yeah. Which are great. They give you some mm -hmm. information. It's helpful, but it can keep things kind of surface level. So as you move down the spectrum mm -hmm. towards deep curiosity, mm -hmm. you can ask questions like, you know, what's your the story of your name? Mm -hmm. You know, where does it come from? Who named you? You mm -hmm. know, tell me about them. Or, yeah, you like know, what that. excites you in your job? You know, what what are you going to really fire it up about? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Like, we can model it. That's a great way of sharing it. Yeah, so, for let's instance, model it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the story of my name. I'm Scott Keone Shigeoka. It represents mm -hmm. the three cultures of my life. Scott my American side, Keone, my uh, born and raised in Hawaii side, and then Shigeoka is my Japanese mm -hmm. side, which means the layers of mountains as they, as they oh, disappear wow. in the distance, which is beautiful. But and it helps us get to know you that quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, like Chanel. I love that. Take some layers off of it, you know? I love that. Yeah, Chanel, like what's the story of your name? I mean, would you be open to sharing? Sure, my mom is <laughs> Sheila, which is why I have that EI in my name, and my okay. dad is Darnell. There you go. Boom. Boom. Yeah, and yeah. it came together. That was easy. So it's it's interesting because you know we ask questions for a living, but there are times I go to a, a work party or a function, yeah. and all of a sudden my brain forgets how to ask yeah. questions. Totally. I mean, how do we ask the right questions to get somebody to open up without seeing mm. seeming forceful? Yeah, and it's kind of like you know I grew up in Hawaii. It's kind of like the ocean. You know, you want to start off you know maybe with a little bit of the shallow before you move into the deep. Like you wouldn't want to necessarily go up to someone yeah. and be like, "What's like the hardest thing you went through in your childhood?" You know, that's like really. <laughs> Whoa, it's like, it's like, okay, yeah. slow down. Love that you're being curious, but like curiosity is not deserved, right? Yeah. Like it's oh, earned, you know? You yeah. got to build that trust, that relationship. Like I got to know you before you're, yeah. you know, right. asking me those kinds of questions. But that's really when we feel seen and heard is mm. when people are willing to go deep and they sit you down and they're like looking you in the eyes and like, no, I want to know you. I want to know about your, like your parents that named you. I want to like know what your family was mm -hmm. like. What was it like growing up? And that. that people feel, wow, like, oh my God, you value me. Value me. That's so mm -hmm. beautiful. Thank you know who's really good asking. at that? Harry Smith. Yes. In our building. I mm. feel like he's the most curious, but everybody feels so seen by Harry. Yes. Yeah. We're out of time really quickly. The line between nosy and curious, where is it? Yeah. So you got to be like, is this the right time to be curious right now? Sometimes yeah. it's not. You know, am I the right person? Right? Mm. Like maybe you and your partner like are talking about that person at work that was like, yeah. oh gosh, mm -hmm. you know, we're having some conflict right now. That's your your partner's you know job you know maybe not the time for you to come up and say hey this yeah. is what I heard you know right. uh -huh. you know so make, making sure that you it's the right time are you the right person and do you know when to stop and slow down you know yeah. sometimes yeah. people you can tell you know oh they're it's getting a little bit right. too much yeah. with their questions right, right, right. you know That's so great. well yeah. Scott this is some you're great stuff great. can't wait to I mean, see you're the book. great you're really <laughs> no you're great uh, the book is Seek and it's available tomorrow third hour today right back.
Peter, as always, fun having you along. Hey, yeah, this was a good Monday. Her. Yes. Such a good Monday. Picked a good day to be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. here again on Tuesday. By the way, don't miss a new episode of Health and Wellness Today at 10 a.m. on today.com slash all day or stream it on Peacock. Tomorrow, I can't wait to give you a sneak peek behind this year's Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Are they going to have yeah. balloons? I sure I hope so. Well, Hoda and Jenna and are folks. next. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Today, a story of determination and inspiration. The daughter who made history at the New York City Marathon with her mother by her side. Plus, HGTV stars Dave and Jenny Mars help you create a gorgeous Thanksgiving table. And two to tango, all eyes on Taylor and Travis in Argentina as the hot couple gives us a glimpse of their PDA. We're talking about it. From Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, so up, it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. All right, all right, all right. Hi, guys. Welcome in. It is November the 13th. Great day it is. Can you Good believe month? we're in the mid middle of November? And I got up this morning. It was 27 degrees in New York. 27. It felt like winter. Burr. How was? You were in the great city of New Orleans I was. this weekend. Tell and me. Every single person, I can't even <laughs> tell you, like, every Uber driver was like, hey, we love Hoda and Jenna. <laughs> tell Hoda, when is she coming back down here? I had. It's our, it's our town. It's our town. It is our, well, our you've town. introduced me to it, yeah, and I feel ours. like I've, I've fallen in love with yeah. it. And I had the best time because I took Poppy with me <gasps> on book tour. So, um, uh, well, that's not in New Orleans. That's in Mississippi. Uh, but still, how cute. But we had the best time. We went on an eating tour. Wait, that's that is definitely us. New Orleans. Yeah, in New Orleans. So, that's yeah. Brennan's some, or somewhere? No, that is St. Vincent. Yeah. But we went to Brennan's. Yeah. We fed the turtles. Oh, you did. We walked to Cafe Du Monde from Magazine Love Street. Love that. We went to the aquarium. Oh, you did all the things. It was so <clears throat> much fun, but I, I was going to bed. You know, you think like, mm -hmm. oh gosh, I have so much on my plate. This is a lot adding a, a trip with a child, but we were going to bed. We were in the same bed and I said, Poppy, Thank you so much for coming with me. And she goes, it is my pleasure. Oh, God, I would have cried. And I said, I will you always, will you all, and she goes, I will always travel with you like this. And then she stopped and she goes, well, maybe not always. Sometimes I may want to be with my friends too, but for now, <laughs> for now, it is my pleasure. And I just want to write that down. Oh, my pleasure. It was my from your pleasure. Kid. Um, anyway, we had the best time, oh, and we, I then love we it. went to Laurel, Mississippi. Yeah. We had a wonderful time. And You've been really doing it. You've been, but isn't it cool to meet face to face oh, this, with everybody? Oh, and can I also oh, the Garden District bookstore? Well, we went to the Garden District bookstore, but this is this incredible non for profit. This is Melba's. Oh yeah, where it is in um, the Seventh Ward yep. of New Orleans. And what this incredible woman decided mm -hmm. to do was she opened up. There's a a book basically. What? Why can't I think of the word? It's like a mm. food. You put dollars in. Lord help me. A food bank. A vending machine. A vending vending machine? machine. Oh my God. Okay. A food vending machine. Okay. You can tell I'm a little tired. Okay. But it's a book vending machine. And Donna did a story on them. You guys, they are spreading literacy like wildfire. So we went there, which was so much fun. They were like, and if you if you buy a daiquiri, you get a free book. You want a daiquiri? You want a daiquiri? That that's was very, like, that's quintessential is, New Orleans, it's by the way. Amazing. By the way, that is okay, awesome. Okay, now you had an incredible weekend, too. I had too. a beautiful, beautiful weekend. Have you ever gone on one of those kind of wellness weekends where you go and you're just, you listen to people speak and yeah. there are lectures and there are things? I went with Maria Shriver to one of these things. And there was something about being there. Sometimes you leave your kids and you feel guilty and yes. all the things. But it was something like and I literally. Did you let the guilt go? Yes. I actually 
felt everything filling up. And there was something, like, I learned so many cool, interesting things, but one tiny thing happened at a table with me and Maria and that gentleman there, his name's Chip. We were talking about awe, and he said a friend of his wrote a book about awe. And he said there are a bunch of things that um, provoke awe in a person that make your heart, like, open up. And he said, and there are five. He said, number five is spirituality, mm -hmm. like a connection with God. You feel that incredible awe that comes over you. They said number four is like uh, being in nature. When you yes. walk and you see yes. the Grand Canyon, a sunrise, and your heart just swells. Number three is collective joy. You're at a concert yes. and the whole place is bouncing. It's the same, like, yes. you know, have you ever yes. been at an event and you're like, you look, you're making eye contact, yes. you can't, like that kind of joy. Number two was when you see and when you witness, bear witness to an act of kindness, mm -hmm. you don't do it yourself, but you're watching it happen in front of you and you're like, oh my God, and, and you, you see it. You're not a participant, you're watching. And the last one, and this gentleman was looking at Maria when he said, he said, and the last one is, is called moral beauty. And he looked at Maria and he goes, and let me tell you something, you personify moral beauty to me. And I was weeping just in the, <sighs> just being in that number. But think about someone you love who has moral beauty, who so inside yeah. is so kind, giving, loving, wanting to help all those things. And when you bear witness to that, so it's like awe and you can find awe in your life. Yes. It's around you. Can go you go to your backyard yes. and see the beauty. Yes. But I think. So is that what it, that you're was, supposed to do? You're trying, you're supposed to discover You're awe? supposed to discover it. And also if you're one of those grouchy grumps, who's always seeing what's wrong. Yeah. Oh God, it's supposed to rain. Did you see the traffic? <laughs> you could be that person and you won't see awe around you because you're so busy. Yeah. Yeah. Focusing on the, the thing negative. that isn't. But it is about like widening your gaze. Look around. If this side of the road isn't so great, look on that side yes. of the road. But anyway, there was so much love. And the other thing I did, which I'm very proud of, which I've never done in my life. Yes. I did one of those cold plunges where you go in, wait, to your neck. Wait, there was, it was a pool, it was a thing. We did a breathing exercise. And if anyone's ever done breath work, yes. you know, that simultaneously yes. while doing well, breath it's like work. That, that guy, who, who's the guy? Oh my God, please, Vending. Lord, help me. Vending, Vending machine. Vending machine. No, his, he's a German dude who teaches Vending you to. Wimps. Okay, anyway, okay, there are lots whatever. of breathing coaches. They're amazing. You okay. lay down. If you've ever done any breath work, you can go on YouTube and do it. You'll probably start crying at the end of five yeah. minutes of it. You won't know why. It's a release. Anyway, we did that. Everyone exploded like grenades. It was like everyone's crying. And then everyone gets up and he goes, okay, let's all go over here. And there was a pool a little bit bigger than this table. They were dumping ice in it. And they go, we're all going to walk in. Oh, y'all did it together? To this pool. All together. all sat in it together? Together. He goes, take it. He goes, this is how you're going to do it. Because I've never done it. I was cold before I went in because it was breezy. Cold. I go, I, he said, put your hands under your armpits. He said, take a deep breath in. <sighs> walk down the three stairs. Go up to your neck and exhale. <sighs> and I could feel like fight or flight, panic, crazy. Yeah. Like, because I said, I think my body might not be able to handle yes. it. And he goes, in, <sighs> out. <sighs> I could feel my body shit. Like, it was like I, I had the urge to sprint out of there like I did. Don't remind me. Anyway. You knew it was coming. Of course. The but after, lunch. it's four minutes. After two minutes, your Relax. body relaxes in the cold. Because you're numb. You let go of your armpits. Your hand, <laughs> take your hands out. And then you're like, I could... You take the water, you, you put it on your I put it on my face. You did not put yes, it on your I did. did you get your hair wet? A little. Anyway, <laughs> when we got out, I was laughing. The last minute I was laughing in that ice water because I was delirious. And when I came out, and I've never done a cold plunge, I felt like I had had five cups of coffee, yes. but not the bad effects. I felt alert. Have you ever done a Cairo freeze? Which is basically cryo. What? cryo. Oh, the one. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but I, I haven't done Have that. You? But It's the same do. thing. Right. I but think anyway. we need to do that. Anyway, it was amazing. I highly recommend it. Um, you know what else gave me adrenaline this weekend? What? Oh, was, I know. You know what it is. I know. Taylor I know. Swift and Travis oh, Kelsey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was something about. Let's go. Let's get in it. There was something get about mm -hmm. the fact that he watched her in awe. The way that we all do. By the way, that was the collective. Collective. Yeah. And also, she was magnificent. Uh, watched her in awe. And then? And then stood waiting. And are we going to show the video? I hope so. Because it's a slow motion run, like from the, from the love movies. Should we see what? it?
Maybe. And then she ran to she him. She ran toward him. May we see it? Uh, well, when they get to it, they'll, you'll know. Okay. It'll be oh, wrong. here it is. Okay, okay. but I just, let's Bye. not talk over it. We don't need to talk over it. Now, slow. One, two, three. You're four. talking over it. <laughs> I want to watch that seven more times. You know why? She's running toward him. She's running. She is running. There's you know something... when you want to run to somebody? Yeah. You don't want to walk. Yeah. You don't want to sashay. You want, you're done with your show. You just perform for a bazillion people. But there you go. But the only adoration you want is that. Right there. That's what you're looking for. There's something about it that gave me high school first love vibes uh, because he's the quarterback she's the she's the i don't the, the musician the musician and here they are running to each other which feels like new love i mean i love henry if i ran towards him he'd probably think something was wrong <laughs> who's chasing <laughs> he might her duck. who's chasing her <laughs> he might and, duck. and not only did they have that love moment but she also changed the lyric to her song karma to include the word Chiefs. Chiefs. <laughs> he said, Karma is the guy on the Chiefs coming straight home to me. He, Chiefs. She changed it from. Uh, no, here it is. See, look. Chiefs. Like that. Oh. Oh. Oh, look at that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, one thing that I've just been stuck on, and I don't want to be this person because I'm very stuck on their romance. Go ahead. But also, it. I have to just say it. Like, did they make out like that in front of the dad? <laughs> I think they made out like Why that in front of her dad. Because the dad was right there. Which also gives me high school vibes. <laughs> There's something about it where the dad was there and they high five and then they made out in front of the dad. PDA in front of your dad. Do you guys have PDA in front of your dad? No, my dad would no. I mean, I'm gonna try it over Christmas just to see a reaction. Of course and you see, are. Henry would be like, what Please else get you? off me? I'm gonna run. I'm gonna film it too. I'm gonna run at Henry. I'm gonna film it for y'all to see. But your dad has to be next and to Henry. And I'm gonna try and to make out, and my dad has to be there. But your dad cannot be expecting it. He doesn't no, know no, what's happening. No, no, he doesn't know. And then I'm gonna try to put okay. Henry in one of those Hawaiian shirts. Okay? okay? If you can do that, if you can, okay. if you can complete that task, <laughs> that task, you are gonna get major points here. Okay, I'm gonna do okay. the best I can. All right, she's gonna do it. You All have right. to remind me. I will. Coming up next, guys, this is a great one. The marathon runner who had the entirety oh. of New York City cheering for her. Yeah, Joelle Gargiulo is going to bring us just the good news. Y'all don't want to miss it right after this. So I don't think they know what happens here, do they? Or do they know? You know this today is world kindness day and we want you to feel uplifted with another edition of just the good news oh, we sure do and here with some stories to make us smile is our friend new york live entertainment correspondent joelle gargiulo hi, hi joelle hi, my girl you tell us about the best listen family? i'm gonna tell you all about the bastons okay, okay so this is a really tight-knit family from arizona and they were all getting together for the first wedding in their family mm -hmm. so billy and sally one major problem, though. Mm -hmm. Billy's brother, Johnny, could not make it. So mm -hmm. he's in the military. That's also his best friend. Mm -hmm. His deployment got extended. There was no way he was going to be there. 
However, with the little help oh, from the bride to be, me. they managed to pull off an epic surprise. So watch this moment. The groom thinks he's going to see his bride for the first time. Take a look. Oh. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. I the know world is seeing him cry. No, but it's, I think so. yeah. it's beautiful. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Family, they, they said they're still speechless over that moment. That is so oh my God. beautiful. Uh, oh, my oh, gosh. Well, amazing. And you also have an update for us on one of our favorite yes, people. Yes, yes. Patriotic we Kenny. Love we, we love, love Patriotic Kenny. Okay, so just in case anybody is not familiar with Patriotic Kenny, I will tell them that Kenny Jerry, he is this veteran who won over the Internet and, honestly, mm -hmm. the world with his reaction to strangers donating money so he could buy a new scooter. Let's just take a look of that. Oh, my God. I love him mm -hmm. so much. Uh. Okay, so, and as you both know, that act of kindness had snowballed into this whole give back moment to veterans. Well, I have an update for you. Okay. So not only is Patriotic Kenny the inspiration for this whole kindness movement, but he's also the inspiration for a children's book. Oh. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. It is called Kenny's Bright Red Scooter. It is written by his neighbor and his best friend, who I think you both yes, met, we Amanda yes, Klein. We loved Amanda. Yeah, and I just so happened to have a video of Kenny seeing the book for the first oh. time. Let's watch. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. For Aunt Debbie, Jenny, Jerry, and Kenny. Who have scooted? <laughs> Stop. Oh. <laughs> who have scooted with me through life? Oh, I can't imagine this beautiful this journey good. I know. without you. I know. Oh. I didn't mean to make you guys cry, but I knew that you would want to see that story. So it just the book just hit oh, shelves. Let's just get, hit shelves. No, Everyone's my gosh, get, all right. So what's this? What's OK? We cannot wait. Oh, this is I about know. this wonderful young woman named Kaylee. Yes, yes, yes. You know, sometimes there are those uh, moments, those videos that you see and you're like, I need to know more about these human yes. beings. Yeah. I think we all felt that when we saw this video of Kaylee Williamson uh -huh. finishing the marathon, the yeah. New York City Marathon. So for anybody who's not familiar, she's believed to be one of the first women Women to run with Down syndrome to run the New York City Marathon. Yeah. I just want to take a look at her at the finish line, which is just the beginning of this story. Oh. <laughs> ah, it's awesome. It's just, I could watch this over uh, uh, and over and over. Uh, yeah. That is so uh, beautiful. So, and Kaylee ran, she walked, she hugged, and she <laughs> danced her way to the finish line with her wonderful mother, Sandy, and her trainer, Tina, by her side. Mm. And I, I think you guys know me well enough now to know that when I am passionate about yeah. something, yeah. I could be very persistent. Guess what? What? I tracked them down. Yes. Okay. They are the most incredible human beings. And I'm, just allow me to do my Oprah moment right here. They are here with us now. Oh, yes. yes. And so you guys are going to sit down and you're going to meet the, the trio that has stolen so many Oh, hearts. my God. So Definitely. we're going to meet Kaylee. They're going to meet her mom. That's Sandy. Oh, you That's you, Kaylee. All right. Kaylee.
Before the break, Joel brought us the story of marathon runners Kaylee Williamson and her mom Sandy. They are here now along with their trainer, trainer Tina Muir. Okay, we're going to talk to everybody, guys, in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at Kaylee and Sandy's beautiful journey together. 33-year-old Kaylee Williamson inspired the world when she became one of the first women with Down syndrome to finish the New York City Marathon. This moment capturing the hearts of so many. Just a few years ago, running was not on Kaylee's radar. In 2016, she was diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. Around the same time, Kaylee's grandmother suffered a stroke and would soon be diagnosed with Alzheimer's. That motivated Kaylee's mom, Sandy, and they both made healthier lifestyle choices, including running. Along the way, she began to feel stronger and lost 85 pounds. Soon, Kaylee surpassed everyone's expectations, running 20 half marathons. And last year, she became the first person with Down syndrome to finish the Austin Marathon. In April, she attempted the Boston Marathon, but did not finish. Undeterred, Kaylee hit the starting line at last week's New York City Marathon. High fives and cheers kept her going. At mile 25, a stranger helped keep her focus. After 10 hours and nine minutes with her trainer and her mom by her side, Kaylee finally crossed the finish line. A 26.2 mile victory run giving joy and hope to so many along the way. Do you remember, you must, what that feeling was like when you finally stepped over that finish line? What did that feel like for you? I do. A moment that I crossed the finish line because um, since that I see my I see my grandma. Oh. Yeah, when she she told me that. Um, she told me, me that um, she taught me everything mm -hmm. about um, I need to go run fast mm -hmm. and, and then I'm happy it was done. I, I'm happy I am almost done. Yeah. And then she might carry me uh, to finish my race. Oh. I love that your grandmother was there. I mean, the fact that your grandmother was, you felt her with you. Mm. That we, that, that was that's beautiful. amazing, Kaylee. Yeah. I, will, I will tell you that in my mind that I lost my baby pass away because mm. when the, she told me that, go mommy, go mommy, finish the race. Yeah, <laughs> finish the race. Go. Sandy, I mean, y'all mm -hmm. started running mm -hmm. for multiple reasons, but one yeah. of the reasons was so beautiful to me, and that yeah. was because your mother got diagnosed yeah. with Alzheimer's. Yeah. And you wanted, she was talking about these yeah. towns, and you wanted real memories in those towns. Mm -hmm. My mom used to think that she escaped from the nursing home, and she got to go sit in California at the mm -hmm. beach, and um, Detroit, Mississippi, mm -hmm. all those different places, and so, the best way I could help Kaylee and mom was to take those temporary memories and turn them into permanent ones. So we would find a race wherever wow. mom thought she escaped wow. to. And, and y'all would go, go do, do, it, do it. That was so brilliant. So, Tina, watching you alongside was awesome. I know that you're a runner, but this must have been an, a completely different experience because you get to see it through these beautiful eyes, Kaylee's beautiful eyes. What was that experience like for you? Yeah, so I'm a former elite runner, so I was go I've gone from, you know, two and a half hour marathoners, uh, to a two and a half hour marathon to watching it just Kaylee interact with the crowds, not just uh, seeing them, you know, celebrate as they would other runners, but seeing their faces light it's up, up in the most beautiful way. And uh, just everyone celebrating her. She just went along the street and uh, it just was the most beautiful thing to witness, interacting with people in a in a way I've never seen. Yeah. In that in that last mile, there's a beautiful video that I saw that there was a woman who was playing the song Shut Up and Dance. <laughs> yeah. Do you know you know who she who she is? The woman yeah. that jumped in right here. Yeah. yeah. Um it took me um, um I know yeah. that Yeah. Um, 
So Abby Bales yes. um, is a friend of mine, and I had said to her early on, uh, you know, this is really hard. We mm -hmm. are struggling out here. Abby came to meet us uh, with about two and a half miles to go, and she went the rest of the way with us. She was just a bright light in a hard moment, um, singing, dancing, <laughs> had this empathy to her, which yes. Hoda, I know you know. Well, you yeah. know what's, what's so interesting? <laughs> I actually know Abby. I know her just from our community. And when I saw her face, I said, that is a perfect spot. So we thought it'd be kind of fun if Abby came and said hi, since she was with you on the last two miles. <laughs> Abby so Bales, happy. come on out. <laughs> oh, I'm happy to see you. Oh, she does give the best hug to Abby, doesn't she? <laughs> she really, really does. She rivals your hug. <laughs> sure. Have Sit down. Seen Join Abby. us. Oh my gosh. Abby, tell us about that last the last couple of miles. That must have been pretty cool to be. I, I heard you playing Shut Up and Dance with me, which is <laughs> a great song. So I broke out my playlist, which is really designed for my children to get them to school in the morning yeah. because we walk a little bit. And I, I thought it was more motivating knowing mm -hmm. that in Central Park it was going to be really dark yeah. and really quiet. Yeah. And um, that was the perfect place for us to have a two and a half mile dance party. Yeah. Wow. Well, Kaylee, you have inspired so many people. Yeah. You've inspired us. us. We yeah. love you. <laughs> we love you so so much and Sandy oh you just give the best hugs <laughs> Sandy we know as a single mom life hasn't always been mm -hmm, easy mm -hmm. um, so Aldi's America's fastest growing grocery store is committed to helping you keep up your healthy lifestyle we know that was the inspiration for all of these runs so they are gifting you the, a year of groceries for the two of you. Yeah. Two of you. And here is Joelle. She's got your little Aldi bag. So you can have a year of healthy groceries. To yeah. Really so you don't have to food shop for a year. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Really? Just a little happy? something. Thank you. <laughs> Just a little yeah. something. Okay. You guys, thank you. This was so inspiring and beautiful. Oh, you, you. By the way, you're raising a wonderful daughter. In this story of yeah. mother and daughter devotion, yeah. both yeah. with the two of you, but also your mom, yeah. is yeah. really beautiful. Yeah. Thank we you. We love y'all. Will y'all come back you. and keep us posted on your next race? Oh. We'll tell oh. her. Yes. Um, What's the next one? The Austin uh, Distance Challenge is what we're doing. So we have three races left. Mm -hmm. We have one in uh, December, January, February, all half marathons. All right. Oh, and and I love y'all. Yes. You guys, thank okay, you. Tina, incredible. thank you. Thanks, Abby. All right. So much. Coming up next, y'all, getting your kids to open up tips for parents right after this. Yay! Parenting is one of the greatest joys in life, but unfortunately, it does not come with a guidebook to help us out. But that's okay, because someone who can help, Dr. Harold Koplowitz, is a psychiatrist and the president of the Child Mind Institute. I can imagine parents are kind of beating down the door because there are so many things we need to work on and one of them is one of the very basics i feel like because of phones and things kids don't look in the eye they don't greet they don't know how to interact how would you advise someone who's having that difficulty i think we need to teach our kids social skills not all of them have it so but it has to be a fun game when they're four or five how do you shake hands it's a puzzle yeah. and you have to put your hand in there and you have to look someone in the eye long enough 
to tell me what color they're on. I love that. And, That's good. And if they don't get it the first time, it's okay. Let's try it again another time. Yeah. And they, by the way, they love to please you. Yes. You have to remember, kids love to be praised. I love when you can catch your kid being good. That's yeah. a really important thing because we focus on what they're not doing. But that simple thing of shaking hands, yep. looking you in the eye, yep. and later on also asking them to ask other people you questions. You know, where did you get that beautiful dress? Oh, where do you live? Wow. Where do you, you go to school? You question. To focus that's on cool. other people's and, and therefore, and that's so how a conversation cool. gets set. Yeah. That's yeah. how a conversation works. Okay, so we all know that the question, how was your day? Or my husband likes to say, what did you learn at school? Yeah. That doesn't necessarily work. That doesn't get work. anything. <laughs> what kind of questions should we be asking our kids when they get back from school? So the reason that doesn't work, it could be nothing. I learned nothing. Or uh, it was okay. Or so they're just closed-ended. They're closed-ended. So what was the best part of your day today? Best part. Uh, of. What was the worst part? Yeah. What, gave, what was really hard? Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work, you should also be able to share what was the good part of your yeah, day. Yeah, model it. Was, right. So that it's not that you have a perfect day or a terrible day, but it goes back and forth. And if that doesn't work, if that's not the moment that your kid wants to talk to you when they first get home, then find yeah. another time and make sure they know that you're available to talk. When you're walking on Sunday to church or to the baseball game, when you're saying goodnight, what's the highs of the days? What are the lows of the days? Yeah, we do lows, rose, that's and thorns, rose and thorns, that's good same too. thing. Yeah. All right, so let's say we're trying to get our kids out the door. They just, we can't get the shoes on and the coat and you're getting our irritated patients. and agitated because you're late. <laughs> Right, so <laughs> some, some things you shouldn't do. Okay. Uh, are you deaf? How many times do I have to tell yeah. you that? that? Those are just frustrations, comments, yeah. and it doesn't work. But if something is difficult, you got to break it down for them. Who knows what the reason is? They're anxious. Maybe they don't want to go to school. Maybe they're just uh, not as focused. So figure out how to get it done the next day. So the shoes should come out. Leave yourself a little more time. Okay. And also catch your kid being good. Oh. Thank you so much for listening to me. Yeah, okay. It really That's makes good. me feel good. Or you did such a good yeah. job getting yeah, out today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We really feel good about uh -huh. that. Um, okay, finally, yes. uh, my daughter is in fifth grade. Kids are already starting to get cell phones. We are not doing that. Good. Mm -hmm. But I wonder what you think um, is best for when yeah. it comes to kids and social media. Mm -hmm. So I, I think 10 and below, you should really try to protect them from it. 10? 10 and below, if you can protect them. It seems very really young. Yeah. Well, you know, but a flip, I think it's very hard when everyone is doing something. So I like flip phones, so you can actually get in touch with them if you need to. But the other thing you need to do is you have to hold that phone. If you're gonna let them have some kind of social WhatsApp or whatever it is that their kids, their friends are communicating, you can let them have it for half an hour or you can let them have it for an hour and then you take the phone back. I think the longer you delay, the better it's going to be. The longer you what's delay, the, perfect the best. World? What's, the, what's the right age to give one? If you, if I think it's very hard not to have it when you're in high school and it's certainly hard not to have it in eighth grade. So 13 or so becomes difficult, but it has to have, it needs containment, it needs structure. I think it's a big mistake if you think about the jungle that social media yeah. is there's very delicious fruit in the jungle but there's snakes also yeah, and until we have some real regulation parents have to yeah, control and it not, and the no number regulation. one thing you want to control is time and you also want to tell them i'm going to watch who you're speaking to yeah. Yeah. because i wouldn't let you talk to strangers yeah. Oh. yeah yeah and i think delaying as long as you can so i'm not going to give a flip phone even this year no. she's 10 she's in fifth grade it maybe she gets it in seventh grade yeah. then she starts then to feel she's, like she's getting yeah. something anyway that's okay. for me Coming up next, y'all need some help setting your Thanksgiving table. We've called in the pros, HGTV's Jenny and Dave Morris, coming up right after this.
Thanksgiving is just 10 days away, and if you're hosting this year, we're going to help you create a gorgeous table. Yeah, Dave and Jenny Mars are the husband and wife duo who create dream homes on the HGTV show Fixer to Fabulous, and now they are out with a new book called House Plus Love Equals Home. First, First of, of all, all, we, we love, love that, that title. title. <laughs> that is so beautiful. And how many kids yeah. do you all have? We have five kids. Five. You're so doing all this. What, you get a book, you've got a show, and you've got five kids. How yeah. do you do all that. those things? I know. Well, we just don't do. sleep well. You Not just very do well. it. And well, no, well. we have we lots of. So oh. at Thanksgiving, oh. yeah. a lot of people do a kitty table yes. for all of those kids you all have. No. You don't like that. Well, I, not that I don't. We just don't because we just are we all together. Be with them. Yeah. Just yeah. together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but pretend we are all combining forces, okay. which we are this year. My yeah. kids are not going to sit separately. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What should we do to keep them entertained? Okay. So one of the things that we do always, not just at Thanksgiving, anytime we have just not, we don't do this all, every night, but we mm -hmm. do it, especially when people come over and we have mm -hmm. guests, is we have this little card game. I oh, love table topics. Table topics. So okay. Okay. Wait, let's see what it so, says. Okay, go ahead. What do you love about the state you live in? Oh, oh so there's okay. all these so just cute. questions that get you talking. What's your favorite part of the day? I just love like things that. the kids can yeah. answer just too. Anything. Love it. Yeah. So love whoever it. asks the question, okay. they get to pick the person to answer, and then okay. they keep going around. So that's a fun one. Okay. Another thing we do. Go mm. ahead, babe. Oh, What's we for we Thanksgiving. Do, for Thanksgiving, we do little. Uh, we it, we have a jar for each kid, mm -hmm. and everyone writes something nice about that person. And so yeah. you get to. What you're Read something nice for. about your sibling, what oh, you're thankful for. What, how lovely what is yeah, that? So little words of affirmation. All right. for, you yes. also bring the kids in on the pumpkin, the, the yes. way, the name cards. Yes, so the kids get to decorate. these. Actually, all these pumpkins, my kids, we went to the pumpkin patch and picked these. We sent Aww. them up here. But the kids picked their favorite pumpkins, and then we use these oh, how, for Halloween, but then we keep them for Thanksgiving. That's such a cute idea. And write your oh, name. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Oh, I love, love to come. Yes, yes. And you're invited I you. saw that. Okay, so you got to set a nice mood. So yes. what do you guys do for that? Well, I love incorporating old and new, mm -hmm. right? So we always, I always have lots of vintage brass. I beautiful. love candles. I love candles. these candles. They're That's so beautiful. Pretty. And candles just kind of, they just set the mood. Set I don't know. The, the house mm -hmm. can be a mess to light a candle and feel better. Totally. Like, that's, yeah. what, that's what we do, and we turn on music. <laughs> yes, and we have music. these beautiful flowers. Mm. But also, you nice. guys run a blueberry farm? That too? We do. Y'all are blueberry farmers? We are. We do. <laughs> you need to offload a few things. <laughs> we need to offload. Yeah. Okay. But how lucky is this for the kids to grow up on a yeah. blueberry farm? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so our kids have, we pick... I don't know, 70, 80 gallons of blueberries that we use throughout the year. There's never yes. a bad time to have blueberries. That's right? true. Right. I love a blueberry. So, it's good for your especially brain. Especially in a pie. Yeah. I mean, if in you're going to have a blueberry, throw some Look sugar in this it. Pie. Yes. And yes. what's your favorite drink since we. Is this well, it? this was a blueberry lemonade, so along with the blueberry theme. We have frozen blueberries all year long. And our blueberry farm is actually our nonprofit work, so it Aww. funds a trade school in Zimbabwe for orphaned and abandoned teens. Yep. So our farm, we have you pick in the summer, we save the blueberries all year, and then we fund the program in Zimbabwe. And you guys are big into in, adopt, in the adoption world. Yes. I've adopted yes. two children. Yes. Y'all adopted a, a baby daughter, to child yes. daughter too? Yes. Oh, yes. And yes. She, are amazing. Where did she come from? She, she was, was born in the Congo. In the Congo. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Oh my yes. gosh. So into your whole body. Yes. Every we week. want your book, you guys. Yes. And it's Yay. in the perfect time because we're about to host a lot. So yeah. you can check out Dave and Jenny's new book on today dot com slash books. All right, coming up next, it's a big day for Jenna's bookshop. We're celebrating with some goodies after this. Yay.
Did you check your calendar? It's a special day around here. You guys, today marks the one year anniversary of Jenna's Bookshop. Oh, it we're going to year. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate with some great okay, products. Okay, well, I hope y'all are reading along with my latest book club pick. It's called The Sunsets in Singapore by Kendi mm -hmm. Fadipe. If you can check it out right there at the code below, but also shop along while we do this. So, as you mentioned, one year of Bookshop. Everyone wants the tea. Well, we have these really cute Read with Jenna t shirts. They are on sale for $18. Cozy. They're usually 32, so you save. Look at Wait. all of our cuties Wait. in them. Wait, oh my God, I can't. Uh, the I sale can't. is today only, and again, it's $18 while supplies last. All you have to do is go to NBCStore.com. Um, we should mention that the NBC Store and Today Show are both <laughs> NBC Universal companies. Let's get some cookies, okay, some sweet look treats. How cute these are insane. These cookies are. These are custom cookies. You can get them made for whatever you want. Okay, we have Texas theme, we have Read with Jenna theme, we have just Christmas, Christmas or Hanukkah, Hanukkah theme. Beautiful. They are sold by the dozen. They're individually bagged to maintain for four Look, weeks. The detail is insane. This is a small business. Yeah. It's from the Butter Stick Bakery in Seabrook, Texas. The head baker, Stephanie Dobos, has been creating these goods since 2008. $40 per They're thing, like but, pieces of but art. But you could make They're them pieces for your kids. of art. Aren't they beautiful? Yes, they're gorgeous. Okay, come on down here. Uh -huh. I want to introduce you to Books. Books? Books are these beautiful mm. wreaths. Okay, check out the wreath. This I hung one on my front door. Mm -hmm. um, th see it there? Look how nice it looks. That's your house? That's my house. I like it. Um, so this is hearth wreath. It's from the company. They are made of fresh eucalyptus leaves. They are a farm fresh sourced mm -hmm. directly from the farm, so they last longer. Beautiful. Today, they're normally $84, but today they are ordering 30% off. Huh? These are a great gift. Get them for all the people you love, okay? All you have it's to go It's a perfect is, fall gift. Today, perfect. This is the code, y'all, though. Today, 30 at books.com. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what about how cute this bookshop ornament oh is? Oh, my God. I feel like this was made specially for me, and it wasn't. They're cute. Okay, you can, the, um, Fritz and Fraylin to buy mm -hmm. this. It's $25, mm -hmm. or if New York, you can stop by their store. Mm -hmm. It's a small store in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. The shop creator, St Stacy Hager, is that? Nope. Hager. She started her company in 2012. Okay. And they're all made in the U.S. They're sustainable. Let's get to this. I know you love this. Well, in honor of our one-year anniversary, we wanted to do our very best seller. Do y'all remember this thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. I think Rainy my uses kids, it. My kids fought over Your it. Your kids fought over it. Well, now there's new, there's more colors. This sold out. People went crazy for it. Great it's for, for adults reading. and kids. It recharges for 80 hours. Look, you can read your book. You're not disturbing your partner. Your, your partner's asleep or your, your sister's asleep, and there you go. You can buy this at Amazon.com. If you've ever heard of that small store, Amazon.com. <laughs> I've heard of that. They are $21.99 each. Such a weird Whew. look what's happening. Look at the effect of it. We them. got through it. Okay, check out these products at Day.com. <laughs> slash Real with weird. Jenna. And we should mention Super that today weird. earns a commission on purchases from this. We'll segment. be back right after this. Tomorrow, Irish actress Eve Hewson is here. Oh, I love her. Plus, Mitch Album drops by with his new book. And then Justin Sylvester's got some celebrity scoop. Bye, guys. Bye. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on Today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Everybody, it's Today. Like, I 
won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on Today. Are you ready to get cozy this winter? I'm Today contributor Alejandra Ramos, and I can't wait to bring you four delicious dishes that will brighten up your busy holiday season. From delightfully delicious sides to a surprisingly simple yet elegant main, stay tuned because we've got you covered. This is Winter Essentials on Today All Day with our sponsor, Better Than Bouillon. Mac and cheese is one of my go-to crowd pleasers. You truly can't go wrong with this creamy comfort food, but as much as I love the classic recipe, sometimes I wanna mix it up and try something a little more exciting. This Manchego mac and cheese with chorizo hits all the right notes. It's cheesy and decadent with the perfect hint of spice. Let's get started with our sauce. So the secret to a great creamy mac and cheese is a bechamel sauce, which is what we're gonna put all that cheese and delicious flavor into. I've already got a stick of butter melting in here, and you wanna do it over kind of a low to medium heat, and then you can add some regular all-purpose flour in there. I like to use a whisk for this so that I can remove any kind of lumps, and the point here is to really cook down that flour so you're getting all the taste of the raw flour out. All right, we're almost there. It's starting to smell sort of rich and nutty, so you can tell that that flour has started to cook down. And now we're gonna slowly, slowly add our milk. Make sure that you keep whisking so that that flour butter base doesn't turn into any lumps. All right, there we go. All right, so we need to simmer this for about 10 minutes. That flour and butter is gonna thicken the sauce and you'll see how rich it gets. And now I'm gonna tell you the perfect way to make sure you have the sauce ready to go is you use a spoon. You wanna swirl it right through. And as long as it can hold and coat that back of the spoon, you can even do a little swipe like that. That's how you know it's perfect. And take this off the heat. So we're really gonna pack in some flavor by using the Better Than Bouillon Roasted Chicken Base. I'm using a heaping tablespoon of this, and this is gonna add seasoning and a little bit of depth to our sauce. As soon as it hit the sauce, I could smell that delicious roasted chicken aroma. So cozy. Now we're gonna add some smoked paprika. This adds color and a little bit of that smokiness. Another one of my favorite flavors, and it works really well with the chorizo. And now the star of our show, it wouldn't be mac and cheese without some cheese. So we are using two kinds of cheese today. I'm using Gruyere, which is really great for melting creaminess, and then the Manchego, which is a little bit sharper and adds this amazing kind of grown-up complexity to our sauce. And they both go in at the same time. And to start in, the heat from the bechamel is going to melt that cheese. All right, so this looks great. Now we can work on the chorizo. This is one of my favorite ingredients. I use it all the time, and this is a fully cooked chorizo. It's different than the fresh Mexican chorizo, so make sure you get this one because the flavor profiles are totally different. For this, I'm just going to cut it into sort of a dice, and then we're just gonna go through and cut them into little cubes. All right, so my pan is turned to medium high and I'm gonna saute that jody, so it just takes a few minutes. All right, and you see, once it hit that hot pan, the fat started to come out. There's no need to add any olive oil or butter or anything to this. The heat is really gonna render the fat that's already in the sausage. It smells amazing. It's gonna be so crispy and delicious. The one rule is you can only try like one or two pieces. Don't eat it all before you add it in the mac and cheese. That's a rule I always break. This looks perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. I can. Turn off the heat now. And then I'm just gonna use a slotted spoon to take out the chorizo. 
little paper towel on the plate is great just to kind of absorb that extra fat. There you go. Last bit. Pro tip, fry an egg in this. It's going to be delicious. Now we're going to bring all of these flavors together. It is about to be a mac and cheese party. So we've got the sauce, and if you want to just give it a little stir just to make sure it's nice and loose. Oh, it smells fantastic. I'm going to add that chorizo now. All of this goes in. Ooh, so gorgeous. So fantastic. That's nice and evenly distributed. And now we can add the pasta, which I've already cooked. And the trick whenever you're making mac and cheese or any kind of baked pasta is you wanna go two, maybe even three minutes less than what the package instructions tell you to do. Because remember, it's gonna continue to cook in the sauce, in the oven, and nobody wants mushy mac. All of that goes in. I'm using orequiete, which is my all-time favorite pasta shape. It means little ears. And remember, anytime you make pasta, you want to save a little bit of that pasta water. This is liquid gold, and this is gonna help you kind of loosen it up a bit. So just add it as needed. The texture you're going for here is kind of like a creamy sort of stovetop mac and cheese texture. For this, I am using just a regular kind of baking dish, ceramic, whatever you have, but you do wanna make sure you butter it first. Make sure every last bite goes in. Not wasting a single bite of delicious mac and cheese. Gorgeous. Then just use your spoon to kind of flatten it out a bit. Make sure it's nice and evenly spread out throughout your pan. And now for a final blessing. We've got more cheese. Just sprinkle this all over. This is the manchego. And little dots of butter. They'll melt and bubble as we cook. All right, this looks perfect. It smells amazing. And now for the finishing touch, we're gonna pop it into the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it's bubbling and golden on top. Some easy ways to make weeknight meals feel special are lighting a candle, being intentional with your meals, plating them nicely, putting the phone down, and really just enjoying the food and the people that you're with. This looks amazing. Once this comes out of the oven, you can let it rest for about five, 10 minutes, and then you can dive right in. All right, I'm ready to try this. I'm gonna serve myself a nice healthy portion. Oh, so good. You can smell that delicious smoky sauce, the chorizo. The sauce and cheese is so creamy. This is everything I want in a mac and cheese. Okay, gotta get that perfect bite, so make sure you get some pasta and some chorizo. This looks good. Mmm. Mm. So delicious. It's creamy, cheesy. It's got a little bit of a hint of that smoky spice from the chorizo. This is the perfect grown up mac and cheese. Up next, you don't want to miss my savory braised short ribs. My definition of a comfort food is something that feels cozy, nostalgic, and tastes 
incredible. In the colder winter months, I love making hearty, aromatic dishes. These Bray short ribs are perfect for entertaining, but they're incredibly easy to make. Plus, the leftovers are perfect for any weeknight meal. Let's get started with our braising liquid. So we're starting off with one whole Spanish onion. Just pop that back in. You wanna do just like a nice rough coarse chop, nothing fancy. Then we're gonna do one can of pumpkin puree. This is a delicious winter favorite and I love how it adds a little bit of sweetness to our short ribs. Get all that in. We're also gonna do some tomato paste, which adds nice, rich, concentrated tomato sweetness. And the star of our flavor party, we are using the Better Than Bouillon Italian Herb Base from the Culinary Collection. This has garlic and herbs. It's so rich with flavor and it's gonna add all of the seasoning to our sauce. For this, we're gonna do a quarter cup and I'm just gonna spoon it out here. And that just all goes right to the blender. Perfect. And now some red wine. I'm using a dry red wine. And you want to put in about two cups or so, depending on the size of your blender. And we're just going to puree until everything is nice and smooth and evenly combined. This looks perfect. It's nice, everything's creamy, evenly combined, so that when those short ribs are braising in it later, you know they're gonna get all of that flavor action. Speaking of short ribs, it's time to sear these off. So I've got a nice, heavy Dutch oven here. You really want a good, heavy pot because you're gonna be cooking these for a while. My pot has heated up to a medium-high heat, and I'm just gonna add a few tablespoons of vegetable oil. You want a nice, neutral oil here. And we're gonna start adding our short ribs. And so for this, we're gonna brown them a couple minutes per side. So typically, when I sear short ribs or really any kind of meat, I would add salt and pepper before doing so. But since we're using the Better Than Bouillon Italian Herb Base, this has all that great seasoning in it, and it saves us a step. So what we're doing here is we're rendering that fat. We wanna see that meat shrink up a little bit and get kind of crispy and brown on all sides. All right, these are looking great. You really want, oh, see that gorgeous color on the side there? All right, these look gorgeous, perfectly browned on every side. So you can take these out. We're just gonna let them rest and hang out while we do the rest of the batch. So searing those short ribs rendered out a lot of that fat and I want to remove most of that. You want to take out about, ooh, maybe like three-fourths of whatever you have in the pan here. Just pour that out. This. There you go. Leave a little bit at the bottom there. And now we can put the short ribs right back in. Just nestle them into that pan. Beautiful. We're going to add our braising liquid and just pour this right in. Look how rich and luscious this is. And we're gonna do the rest of our wine just all into the pot. Again, this is a dry red wine, but if you don't like to cook with wine, you can even use something like pomegranate juice or cranberry juice, that would be delicious here. And then we're gonna add some water, about two cups, and some delicious aromatics. This is some fresh rosemary and bay leaves. But the trick is remember how many you put in so you can remember how many you need to pull out. All right, so now we're just gonna cover it Bring this up to a boil, and then once it's bubbling and boiling in there, we can reduce it to a gentle simmer and let those babies cook. You want this to simmer about three to four hours, and that's gonna vary depending on the size of your short ribs, the pot that you use, and of course, just the strength of your stove. This looks amazing. That sauce is thick and rich. The short ribs are super tender. Some of them even fell off the bone, which is fantastic. That's exactly what you want. So now you want to just pull out those herbs. So make sure you get the little stems from the rosemary, all those bay leaves. This is why I tell you to remember how many you put in. Anytime that I cook something on a slow, low braise, I like to freshen it up at the end. And the perfect way to do that is with some lemon. So I just add a little bit of fresh lemon zest. I just kind of go in like this. I sort of collect it in the top. There's so much amazing flavor and aroma in the lemon peel. This is just really gonna brighten up our dish. Fantastic. And then we're gonna use the juice too. Squeeze this right in. Think of it as like 
splashing some cold water on your face after a nap. It really just kind of freshens everything up. Time to give these gorgeous short ribs a try. You know I love a garnish, so let's add a little something fun on top. I've got here some creme fraiche, which I think is just so fantastic because again, there's a little bit of acidity in the creme fraiche that is gonna be so great with these rich short ribs. I just dollop that on top, so pretty. And then we're gonna do a little bit of fresh parsley on top. If you prefer cilantro, that works too. I love that. Just, again, a little bit of freshness. And then the perfect finishing touch, just a little sprinkle of flaky salt. How gorgeous is this? What a perfect winter meal. See how tender it is? You don't even need a knife. It just falls right off the bone. Mm, it is rich. There's a little hint of sweetness. You're getting all that gorgeous garlic and herbs from our Italian herb base. I love dishes like this this time of year. It's rich, it's hearty, it's super cozy. The perfect way to end your day. Up next, I'm gonna introduce you to one of my childhood favorites, tostones. Stick around. Welcome back to Winter Essentials on Today All Day. One of the first dishes my mom ever taught me how to make is tostones. These salty, crispy fried plantains have a place in just about every Puerto Rican meal. While tostones are perfect with just a sprinkle of salt, they're even better with a couple zesty dipping sauces. So let's whip those up first. First up is mayo ketchup. Here we've got some mayonnaise in a bowl and then we're just gonna add some ketchup to it. And then we're gonna spice it up a little bit. We're gonna add some fresh lime. And then of course, it would not be a Puerto Rican recipe without a lot of garlic. All right, this looks perfect. I'm gonna set it aside for now and let it hang out. Now we're gonna make a garlic citrus mojo. We're gonna start off by mashing some garlic. So I'm gonna add a little salt here and this just creates some friction. And then we add our garlic cloves a few at a time. And then we just mash. You really kinda want this to be a nice sort of a coarse paste. Thing that looks like this. Oh my gosh, this is the most fragrant smell. Would wear this as perfume. I don't know if my husband would like that, but I'd do it. And now we're gonna add a lot more fun flavor. Some dried oregano and some cumin. Gonna mix that in. And now we can start adding our liquids. We're also gonna be using our citrus juice. Classic mojo is made using naranja agria, which is sour orange. And those are these guys right here. They are different than the typical orange, 
I'll show you inside. It's not super juicy, but the juice in here is very, very tart and it's absolutely fantastic. It's almost like two citrus combined. But if you don't have access to these, you can also just use half lime juice or lemon juice and half oranges. It works just as well. So you can pour those in. So whisk that all together. And then we're gonna add our olive oil. And I like to kind of drizzle this a little bit at a time as I whisked to kind of emulsify it a little bit, which really means just to kind of combine that citrus and the oil together. Beautiful. And we're gonna finish this off with a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper. All right. This looks amazing and ugh, smells even better. Creamy. We're gonna start making our tostones. Tostones use green plantains. I love plantains. They're sort of a starchier version of bananas. They're definitely in the same family, but they're not like the breakfast banana you usually eat. These are green because they're not super ripe, and that means that they're not very sweet. To cut plantains, you wanna start off by trimming the ends. The best way to take it off is to kind of run the edge of your knife along the peel, just to kind of loosen it up. And then you sort of stick your finger in there. It could be a little sticky. There we go. And just sort of force it off. Once you get in, then it comes off pretty easily. And then you just keep repeating. Beautiful. Tostones are fried twice. For that first fry, we wanna cut these into about two inch pieces. And I like to add a little bit of a bias, so basically just a little bit of an angle there. So we've got our oil up to 325 degrees and we're just gonna drop them in gently, just like this. And you wanna see those bubbles start to form. Gorgeous. All right, those are bubbling there. We're gonna let them go for about two or three minutes. You don't need them to fry completely because we are gonna bring them back in. So you really just want them to get a little bit darker, like a golden yellow. All right, these look ready to come out. And I just like to drain these on like a paper towel lined baking sheet or plate even. That's what my mom would do. See how they have that slightly darker golden color? That's exactly what you're looking for. Gorgeous. And then we repeat with the rest of the batch. All right, so make sure you keep that oil warm because we're gonna use it pretty soon. And now it's time to smash these plantains. You wanna work with them when they're still warm. And if you have plastic wrap or you can use parchment paper, which is what I like, that's gonna help keep the plantains from sticking to your surface. So a little parchment paper, a little plantain in the middle, kind of put it in the center there, smash it. Just a little twist is all you need. And voila, a perfectly smashed plantain. Don't feel like you need a perfect oval or circle or anything like that. In fact, I think the best tostones are the ones that are like a little bit crazy shaped. Perfect, all right, that's our last one. Now these are ready to go back into the hot oil for that second fry. The smell of the plantain frying in the hot oil just reminds me of my mother's kitchen. These are gonna fry for about one to two more minutes. You still want it to be nice and golden. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. Oh, these look amazing. They smell so good. As soon as you take them out, you wanna hit them with a little bit of salt while they're still hot so that the salt can stick to the tostones. Perfect. Now I'm gonna repeat the rest of the batch. All right, we've got our sauces, we've got our tostones. Now it's time to taste. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of each of these sauces into these cute little serving bowls. Make sure you get some of that garlic in there because that's where all the flavor lives. Oh, I can smell that citrus, I can smell the garlic. This is just one of my most favorite things. You've got the salty, crispy toston and our fantastic dipping sauces. Uh, I can't choose which one, so I'm just gonna go for a little bit of each. Starting with that delicious mojo. Mmm, 
spicy, salty. Let's give them mayo ketchup a try too. Oh, these are amazing. Who made this? So salty, crispy, spicy, delicious. These taste like home to me. Up next, we've got a holiday drink that comes to life during this magical season. A tradition during the holiday season for my family, and I think for a lot of Puerto Rican families, is making coquito to give away. So you make a big, huge batch of it, and then you put it in bottles with little labels, and you can bring it to friends, to neighbors, family members. Growing up, my mom was in charge of making coquito, and my dad would bring batches of it to work with him. But in recent years, I've totally taken over the job, which my mom is actually glad I've taken over that task. <laughs> she was happy to relinquish the duty. Welcome back to Winter Essentials on Today All Day. Coquito has its own rich culture and traditions behind it. Just one sip and I feel like I'm on the island celebrating Navidad with my family and friends. If you love coconut like I do, this is gonna be your new go-to drink around the holidays and maybe even any time of year. Coquito is very simple to make. Basically, if you can open a can, you can make coquito. For this, we're using just a few pretty easy to find pantry ingredients. We're starting off with coconut milk. That goes right in. Next up is some evaporated milk. This is cream of coconut. And now for some condensed milk. This is a very decadent holiday drink. Oh, I love that. How good that looks. So this is the base of our coquito. Now we can add a little bit of flavor. I love adding some cinnamon, pure vanilla extract. That goes right in. And then I love to add a little salt. And a lot of people don't add the salt, but I like this because I think it really balances out all that rich sweetness and it just sort of makes the flavors pop. All this into your blender and you just wanna mix it up for about a minute, just so every ingredient is really, really combined. Perfect. Oh, you'll see it's gonna be like a little bit frothy on top. So fantastic. And now this you wanna pour it into a large pitcher or a really large bowl. And now for the fun stuff. This is white rum. Obviously a Puerto Rican cocktail would not be a Puerto Rican cocktail without rum. I admit that I'm very generous with my rum and my coquito. I do a full three cups. All right, wanna give that a little stir. And I'm also gonna drop in a couple cinnamon sticks. These will infuse the drink with some additional cinnamon flavor. Plus, special little touch. I love adding a whole vanilla bean. So this is the whole vanilla bean, and in order to get that flavor out, what you wanna do is you wanna hold it down with one finger here, use a paring knife like this, just to split the bean, go all the way down the side, and that sort of releases all that delicious flavor in there, and we can just drop them right in. One, two. Now, coquito is best served chilled. I like to pop it in the fridge for at least two hours before serving, but you can make this in advance, the day before, a few days before, as long as it's nice and chilled. 
After chilling is for a while, the coconut milk can sometimes thicken up a bit. So it's always a good idea to give it a good stir to make sure everything is nice and loose and you get all those wonderful flavors. Because of the richness, I also really recommend serving it either with ice or even in just a very small cordial glass. Today we're gonna go with ice. Let's pour it in. Beautiful. And I love a garnish. <laughs> So we're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon on top, just to dust it over, and a cinnamon stick. Look how festive this looks. Take a little sip. Mmm. The coconut, the rum, the cinnamon, all of these flavors taste like Christmas to me. This is the perfect holiday drink. I hope you try all the delicious dishes we made together today. I had so much fun sharing them with you. Salud! Uh, this morning on Today Table, the perfect dish for your Labor Day weekend celebrations. Going to prep those end of summer parties with a recipe from today contributor Alejandro Ramos, who's got something for everyone. Nice little surf and turf, uh, yes. knee swap platter. Alejandro. Here we are. What do you think? All right, let's get ready. All right, so, so you this is a, a lot of turf. components. And right. even do some of the stuff in advance. We're starting off with our skirt steak. Got to get a lot of flavor oh, yeah. in there. That's some lime zest mm -hmm. and lime juice. Yes. You've got to get both. Never waste it. There's a little bit of garlic in there that'll someday come out. Oh, there we go. Boop. Some pepper, some mm -hmm. salt. All right. And I'll let you do a little toss of that. Okay. Olive oil too. And then how so you want to let that So you want to do at least like half an hour to an hour. Mm -hmm. Preferably, I would do longer. You can even do up to two days. Okay. Get that marinated in advance. The right. shrimp you don't need as much time with. Yeah. So these are just large jumbo shrimp. You can mm -hmm. do some garlic, some salt. This only needs a little. Ooh, that salt's still here. A little <laughs> bit of flavor. It's steamy. It's, it's a little, little steamy in the uh, in a. The studio today, a little bit of olive oil. <laughs> well, that's what we're doing. Okay. It's Labor Day. We gotta celebrate. So you marinate that. Yes. Yeah, so you we got yourself a hot grill. Marinate that, and then we've got the hot grill, and then this goes right on. So this is how good that steak looks. Skirt steak cooks really quickly, so this is just gonna be a couple minutes each side. You mm. want to hear that sizzle? Right. Uh, and I would do them separately. I would do the steak first, the shrimp at the end because shrimp cooks. Uh, a, lot a lot faster, but today we are just going to throw everything on there. Okay. And yeah, and this is just so great. You can do this on a grill outside. You can do this on a grill pan inside. Whatever works best for you. You could serve this hot, but you can also do this in advance and serve it chill. Like room temperature. Absolutely. So now you got your your green beans. We're moving on to our green beans. Green beans are kind of a classic part of the classic niçoise, even mm -hmm. though we're uh, mixing it up a little bit. Right. You want to trim the ends. I like to do them a few at a time. Yep. And then just cut them into a couple, slightly smaller pieces. Toss them in there, yeah. and then we're gonna do these on a uh, skillet. I like a little char on my green beans. Oh, if, yeah. if you prefer to steam them, mm -hmm. you can do that too. I also but it gives like a, a different little... flavor. Exactly. Guys, what are you thinking? You, what do you guys think? Beyond. Delicious. Yes. Beyond. This is so, so good. The the, tr the, the, uh, the trick is really to add flavor to every component oh, in your salad. It's like yeah. surprises every yeah. turn. Here's Wait, a potato. What are, you, what are you putting in the So green I just beans? put in some garlic, some grated garlic mm -hmm. in with the olive oil. Grated garlic. And then, um, so that's going to give these a little bit of flavor. Okay. Just saute those. Exactly. Saute them. You just want a little char. Mm. Salt, pepper. Wow. A little salt, a little pepper. Mm. Yeah. So basically, just think about everything that's in your salad. You want it to be delicious. Mm. Like like you said, a surprise in every bite. It really is. And now really fun. Yeah. And then the dressing. So we, you can keep an eye on those for mm. me. I'll this let you dressing do. Dressing is Ooh, yes. delicious. This the Roca. So our dressing, again, really simple, kind of uh, classic vinaigrette flavors. We've got some mustard in here. We've got some shallots, some garlic, a little bit of chives, and then it's really just simple olive oil, lemon juice, okay. and some vinegar. Simple flavors. Simple ingredients. You've got everything in your pantry. If you don't have the shallot, you can mm -hmm. do a little red onion too. That works. Right. So just good. whisk it all together. Mm. And then you've That's got your, your you've got all of your stuff, and then the little add-ons. Bring it all together. So Beautiful. much fun stuff here. So we've got the little gem salad, which I think is so pretty. Yeah. We add our steak, our shrimp. We've got capers anchovies, olives. You assemble oh and God. voila. Assemble and you've got a feast in a platter. Niçoise. Yes. All right, Alejandro, <laughs> thank you so much. We are back with our series Today Table, and this time we're going to put a summer spin on two classic dishes using the seasonal vegetable we all love, squash. Today, contributor Alejandro, Alejandro Ramos is here with us today. <laughs> Hi. It is good to see you. Always Hi. a joy to be with you all. All right, so what's our first recipe? All right, so we are starting off with a summer squash quesadilla. Ooh. Keeping it cheesy. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Oh, Craig, I love when I'm cooking with you. So you get our, well, 
Well, first he would have done the onions first, oh, but it's sorry. okay. It's okay. <laughs> onions you first. Don't worry, Craig. Craig. You're Craig. good. You're all good. It's, it's fine. It's Pretend all good. we did the onions first, yeah. then the squash. Now, whenever you're working with something like summer squash, uh -huh. it has a lot of liquid in there, so you want to cook it down. Right. Because you want the quesadillas to be cheesy, not soggy right. or wet. Right. And you're using red onions, but you could use any onions. Yes. Yeah. I like the red because, you know, I like color. Yeah. I like of it. Of course. Color. <laughs> I like to keep it bright. That's it. <laughs> What's the best we add kind of cheese to use? Oh. oh, yeah. So what, also, we want to do a little garlic in there uh -huh. or a lot of garlic. Right. Uh, you want to cook everything down first and then the garlic okay. right at the end. So it's going to end up looking like this. It's going to look like this. Hey, and then the yummy. cheese, Vicky. Oh, wait. You yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I love, Craig's like, I'm done. Have you, I put have the you met Craig in. Melvin? No, yeah. apparently not. Craig's done wow. cooking. So okay. we're going we're gonna to swap. Um, we're going to do a little bit of cheese well, first. You I'm you using got flour, but could you use corn? You can use corn, and that's actually a great tip. If you want to keep it gluten free, you can swap mm. in a corn okay. tortilla. I like to sandwich cheese first, then the squash filling. And then you do cheese on top. That means that keeps it all sort of yeah, yeah. extra cheese More but cheese. also it means that it's going to stay together mm -hmm. better right because the cheese acts as the glue and then boom boom into our pan i'm cooking it in butter also if you want to add a little bit of heat you can hit it with a little bit of a, a hot yeah, sauce right. i like a chipotle hot sauce gives a good that? flavor cook it until it starts to shrink up a little bit uh -huh. cheese gets bubbly you'll see it'll kind of like it'll look almost like it's breathing right uh -huh. that's when the cheese is cooking down there you give it that flip mm -hmm. is a spatula a big spatula yes yeah. big spatula uh yes yeah. And then what we're gonna do here is uh, a little crema, oh. a little spicy crema. So we've got some Greek yogurt yep. here. You can also do sour cream. Sure. Um, smoked Spanish paprika, a little bit of chili powder, mm -hmm. some ground cumin, mm -hmm. and sure some time for the fresh okay. lime juice mix and zest. Boom, boom, mix it all together. And and crema Delicious is and sour wonderful. Cream. All right. Crema, okay. exactly. All right, what are we making here? Here we've got some goat cheese and some heavy cream and a little bit of garlic. Yeah. And this is the base for our white pizza. So this oh. is a zucchini white pizza. And you know all these recipes, pizza. you can use the white zucchini, the yellow zucchini, or the green, whatever mm -hmm. you have. Ooh, um, so good. Do you want to get this nice and creamy and smooth? Pretend what do you that use I. For the dough. For the dough, I bought it at the grocery no store. Shame. Al. Work. No shame. <laughs> no shame. No shame. So this kind of sauce, mm -hmm. once it's nice and smooth, you kind of spread it out. This is goat cheese. You can swap in cream cheese, ricotta, right. whatever you prefer. Really. And it gives it really nice flavor. And then you layer in your zucchini. And what you want to do? Slice really thin. Slice super thin because you, you want it to it. cook. Exactly. Do so you, you use a mandolin translucent. for that? Is that a mandolin? Oh, you're fancy. Yes, sir. Mandolin okay. is the way to do it. You can use a knife, but it is a lot more work. And mm -hmm. you know, it's summer. Summer, we don't want to work. We just want to eat and feast. A mandolin. And so you mm. And then some, some thinly sliced shallots or onions. And then we also have the cheesy, right. uh, you can do fresh mozzarella. I mean, um, like the part skim mozzarella. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that comes in the bag. A red this pepper. just kind of gives it the pull that's better perfect. than the fresh. Wow. Perfect wow. for Meatless so Monday. Good. So yes. delicious. This yeah, Meatless so Monday. And you can add other stuff to it. But look how Gorgeous, that that's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, Alejandra, Yummy. thank you so much. Thank you, you guys. Bring it. So I love bring to be it. here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>back with our Today Table series and this morning we are cooking up a dish with, with a classic summer staple, squash. Who doesn't love squash? <laughs>
Uh, joining us this morning today, contributor Alejandro Ramos. Alejandro, always good to have you. Love Thanks being for... here, Craig. So if you're in the grocery store and you're yes. picking out a, a zucchini, how do you know how to pick out the right zucchini or squash? Well, I think for recipes like this, you want something that's kind of that sort of nice medium size. It's going to okay. be a little bit sweeter. You want something that feels nice and firm. If it's a little flopsy or something like that, you okay. don't want that. So this feels nice. This feels really good. These are good. Yeah, and this is, you know, squash season is... Like once you get, if you're a gardener, once you get the squash, it's just coming in quick. So this is a great recipe to use it up. It's so much flavor, and you can use the yellow or the green, oh. or a mix of both, whatever okay. you like. Any kind of summer squash. It comes in other shapes too. All right. uh, and for this, we're gonna dice it. I like the dice because we're using a shortcut pasta. Shortcut. And why and are we using the shortcut pasta? Mostly because I like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good enough use, reason. Use yeah. what you like. Yeah, you but you could use it. It's my reason. favorite pasta shape. We're using an orecchiette. Okay. Um, but what I like it. So you really want to just get that kind of small shape, right? Like that small dice. So basically, whenever you're doing like a short pasta, you want the veggies to be about the same size. Okay, so they the cook pasta. evenly. So they cook evenly. And so it's also just kind of a nice feel when you're cooking. Right. So this is like a nice little small dice here. We've got some aromatics, that's your onions, mm. right? Cooking in some butter and some olive oil. I like a nice mix of both. There's some garlic. Put that garlic in there once the onions are soft. The garlic, you just want to let it go until it's fragrant. So you okay. pop it in. The minute you smell it, it's ready to go. Little chili flakes, you can skip them if you don't like oh. heat. I like mm -hmm. heat. So we're putting that in there. Do you guys get oh, a little bit of spice in oh there? Oh, yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. good. I love it. <laughs> a little lemon, too. Yeah. A yeah. little good lemon, heat. yes. Great flavors. And then we can pop all of these nice zucchini mm -hmm. dice oh, in here. Okay. Mm. And then we, what, mm -hmm. the reason we're cooking the uh, zucchini first is because you want to get that moisture out of it, okay. right? Zucchini has a lot of liquid in it. So you want it to cook down. That concentrates that sweetness. Uh, and it just works out really well. And then that way, you're not going to get like a watery sauce. So roughly how long are we going to cook it here? So we're going to go about, it depends on the, so the younger the zucchini, the quicker it cooks, but okay. you want to do three to seven minutes, depending okay. on how small it is. The uh, the bigger ones might be a little bit tougher and they'll take a little bit longer. And the tomatoes? Uh, yeah, so we're going to do a little bit of salt in there too. Okay. And then we're also going to do some cherry tomatoes. You could do grape tomatoes. I love to pop these in there too. And then what's great about these is you throw them in whole, the heat from the cooking oh, is going to kind of soften, soften them. them. Oh, yes. They might burst a little. Uh -huh. You might hear them popping. Don't get scared. That's good. <laughs> Don't be scared. <laughs> Don't be scared. Um, this is your favorite pasta. This is my favorite pasta shape. It's called orecchiette. It means little ears in Italian. Orecchiette. Oh. Orecchiette. It's fun hey. to say, right? It is. Uh -huh. Orecchiette. <laughs> nice orecchiette. What's the word, Al? It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. it's, oh, yeah. You can also oh, just call it fantastic. Or whatever. That's right. <laughs> that word. But any kind of shortcut, like the short, small shape pasta, okay. a ziti, a penne, a cavatelli, whatever you want, will work too. Me. So you're going to cook it a minute or two less than the package directions because Why is you that? want it to finish it off in the oh, sauce. Okay. And are we reserving some pasta water? Yes. Always reserve pasta water. That is like liquid gold. I'm going to bring this over here. And I dump this out. And why do we reserve the pasta water again, Alejandro? So we call it liquid gold because the pasta water has a little bit of that salt that you added. Uh, and it also has that starchiness, okay. right, that it absorbs from the pasta. And so it's going to create a sort of natural creaminess, and it's going to help. So once you add sauce, it's going to help, like, you can, if you need to thin it out a little bit or thicken it up. So this over here is our kind of reserved pasta water. Okay. And you don't need tons. Like, I always pull out a cup before I do the pasta. Okay. And like pro tip, get the pasta water cup out first because otherwise you'll forget. Oh, yeah. You're gonna dump you, it all down the yep. drain you and you're like, no, no, that is my gold. You get the pasta water <laughs> after the pasta has been cooked in after it. After it's been okay. cooked, yeah. not yeah. before yeah. you. So yeah, yeah, that's when it's got all that great yeah. starch in it. It's got fantastic. It. So, so we're gonna this, add this straight to the pan. Right into the pan, we're cooking it in the pan. That's why we let it cook a little bit uh, shorter first so that it can finish off And that's the just pan. Greek yogurt there? This is just Greek yogurt. Oh, so you're getting a creamy sauce, but no, like, no heavy cream or anything like okay. that. You're going to get the creaminess just from it. And also the Greek yogurt has like a really nice tang. Yep. That said, do do the full fat Greek yogurt. Do full fat. I'm not, I'm not that virtuous. So <laughs> we, this, isn't, this isn't like a skinny pasta recipe. And here's your pasta water. Pasta water. And how much which butter Which you can use that? to like thin it out as needed. Nice. Butter also works mm -hmm. to add a little bit of extra creaminess if you'd like. You can also skip this if you don't need it. Why would you? And the lemon that you mentioned, lemon Al, that's so a little fresh lemon yes. zest. Ah. You get so much flavor from um, lemon zest, much more than you do from juice itself. Oh, that is quite tasty. Yeah. Finish it off that. with some fresh herbs. What if you wanted to add a little protein to it, Alejandro? Oh, absolutely. You can do chickpeas if you want to keep it vegetarian okay. for Jacob. Uh -huh. Or you can Jacob. do... Blowing up my spot. You can do a little chicken if you want. Is there um, some you can mint do like, in this? 
Yes, there's a little bit of fresh mint. Oh, I love wow. it. I'm like, I call it kind of like a garden zucchini pasta, right? Yeah, so, oh my God. Pull out all those great summer flavors. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to start off with uh, Alejandra right now. So, of course, you know Alejandra Ramos. You've seen her here, here today <laughs> and on her show. Okay, break, everybody, break. <laughs> They're going to go play cornhole. And so you're making something kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, the the mufaletta, which is, we've heard of. Yes, heard down, in, down in New Orleans. These are a New Orleans classic and fave. But you're making baby. You, yeah, usually they're about this big, right, but huge. since it's a block party, we want to keep them kind of small for grab and go. That's right. right. Okay. Also, you want to be able to enjoy all the treats. Yes. I don't want to fill up on just one sandwich. So for this, the key thing about the muffaletta is the olive salad, uh -huh. right? So that's kind of like the spread. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make it in a food processor. We're right. starting with, with some uh, um, stuffed olives, like right. the green ones. Like or the also, manzanilla olives. Yes, exactly. Uh, then we're also going to do some of these kalamatas. But okay. honestly, you can do a mix of whatever olives you have. Sure. Just make sure no pits. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we're also going to do some capers. I right. love capers. These are briny. They're uh -huh. salty. Some pepperoncini okay. peppers, garlic. Of course. You know I don't Gotta do recipes garlic. without garlic. And then this is giardinera. So these are, it's an Italian mix of pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's oh, so delicious. Those. You buy this in a jar. Uh -huh. So good on its own. But we're adding it here, and it's going to add a lot, of, like this nice mm. tangy, yep. briny bite. We've got some olive oil, some lemon juice. That all goes in there. And what's great is, like, honestly, these are jars, basically, mm -hmm. right? So it's a bunch of jars into their food processor. You can do this by hand if you prefer, because then right. you can, um, you can like, pan chop it. Right. You really want the little coarse. I'm having a little trouble here, Mr. Roker. <laughs> you get it. Okay, but you, 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 you know, well, you know, how, you know how food processor works. So you go, use that pulse button. You go to chop, right. chop, 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 chop. You want a nice coarse chop. It's yep, going like to look that. like this. You don't want a puree. Could the, you make this ahead of time? Actually, you should make it ahead of time, oh, okay. right? Because that's why these sandwiches are so great. Mm -hmm. These sandwiches should be made up to uh, 48 hours in advance because oh. they taste better that way. Because all the juices soak yes. into the bread. You got it, yeah. sir. Yeah, so all of this olive spread gets in there. Mm -hmm. It soaks into the bread. I like going on both sides. Oh, OK. And both then, sides. yeah, both sides. And then we just build the sandwich, right? OK. Uh, and we've got a whole variety of meats here. You can do the soppressata. It's kind of dealer's choice, whatever you want to put in. Whatever you want to do, whatever what is on sale, whatever mm -hmm. your family or your Friends love. What is Pile this? it on. This is mortadella, I'm but I'm not a big fan of Yeah, I'm not a big Yeah, so this, oh, you can also do like bologna, people uh -huh. like it. But honestly, it's, do you worry more about the amount of meat? Right. So if you want to do a pound of meat, but you can pick and choose what you want. And then we're also using some provolone, oh. which is really nice because that also has a little bit of spice, uh -huh. a little bit of kick to it. Uh, I love food with a lot of flavor. Right. Pile it together. So then we've got our beautiful sandwich here. Mm -hmm. And then here's the tip first. Okay. Uh, so I don't have it here, but if you have some plastic wrap, right. you wrap it up in plastic wrap. And then you're gonna use a skillet or pile of cookbooks and you weigh it down and this is how you put it in the fridge. Oh. And you leave it for 48 hours mm -hmm. like this. And then we can do the cut. I'll, I will let you do the honors there. I like doing little uh, little oh, triangles little, little almost. Little triangles. I know, I should have told you that before, <laughs> before we cut. But it's great. And then because this, these are such um, kind of like they're, they're loaded. Stacks. Exactly, loaded. You want to do the the a little pin, but in I fact, love... it's kind of like my uncle like, uh, like at our, he's at our block totally party. Loaded. He used to get loaded. Oh, he's loaded. <laughs> you gotta love those guys. The olive kind of holds it down. Mm -hmm. Looks so so fun. Yeah, hold on. What do you think me... about this? Yeah, hold on. Uh, it, it, this is part of the problem with the with the block party. You're oh, spitzing. No. Oh, you're no. spitzing. Oh, it's that summer we're, heat. We're spitzing That's here. how you know you're yeah. having a good time. <laughs> And so, right. especially with the heat, you want something like nice and cool and refreshing. Exactly, cool and refreshing. We've got some fresh fruit, but here's a fun way to do it. So we're doing these DIY charcuterie oh. cups. So you can buy these little paper cups like, uh -huh. at, um, at the store. You can get them online. Right. And then all you do is you can layer in your like meats and cheese oh, and brilliant. some rosemary. Mm -hmm. And you can also make little skewers like with the like the fresh mozzarella balls uh -huh. here. You know, everything here is a little it's a little warm today. <laughs> <laughs> This is what people are gonna have. This is what their it's block gonna party. be like, right? But that's good. And so oh, then you put this those is those brilliant. In. So you can just walk Look around. How gorgeous! Yeah, you can walk around with it, and that way you don't have people like pulling it off the uh, the charcuterie shelf. That is fantastic. What do you I think about this. that? Yeah, let me try a little bit. I love this. Mm. Also, do you know how to make a charcuterie rose? No. Look at these guys, right? How do you do that? Uh, okay, so this is like a fun little tip you can do. So you can use a champagne flute for this, mm -hmm. and we can use some of this uh, little warm salami here. And you just kind of load it on the side like that, mm -hmm. and then you just layer it in. And you can do this in a wine glass too, but that'll be a bigger uh -huh. rose. And you just kind of keep layering it like that. See, and I'll just do the little, like that. And then once you uh, have another layer there, uh -huh. there we go. And 
you can flip it out. Oh. And that's how you get your oh my rose. gosh. Look, I mean, isn't that just the cutest that's, thing? That's amazing. So these are these are great and for this you, party, you or got, these are you great got for You've got the salami rose. Yeah, right over here, roses. we've got Chef David oh, rose. We've got two roses. What a, what a great <laughs> idea. I love it, though. Today table series. We are whipping up a light and citrusy chicken dinner that only takes 15 minutes. So here to show us how is today contributor Alejandro Ramos. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. How are you? Hello. So this is a perfect, easy spring summer recipe. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love this one. And yet yeah, perfect this time of year. So this is a mojo citrus chicken. Ooh. So mojo, I'm Puerto Rican and it's a Caribbean sauce with a lot of garlic, some mm. citrus. Amazing on all types of uh, meats and we're doing, doing it with chicken today. Mm -hmm. And why do we use such a thin slice there? So here, well, we're, we want to get this quick. So it's 15 right. minutes. So the thinner the chicken, it's going to absorb all that flavor Got and it. cook so really, really quickly. So you pound this down? So you can pound it down. So you can buy the thick ones and cut them into two or three mm. of uh, slices and then pound it down. Or, or you can them. buy them. Okay. You can buy them. Uh, so flavor, olive which oil? That sounds like it. Like that's so we I put in a little bit of olive oil. Thank you, Chanel. <laughs> a little bit of olive oil, some fresh lime juice, mm -hmm. and some fresh orange Ooh, juice. Okay. Or if sweet. you that's even, yeah, so that kind of gives you this mimics. Um, in the Caribbean, we use uh, Seville oranges for this, mm -hmm. sour oranges, so that sort of mimics that flavor. What did you just put in there? So that is some dried oregano, a little bit of cumin, some salt, uh -huh. and then with the garlic cloves, what I like to do, because it just makes that, it absorbs oh, that flavor, yeah. mm -hmm. no chopping, just use a microplane and you can grate oh, it all right. right in. So you get how that long in is there. that going to sit? So we honestly, so this could go just a few minutes if mm -hmm. you want, right? You give them that nice little toss, or you can even do this a day or two okay. in advance. To so really have whatever works. So if right. like you know you didn't do it in advance, that's okay. You can do it. Okay. But if you have time, make it in advance. Then hot um, griddle, hot skillet, mm -hmm. and then you can just pop these in. Mm -hmm. What I like to do is like you want to kind of drain off the excess right. uh, marinade so that it doesn't. Ooh, ooh that's yeah, there's that sizzle. <laughs> and these are going to quick cook pretty quickly. Yeah. But, you know, it's going to be about three minutes per side. Mm -hmm. depending on the thickness okay. and you can do this with the full uh, size kind of chicken breast right. if you prefer but obviously that's going to cook longer sure. so just talk about making your own dressing yes okay so making your own dressing i'm a big fan of making my own dressing i like to make a big batch in the stop of the week because then you can control the Have flavor right. and yeah. the ingredients so oh, for olive this, oil olive oil i'm using lime juice here or lemon juice a little bit of red wine vinegar i mm -hmm. like that because you get that mix of the acidity mm -hmm. but also the flavor too much of one isn't going to give you that cumin? pop and then what was a that? little bit of cumin in there really? too so i'm mimicking the same flavors we okay. have in that marinade right. there and Honestly, that's it. Then, yeah, the salt, pepper, you've got to get Mr. Al Roker in the kitchen with you to mix it up. So there you go. Presentation goes a long way. I mean, presentation, so. long way. I love doing a salad like this on a platter. It's mm. especially gorgeous in the summer. Mm -hmm. If you want to like put a little bit of those onions yeah, on 
there. And some mm. tomato slices. Just mm. kind of spread it all out like that. But also, mm. what's nice about this is when you drizzle that dressing mm -hmm. on top, you can get that on sort of nice and evenly. Right. But, you know, I'm skip. I'm actually missed the what most important avocado. part. Avocado. Avocado. The avocado. Avocado. Yeah, so you just slice those like nice little ripe mm -hmm. avocado mm -hmm. slices in there. You know what, the normally looks. when chicken it, it's thin like this, I've learned my lesson um, yes. about marinating because it can be dry. It but can this be is really, really dry. moist and yummy. Exactly, so it does cook quickly. You don't want to overcook it, but adding that marinade is really gonna add flavor that. and keep it nice mm -hmm. and oh, wow. juicy and Delicious. Tender. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's good. 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 it works really wow. well. I love it. It's one of my favorites. And you could serve this warm or cold. You could serve it warm or cold. Yes, yeah, so you can make the Split. chicken and serve it right on top, or you can make chicken in advance and then just put it together mm, in a nice little salad minutes. bowl to bring mm. to work. Can't beat perfect. it. Yeah. The dressing so is easy. so perfect. Isn't mm. the dressing great? our series today table you may be feeling overwhelmed now that the holidays are here but don't worry today contributor Alejandra Ramos is back with two appetizers that will impress your guests without any stress all righty so we're gonna start off with a tart flambe aka a bacon pizza okay <laughs> Who doesn't love that, doesn't right? What you call it? First of all, tart flambe. Tart flambe. So tart it's flambe. An it's an Alsatian okay. uh, uh, dish that the bakers in Alsace used to use to test their ovens, but it's really mm. just bacon pizza, guys. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to render some bacon fat. Then when you've got that bacon fat in there, you throw some onions in. Mm -hmm. And what? Now this is going to start off on the top, and it goes into the stove. So you don't want to cook the onions all the way, and you don't want to cook the bacon all the way, because okay. mm -hmm. it's all going to finish up in the oven. So this is just cooking in there. You want to let it go just until it's like sort of soft. Golden. You don't need a full caramelization because that takes all day. This Isn't is it so delicious? Good. Is good. Well, so the good. onions have flavor because of this. Exactly. That, well, the bacon. I mean, the bacon fat adds it below. Makes it better. This is store-bought pizza mm. dough. If you want to make it oh. from scratch, you can. I won't be doing it from scratch, right. so not gonna make you guys do Tastes it. Good to me. And then you want to roll it out. Okay. You kind of want like a nice oval, just because I guess that's what the fancy bakers are. Like looks fancy. <laughs> you want it fancy. Okay. Um, and then you want to just kind of stretch it out. One thing to know when you're working with store-bought dough, yeah. if it's too cold it'll probably shrink up okay so if you're noticing that you're rolling and rolling and, and it it's pulling back kind of like it just did right here yeah just let it hang out for a little bit okay. Once okay. you know you gotta a let little it relax bit. Like, what, like 30 minutes yeah well no no even less like 10 15 oh, you just okay. want it to okay. warm up a little it's like when you go to a party and people are like but yes. you need time to warm <laughs> up a little, little bit warm yeah, up. you want to get cozy and i taste what is this. that oh my god so that's this what is, this is this exactly so that's an herb cheese this is like a borsan you can use any kind of herb cheese you want or an herb goat cheese um you can even just do a plain cream cheese if you prefer that is good. And so for this, we're going to make that sort of cheesy base. And then, you know, it's a little chilly in the studio, so it's a little bit cold, but you want it nice and soft mm. and room temp. You mix it with some heavy cream. This is why you're That's what you it is, heavy cream. You know, I love a light recipe, ladies. Mm. <laughs> and then you mix it all up. Um, you can do a little salt and pepper in there, too. And then you spread this on here. Okay. And then we're going to do those onions. And look, take a look at this, because I want you, um, you to see that's okay. how soft you're looking for over there. You don't want them to go fully, fully cooked. And how do, how Bacon on top. That? 
into the oven not too long. I think it's like 15 minutes. Okay. Maybe check the recipe at today.com. <laughs> what about these mini tacos? And yeah. then we're going to make these look fun. the cutest, mm, most adorable good. baby tacos you've ever seen. They're so cute. So mm. we're going to start off by marinating our little baby shrimp. Okay. Get the smallest you can find. Baby, mini, whatever you mm, got. Thank you. you buy them frozen? Just, just like frozen? Uh, you could do frozen or fresh, fresh. just not cooked. You want okay. them to be raw. Right. That is just a chipotle and adobo sauce. So you okay. buy the can. Don't use the, the uh, chipotle, it's just the sauce. Okay. A little fresh lime juice, if anyone wants to give mm. that a stir. I don't okay. want to stop you from eating, but oh. no, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> little yummy. olive oil oh. in the pan. Mm. Um, very small dice on peppers and mm. onions. This is mostly for color, a little bit of flavor. You can do some salt in there too. Okay. A little salt in there okay. too. You want seasoning, flavor, everywhere That's you yummy. go. All right, 10 inch tortilla, like the burrito okay. kind. Oh. Biscuit cutter okay. or cookie oh. cutter. And I then you just cut coming. these out. Oh, that's how you do That's how you get the teeny tiny. Oh, and again, this is like everything in the stew. It's just chilly, chilly, but you'll go through Should it. Should I put this empty? Yeah. Yeah, you can toss that in. And yeah. then you just cook it. It literally takes like two, three minutes. I mean, it cooks so fast. This is yummy. The smaller they are, the faster they Wait, cook. Wait, what was this again? Oh, so that is adobo sauce. Oh, just what is this sauce adobo. now? That. Oh, <clears throat> So this is uh, just like a little bit of creme fraiche or yogurt with some mm. cumin and oh, some lime juice. Well, that's what I A little, yes, so like fun. a little DIY well crema there. And oh, then, I, how fun is this, right? Way so cute. Go. And then look, then they look like this adorable little this thing. You really put good. a little bit of the crema on there. Yeah. You put the shrimp, garnish them, well, a little this toothpick. This is fantastic. Yeah, well, everyone, both are. people love mini things. They do. They oh, love it. Thank you so much. I'll be like, oh, I'll just take one. Oh, okay, one more. Oh, we know we're on. We're just chit chatting. We're back with today's food this morning. We're finishing up your Thanksgiving shopping list. We've got easy ideas to help you spend less time in the kitchen. And here's some fuss free ways to do Thanksgiving appetizers. Ina Garten, I love that you are doing fuss free. Well, there's enough to do with Thanksgiving. I don't want to start making little things wrapped in phyllo dough. <laughs> I know. I, well, actually, you just I, don't need to do it. I love your whole philosophy of Thanksgiving because a lot of times if you're the chef, you're like stuck in the kitchen the whole time, I'm not having exhausted. fun at your own party. And exhausted, right? Okay. Which no guest wants to see. Yeah, so exactly. Let's start over here. We're going to start oh, okay, with over here. Okay, that? good. I'm glad you know what we're doing. Okay, over here we go. <laughs> I'm no orders. I'm dying because I was just eating <laughs> potato chips. That's why we were I, laughing. I, I I can't believe we're, I'm serving potato chips on the Today Show. <laughs> I know, I know. But they're <laughs> in a garden, so. That's the first thing everybody wants, okay. right? So first for hors d'oeuvres, what I do is right. I just get little plates. Okay. And I just put out things that That's you can good. buy already done. So this so is like, like about display. It's it really, yeah, and it's good. about good ingredients. Just okay. make sure, so really good olives. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes mm -hmm. good olives, yeah. right? And potato chips, you want to put mm -hmm. potato yeah, chips sure. in there? I'm definitely qualified <laughs> for that, okay. <laughs> and then right. sometimes what I do is I do um, cucumbers and, mm -hmm. and sausage together. No, everything really you do is thoughtful. So you what have put these know. ingredients in particular, you feel like they pair well together? You know, each one, whatever people like. Oh, I okay. love to give people a choice. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, somebody likes potato chips, somebody likes Marcona almonds. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, these are the sausage we've sliced, we slice like okay. that. And then one thing that I think people really don't know about is Parmesan shards. Yes. It's just take a piece of Parmesan and just cut ragged shards of it. Oh, shards. Like that. Okay. And put them in a bowl. And they're just. Serve it with a shard. With <laughs> oh, we're going to wine later. Okay. <laughs> but um, bump. Okay, yeah. <laughs> and so you just put, put them like oh, that put in, the a bowl, in. Oh, in a bowl. Oh, the shards in. Oh, that's nice. And let people just help themselves. That's good. And that's a friendly thing to do so they're not struggling over the cheese knife. Ex exactly. <laughs> like I always am. It's like just a like crime that. scene. Okay. Or you, or you slice salami All and right. just put it really thin slices of salami with with cucumbers together in a bowl. Mm. So and now you have I, these cute so bowls, and you've got this charcuterie right. board. So now, how do you display? So just I would just put everything up on the board, mm -hmm. just like that. How's that? How are the taste? Yeah, I mean, it's so think? good. So it's like all of our favorite <laughs> snacks. And she makes Is a good point about the potato dinner? chips. That's like the most favorite. I go to Thanksgiving anytime. and just right. do these right. appies, you know? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. good. So and so you ever serve Doritos? At least you're, I, you know, I love a Dorito. I know. You love Doritos. Serve Doritos. That's the answer. Okay. Okay. And then we have a little wine tasting. Everybody has all kinds of questions about what wine to serve. Yes. White or red? And they're both right. Oh, okay. That's the good news. The answer so is I've yes. Got, 
I, yes, <laughs> yes, serve wine. So I've got um, a little wine tasting. Are you ready for wine tasting? Uh, of course I am. <laughs> okay. So this is a Chardonnay, oh. and that's mm. and you'll just think about how the this my tasting is for you. You'll okay. taste that. That's am a Chardonnay. Am I supposed to swirl and swivel and all that? No, okay. <laughs> you should chug it like you hit chug that beer last week. Oh, ooh, don't tempt me. <laughs> oh, that's very that's nice. That's good. That's really good, isn't it? It's so a that's really a nice one. A Chardonnay, okay. and this is like a Puy Fusse, like a French. Um, a Puy Fusse. <laughs> okay. I drink it all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like the Puy Fusse. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Do you guys like the Puy? Oh, you have red. Sorry. So wait, you have red. So I was wondering, so you, you could do white or red with turkey. It doesn't really or matter. Or both. or both. Sometimes I just put both on the table. Okay, that's So which beautiful. of the two did you like I better? I think I'm a Puy Fusse I person. Am too. Oh, I you am are too. too. I am oh, too. Besties. Okay. okay what so about this? This is a Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a good. Um, it's a good California Pinot Noir. It's really good. Ooh, oh, interesting. interesting. Gosh. And this is a Morgon, Morgon, which is a French wine. It's like a very light red wine, which is really good with turkey. It's really, this one is really Oh, I like that one. I guess I'm into this French like. wine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Good? Let's go to France. Hey, I know. Okay. Because <laughs> we really okay, like I'm sorry. It. We have to go now. Yeah, we're going to France. <laughs> Bye. Which one is this? Which yeah. one are they drinking? What are you drinking? I don't we know. don't know. Katie, think, Katie, do you know? Oh, this not, is the California Pinot. Well, you should try, the try these French ones. Try the, try the right. Morgan. They're very good. So okay, that's hors d'oeuvres and that's wine. I love but that. But dessert. Okay. okay. And I was in France once and somebody brought, the waiters brought this huge long board yeah. with already pre-made things on it. Uh, that was so gorgeous and I thought, why, yeah. am I, why aren't I yeah. doing that at home? Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Mm. So. You, what I do is I alternate things that like fruit mm -hmm. that have color with things like sh big shards of um, mm -hmm. chocolate. Okay. And then lemon bars. Mm. Just just line them up in big blocks. I mean, this beats and pumpkin pie every day, <laughs> week, doesn't it? Well, and everybody yeah. gets what they love. Should I put one on there? You want to put some strawberries yes, down okay. here? Yes. Okay. All right. And. So you we've got lemon bars. Desserts? We've tried them all. And we've tried everything them all. here was store bought. Okay. Absolutely everything. So I mean, do you buy these like to make it look? Cute or what do you yeah, do to I, just? Oh, I'll you show did. You what okay. I did. I what I did was I cut the lemon bars in half because nobody oh, okay. needs an entire lemon bar. <laughs> got it. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then you take a little paper cup. A you little. You can use a white one or a brown one. No one needs an entire lemon bar. And just put put the lemon okay. bar right in it. See, it's all about display. All about presentation. Right. So now it looks like it looks really special, right? It's so beautiful. And then we can do cookies. Always oh, do cookies. cookies. We the need brownies. more strawberries. Oh, it's more strawberries. Okay, one, of, got it. one of the keys to this is bountiful. Okay. Lo bountiful. Lots and lots of them. I love this. Okay, Ina, Beautiful. thank you and so then, much for giving us permission do, to yeah. go to the store. Exactly. <laughs> Why not? You know, yeah. at the end of the day, you want everybody to have something absolutely delicious yes. to eat. And it doesn't mean that you have to spend the no. entire day in the kitchen and, making it. And cutting it into little bites. Beautiful. Look, mm -hmm. look how great this is. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Ina, what are you making for Thanksgiving? Uh, reservation? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, we need yeah, that. Let's, that was let's good. do this. Let's move these down, and we'll oh, do yeah. the lemon okay. at the end. Okay, I love it. Great. It looks like an Do abundance. To, Beautiful. Does it look abundant? <laughs> yeah. And wouldn't you want to have somebody serve that to you for yes. Thanksgiving? I put it in the wrong place. That's okay. That's okay. I know. I know. You want to Betty, put like-minded things together. <laughs> Otherwise, it looks like a dog's <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> But you can find her ideas and a lot more on our website, today.com slash food. Whether you're hosting or a guest, Thanksgiving can be stressful, from cooking mishaps to spills and cleanup. But with some planning, it can be worry-free. When it comes to cleaning, focus on rooms where guests will be spending the majority of their time. Start in the kitchen. That's where you're going to spend a lot of your time. Just a quick wipe down of the counters, maybe a quick dusting of the living room if everybody's sitting around in there. Maybe you have the TV is on, you're watching the parade or some football. No need to panic over spills. A tip from Real Simple Magazine, use salt or shaving cream to remove stains from drinks like red wine from your carpet or shirt. Have your stain um, treatment center like at the edge of the kitchen island. Everything you need to treat stains is somewhere in your house already. Still stumped on how to prep that bird? It's not too late to call the Butterball Turkey Talk Line. We can walk you through from taking your turkey, what looks like this out of the package, into something that looks like this in front of me, which is, by the way, a real turkey, cooked to perfection. To avoid a foul main dish, use a meat thermometer to test and see if the turkey's ready to eat. And remember... 170 degrees in the breast, top of the turkey here and 180 degrees in the thigh between the leg and the body of the turkey for optimum eating quality and food safety. How to carve a roast turkey just in time for Thanksgiving. When you're ready to carve and serve it, check out tutorials on social media or YouTube for advice. With the oven working overtime, remember to use some countertop appliances to prepare your sides. 
You can use your Instapot to keep, um, you can put it on saute setting and it'll keep the gravy warm or keep some vegetables warm for you. Of course, the microwave can keep things warm for you. You can use uh, the air fryer to warm the rolls. A big highlight this holiday. My Thanksgiving <laughs> leftover sandwich. I can't believe someone just ate it. Enjoying leftovers. Have that pie for breakfast on Friday and Saturday. From shepherd's pie to sweet potato pancakes, Erin Chase shares ways to transform extra turkey and sides on her $5 dinners blog. One of my favorites with turkey is like a slider or a grilled cheese even. You're gonna do thin slices of turkey, maybe a little cranberry sauce, a little stuffing even. Set up a leftover station and have your guests help themselves. Consider sending extra food home with guests using a disposable cupcake tin. Just put a thing in each of the little cups and everyone gets the right amount and you sort of send them out the door. And don't be afraid to ask for some help. I cannot express enough how important delegation is when you're hosting a big uh, holiday affair like this. Get everybody working. They want to help you. They all have their special skills. Put them to the test. For today, Vicki Nguyen, NBC News. I love, love that cupcake tin hack. It's a great, I don't know how we haven't thought about that I before. Know. Well, are you going to make your world famous Brussels sprouts? I'm going sprouts? to make my world famous Brussels sprouts. Secret recipe. Tomorrow? Uh-huh. Okay. All right. <laughs> if you're in Kansas, stop by Chanel's place. I don't have what Dylan has. No. I mean, you know, with the, the whole spread no. planned out. 17 God. people headed over to Dylan Dreyer's <laughs> okay. house. to our Thanksgiving 21 extravaganza. Y'all, we're so excited. This group of chefs, easy suggestions for what you can do today to prepare for the big meal. Let's start with Chef Leah Cohen from Pig and Cow here in New York. Did I get that right? You got it right. All right, girl, you're, this is a hack. If you're making gravy mm -hmm. and we all get stuck, what is a special way that we can make it all good? So I like to make a roux, which is um, what thickens a gravy. Cause yes. everyone, you know, you want that to be like nice and viscous and you don't want it to just spill all So to all make a roux, plate. what goes into make it? Make a roux, so I use chicken fat. Chicken you can fat. use any fat butter, oil, but I like chicken fat to give it some more flavor and Good. then flour. And then we whisk in our chicken stock. Let's and then do it. You can add in, you know, any herbs that you want to infuse the the gravy. Uh -huh. um, or you could just go traditional and just do some Old salt and pepper. Yep. Yep. And that's it. That's it. Simple. Yes. That's easy peasy. And you can make your roux in advance the day before. And just you leave it in the fridge? Leave it in the fridge, exactly. All yes. right, okay, great. And that looks like a delicious meal. That looks real yummy. How come that's brown? Just because? Um, I don't know. Okay. No, <laughs> no, no, no who knows? Brown Nobody. Brown no. Brown All right, guys, next up, cookbook author and chef Manit Shohan. And this is really brilliant because sometimes we want our table to look beautiful, right? Yes. And sometimes, quite frankly, we run out of dishes. When, at our house, everything's in the dishwasher. So what should you do? Well. Get some pumpkins, uh -huh. hollow out the pumpkin, and use that as your bowl. I mean, it looks no. so beautiful as a tablescape. This is and, stop. And you don't have to wash this afterwards. You just throw it away. Yes. And, but does it leave any kind of pumpkin-y residue on whatever you may be serving? Not really. What I do is I put a, just a layer of oil in it, uh -huh. so that acts as a barrier. Okay. Yes. And then the seeds that you take out, out wash it well, mm -hmm. and spice it up. 
So over here, guys. I have some spices. I have some turmeric. I have some paprika, oh, yeah. some chaat masala, uh -huh. some dried mint, some garam masala, and some salt. Put some oil, mix it oil. together, and just put it in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes at 350 On degrees. 350? And what do you have? Little hors d'oeuvres? I know. Uh -huh. Or you can use it as a garnish mm -hmm. on soups. On soup. Or, yeah. Brilliant. It's delicious. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All right, Manit, thank you. Now to the pit master, <laughs> Phil the Grill Johnson of Trap House Barbecue. Phil, some people want an alternative. They want the turkey, of course. but they don't want to deal with the whole uh, Exactly. So or, what do you or have? you might have a small group, right? Yeah. So I have a stuffed turkey meatloaf. But what I like about this meatloaf, because it's not a pleasing to everybody, it yeah. is one bite for like Thanksgiving. Okay, I so have got I got it in stuffed with uh, cornbread stuffing sage sausage and then I've got it topped with my barbecue sauce and this is a cranberry smoked chipotle barbecue sauce that you put on top of it. Can I, can I ask you the dumbest question in the world? How did you get the stuffing in the middle of that meatloaf? You know, you, you have, when you start creating the uh, meatloaf, when yeah. you start putting it in a loaf pan, you just kind of create a canoe, yeah. and then you take the cornbread stuffing, you just go through your regular, you know, cornbread, and then when you put your sausage in, in it, step it in there, you don't want to pat it down too tight, too tight, and then just cover it with your meatloaf. And look, it cuts beautifully. Let's see, let's see. Oh, look oh, at this. Come on. <laughs> oh. And wait, in that barbecue sauce, what's, that barbe what's the special stuff that goes in that? So you got... The, the good thing is uh, an apple jelly oh. that gives it its sheen. You got a little bit of a ketchup, a vinegar, molasses, mm -hmm. uh, chipotle, onions, mm. garlic. So oh. it's got that nice flavor. And like I said, at the end, you're getting that whole bite of Come Thanksgiving. Uh, Al, are you totally <laughs> convinced? Oh, ready ready for that. On it. And then we got a side to go with it. We Thank got Mariah you. Gladstone, founder of Indigy Kitchen. And you got a special kick, a trick for kicking stuff up involving garlic. Yeah, um, it's really easy to save yourself a lot of time chopping garlic. Mm -hmm. If you just want to cut your garlic in half like okay. this, drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil. And then we're just going to wrap this up and yeah. you bake it in the oven for about an hour to roast your garlic. It'll soften it up. It makes it sweeter too. It, yeah, it'll bring out all of the nice flavor and it has all those roasted elements as mm -hmm. part of it. And then you have your roasted garlic right. and it's really easy use that to just squeeze on top of your mashed potatoes. It's a little chilly right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Won't quite squeeze. Won't quite, quite squeeze. squeeze. <laughs> but you can use it to season your uh -huh. mashed potatoes or uh, like your vegetable dish like that. And that'll just add all of that garlic flavor right into your dish. That is fantastic, Mariah. Thank you so much. And brings us to tip number 15, sommelier and children's book author, Sarah Thomas. Now, we're, we're talking... We're not going to talk wine, but it's nope. kind of a fun way to create non-alcoholic drinks that everybody in the family can enjoy. That's right. I think it's just as important to be thoughtful about the non-alcoholic beverages mm -hmm. as the wine selections. Sure. Um, and so this is just a really fun way to introduce new flavors for your kids. That's what Kalamata's Kitchen's all about. It's getting kids to try new flavors. Uh -huh. um, so what I like to do is set out kind of an assortment of ingredients and let kids kind of choose their own adventure. Mm -hmm. So you start with some juices. Maybe uh -huh. you have some apple cider or lemonade or tart cherry juice. Um, you introduce flavor through spices and herbs. You can either muddle fresh herbs, mm -hmm. you can make syrups out of the whole spices, um, you can add in some ground spice, uh, like allspice or something. Mm -hmm. And then, my favorite part, you add something to make it sparkle, little, right? Little so, fizzy. Yeah, bubbles make everything better. So, like ginger beer, sparkling cider, mm -hmm. uh, flavored seltzers. The important thing is, like, you've involved your kids in something, so they're more likely to try it. You've introduced new flavors to right. something they already love, mm -hmm. and now everybody has a special drink to toast with. And what are the com couple of the combos you've got here? Oh, so my favorite one, I think, is like pineapple, a little bit of lime juice, allspice, and ginger beer. Um, I also love, I do a tart cherry uh, with uh, some maple syrup and some cinnamon. Um, but you can really just like be creative and have fun with Ooh, all of it. That's terrific. It's fun, right? Yeah. A little rum in here wouldn't be bad. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say no, but maybe not for the kids. <laughs> okay, Sarah, thank you so much. And Chef, thank you so much. Again, you can find everything on our website, today.com slash food.
earlier this morning, 21 chefs entered the Today Plaza to celebrate being together again in 2021. Well, three of those chefs are joining us now to share their top last minute tips and hacks so we can have our best Thanksgiving ever. First up, chef and owner of Pink Beach, our friend, Mr. Matt Abdu. Matt, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Mr. Roker. All right, so what if you can't get your hand on a turkey? A lot, of, some people wait till the last minute. Myself, I wouldn't be that disappointed. What, uh, what would you suggest in its stead? Well, there's tons of options you can do, but I love doing a roasted chicken. If you couldn't get a turkey or there's not that many people coming over this year, want to do something uh -huh. a little bit smaller, go right. find yourself a chicken, roast it in the oven. Everybody loves a good roasted chicken. You can never go wrong with it. Okay, now, so, so say you, you've got the, you got your roasting pan here, but you don't have, what can you do as a hack to keep things, keep it elevated? So if you're cooking at home and you don't have one of these fancy, beautiful roasting pans, but you have some sort of baking dish or baking tray or whatever, um, we just take some aluminum foil and uh -huh. you just want to take it and twist it up and you'll make a wow. little rack that you can put oh. your chicken or your turkey okay. right onto so all the juices will drip down. Uh -huh. And then you have room to put all of your carrots, onions, and celery on the bottom oh, of it. Oh, nice. So that when you're roasting your chicken or your turkey, it's nice and propped up so all those juices can drip down really well. And what about a brine for your uh, a dry brine or a wet brine? So no matter what you're, you're cooking, turkey, chicken, pork, you want to make a brine for it. It's going to add so much moisture and flavor to it. Super simple ratio. We have, for every quart of water, you have about a quarter cup of sugar and a uh -huh. quarter cup of salt. You just dump all those into the bowl and right. you whisk them all together until they're nice, until the solution is clear. And then you want to soak your turkey in that brine for an hour per pound to overnight. Mm -hmm. And then add some fun aromatics. Here we have some bay leaf, peppercorn, some thyme. Put all that in there. You add some garlic, shallots, whatever you want. Make it taste really great and uh -huh. your brine is ready to go. Do you like the dry brine? I love doing a dry brine. For a turkey though, I like doing the wet brine. I like it to be so, totally submersed into that. But the dry brine is great for like steaks or like pieces of chicken thighs or legs and things like that. Okay, for now, me personally. now for my favorite part, the stuffing. <laughs> all right, Marissa, what do we have? All right, so what do you guys do if you're out of breadcrumbs? Uh -huh. Supply chain issues, am I right? Sure. Okay, you guys can just use a little bit of soaked bread or box stuffing. And nothing's wrong with a box stuffing. Nope. It's on you the just grocery store shelves a little bit. Reason. I want to add in some thyme, some cilantro, a little bit of sazon because I'm Latin and that's how we do. <laughs> then, you know, if you have some gluten-free guests, mm -hmm. you can have them make their stuffing or you could provide oatmeal, rice. Really? Instant potato flakes and chicharron. Okay. Pork rinds because oh, pork rinds. chicharrons, of course. That's yeah. how we do. Now, I, I got something for you. Okay. If What's the worst thing that can happen with your stuffing? Uh, you run out of it. <laughs> or it gets mushy. It gets oh, mushy. Oh, you get mushy. Get like, you know what? Can I tell you something? My much kids liquid. just said that yesterday. They, they think Thanksgiving food is mushy. Oh. Exactly. I'm like, guys. Maybe it's just. No, I don't cook, don't even. <laughs> they just don't like soft stuff. Maybe it's a shit. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I don't cook. Well, <laughs> I, got a, I got a solution for y'all. Okay. I call this stuffings. Stuffing. Stuffings. Stuffing muffins. Okay. All right. So basically, what you do is you're going to get a muffin tin, uh -huh. and you're gonna grab your favorite stuffing. It can be boxed, it can be homemade, and you're gonna put That's them. That's a cute idea. Oh. Oh. And you know what it does? Stuffing muffin. It creates crispiness while retaining moisture, but also speeds up that cooking stuffings. process. Stuffing. Yeah. Stuffing. Wow. And clean up. That's Impressive. Good. Very easy. We got a stuffing here for all y'all. You very know nice. what? I have to say, it's very hard to do new things or for us to see new things on the show. That's new for me. Well, thank you. All right. I'll try it out. <laughs> well, now we have son of a Southern chef himself, Lazarus. What are you going to bring us this morning? Okay, so if you're having a wet Thanksgiving, which I plan to do. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. There will be bottles, there will be wine, yes, there will be something yes. to drink. But then sometimes we have leftover wine. Yeah. So what do you do with that wine? I love to make a next day sangria. Oh, let's do it. Come on, let right. me put my stuff down. Okay, so, so you pour your leftover wine in here. Okay. Right? You have some cranberries, you got oranges, you got some fresh mint and rosemary. Put it into your pitcher. Isn't this gorgeous? It's beautiful. No, I and might even take just the home. presentation of it. I, I feel like your guests will feel like, you know nice. what I mean. It's really I great it? for like uh -huh. the next day. It's light, refreshing. You can add well, your good. little sparkling water. Yeah. Lovely. Just like that. Easy and then peasy. pour it right in. Oh, that's good. We only have one minute left. Ah! All right, let's squeeze this in. Okay, so. You got leftover wine, you got leftover so. cranberry sauce. Okay. Why not make a glaze? Oh. Okay, so you can pour that in. Now, we're using pantry ingredients. Okay. We've got some nutmeg, some cinnamon.
allspice. Yes. Bring it into a pot, right? Wait, bring it down to, to reduce it to a simmer. Okay. All right, save one for me, y'all. Yeah. Please. Wait. <laughs> And then you can pour it on your leftover meats. Ooh. You can put it on your leftover stuffing or your muffins. This would be muffins. great for, for the, the sandwiches the next day. Oh, exactly. Oh, yeah. oh my exactly. gosh. Yum. This you guys all get this. a new oh, thing. Oh, my goodness. This is good. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Cheers. Thanksgiving. Cheers. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Mariso and Lazarus, thank you so much, yes. guys. You can find <laughs> all of these this morning's Thanksgiving recipes, tips, and hacks on today.com <laughs> slash food. All right, well, everyone's wishing you a happy birthday, JBH. Yeah, sure. All right. So, Let's all get right. to cooking, though. It's yeah. also Thanksgiving, okay? So we got to move on. Yeah, right? we're celebrating 2021 okay. together again. We got 21 chefs. They've been out here all morning. We're helping to make your planning a little easier. <laughs> okay, yep. starting us off, we are talking turkey with Jet Chef Tila. Jet Tila. Okay, he's telling Anthony us. Anthony Scotto's here, too, and yes. so is high school. Elizabeth Yay! High School. Okay, all right. So we start started. with turkey. You got it. You know, turkey is always <laughs> this balance of like, um, it's dry on the inside. You want to, but you want to keep Wait, it crispy what are on you the outside. Doing with that. Is that um, mayonnaise? You know, no, this is butter. It's butter. seasoned butter. So oh. take butter. And where you put um, it? Yeah, well, okay, okay, in the turkey. No, no. But anyway, you, you take the it? butter, <laughs> put anything you want in the butter, herbs, yeah. spices. So take the skin and you put right it in the, the, the skin. Rest, and you can get it all the way down in this pocket. Nah. And then you take the rest of it, though, you rub it on top, mm -hmm. right? Because you want this you massage. want this crispy skin, massage, massage. Yeah. The, yes. the, the breast not to get dry. And then take that red wine, Ooh, look at that. cheesecloth, and then for that first hour, cover all the exposed skin. Okay. This is going to give you really great color, really I good uh, uh, texture. And then I uh, oh my that's it. Okay, that's cool. It. That's Look how, how beautiful it turns yeah. out. That. And then a little uh, gravy on the side. You rock it. Oh. All right, oh my gosh. Mr. Side Dish. Okay, shall we move on to Brussels? I talk about Brussels for a second because everybody talks about turkey, turkey, turkey. Yeah, turkey, turkey, turkey. turkey, turkey. And you always it's so wind rude. up messing it up. You don't do it more than once a year anyway. Yes, so true that. Sides are all what it's yeah. about. Yeah. Brussels sprouts, yeah. Um, let's say it's two or three days ahead of time. You want to get some things out of the way. Yes. Brussels sprouts, you're going to brown them on a sheet pan, a little olive oil, salt, and pepper. Mm -hmm. At that time that you want to heat them up, now yes. you've had them in the refrigerator, right. take them out an hour before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Put them in a pan. With butter? A little butter. <laughs> Look at that. Is that brown sugar? Yeah. A little brown yeah. sugar. Hit it, Hit it. A little, uh, uh, um, sorry. Orange, orange, orange zest. Get that. Yeah. A orange little zest. bit of chicken stock. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Heat that back up real quick. Oh. You go put it in the microwave. Oh. Done. And we're yeah. done. All right, can we move on to dessert? Okay, dessert. so this is what happens. Sometimes we have a fail, you know? Mm -hmm. And I woke, up, about how I woke me? up one morning, <laughs> what happened? and my Your drunk pie. uncle had taken literally an entire thing of the pie. No. Yes, shoved it in his Fistful. mouth. I woke up. It was nothing mm -hmm. but a mess. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I took pieces of it yeah. and made it into Wait. a trifle. So Wait, what you do, do is you start Break with your pecan up. pie. What? Exactly. Wait, what's that? I mean, we're, okay, this is, what is melted that? ice cream. So melted it's, ice yeah, cream? Yeah, so instead of slaving and making a creme on glaze, you're just going to melt vanilla ice cream. Brilliant. And that's it. Now, if you had some brownie pieces, uh -huh. maybe some chocolate cake, anything else that's just kind of laying around, oh, but add in. that. Little chocolate sauce. Wait, you could what? do caramel if you wanted. I get yeah. why your drunk uncle ate this. And then this. we have the whipped cream. Whipped cream. You could even put a little bourbon in this whipped mm -hmm. cream yeah, yeah, if yeah. you know the drunk uncle. Mm -hmm. Got to Got to make sure <laughs> right. you take care of Randy. <laughs> Old Randy. Hey. Um, let me tell you something though. When you yeah. have all this, yes. a dessert this big, yeah. you know what you need. Yeah. What? what? You need some friends. More people. You need a few more friends. Oh we God. need just a few more friends. <laughs> oh my God. By the way, Farrell, her bestie, Jenna's bestie you for 100 years, yes. Wendy, her it? other bestie and cousin, everybody's here. What is happening? Wait, wait, wait. 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 I mean, what's going on? I don't know. I can't speak. I have no words left. Y'all, this is my friend I Elizabeth. Love we love her. We got her tracker hat. Everybody needs a trucker hat. Right. Oh my brush. gosh. Oh my what? god. What? What? <laughs> and you just had a birthday too recently. Yes, I did. Oh Welcome, to Welcome to 40. Welcome to 40. Y'all, the party is continuing. I want to thank Elizabeth, Jet, and of course Anthony for those tips. Head to today.com slash food. Oh, okay, we need to drink.
are just days away from Thanksgiving, and this morning in our Make Ahead Monday, we're getting some inspiration to add something new to your holiday meal. So in collaboration with Instagram, we've been featuring popular food creators to help us get our holiday menus ready. This morning, we are joined by Skylar Bouchard, also known as Dining, Dining with, with Skylar. Skylar. Hello, and you guys. she's got a twist on a classic <laughs> comfort food. Skylar, welcome. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. We are going to get cooking today. Uh -huh. okay. You guys are going to be working with me. So this, this is something that we could make ahead for, to be ready for Thanksgiving. Absolutely. So we are making vegetable pot pies. You okay. can do this casserole style. You can do it little side style like we're doing in ramekins um, or in little mini cast iron. I love it. It's a lot of nice. fun. Um, and then we're going to make some pear and brie pastries. It smells are you so what's ready? The, the, the start it for this. Good. All right. So this is onion and fennel we have going with some butter. Okay. And we're going to add some salt because you want to season every single layer of your dish with some kosher salt, preferably. Mm. Even the concept of layering just yes. sounds yummy. Yes, that is the the base of it is so important because we're building all of our flavor. Diced so I'm garlic? adding some garlic. We're adding thyme, mm -hmm. rosemary, and sage. Oh. All the things. Yeah. All the things. Yeah. All the fall things. Yes. This almost starts to smell like the base for stuffing. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the inspiration mm -hmm. here with the sage. We're making it kind of fall themed. We want to hang on to fall a little and bit it's longer. Veggie. You can add veggie broth. Yes, yes, that's okay. what we're doing. So we're going to build a roux. And actually, okay. Chanel, I'm going to have you help me. Okay. Al, I know you're a chef. No, chef, no, so. no. I think Chanel. <laughs> Chanel, right. you got to start. Actually, we're going to start with some white, white wine, wine here. Okay. We're building casually a roux. Casually or just go for uh, it? You know, casually pour it in. Okay. Uh, we're going to cook it off as you're pouring it in. And okay. this flour is basically the thickener for mm, our sauce. Without the flour... So we have a soup, and we all don't right. want a soup, right? Well, for the sake of time, yeah. I'll hurry it up there. <laughs> all right, yeah. Let's add all that veggie stock. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you're not like a true vegetarian, you can go chicken stock there here you for go. flavor. Okay. And but sometimes, at least you have this option because there are a lot of exactly. people these days who are trying not to eat meat, so you have something for them that's and still comfort food ish. Absolutely. You know? yeah, what's that? What was that? So this is my secret ingredient, you guys. This is some veggie stock concentrate paste. Ooh, so it has yeah. a lot of depth of flavor. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it really boldens the flavor more. And just some milk. Some whole milk. Whole We're gonna milk. just yeah. mix. That up. Right. So you're gonna, mm -hmm. if you're doing this at home, you do that slowly. Right. Let that thicken. Okay. Wait, and we're gonna Hold add on. all of our vegetables. So in just the pour pot. all of them right into the pot. Are okay. these frozen veggies? These are frozen veggies. Oh, so it makes it that much easier. Even that much better. Easier. Already we prepped. could okay. blanch them all, and it would uh -huh. take different times for different vegetables. Right. Just but just like for sake of it. time, you know, vegetables yeah. are actually frozen after they're blanched. Uh -huh. Okay. So they're all part cooked, and it'll cook evenly and perfectly. Mm -hmm. So okay. here's our filling. Right. We're gonna let that thicken and be right. beautiful. Here we are now. We we have this. weighed it, so we let this come to room temp after it thickened, okay. because that's just a safer way to do it. We okay. put it in the fridge, yep. up to three days. Okay. And now oh, we so this part's already done, and done. you're ready. Yep, it's already done. We're going to scoop it in as our turkey is resting. We mm -hmm. have our oven preheated right. to whatever the pastry instructions will say. Okay. Al, why don't you help me out here? Okay. So we're going to get a lovely square puff pastry. Right. Just plop it on. Feel free to stretch it out. This is thawed out. Mm -hmm. Thawed the night before. That's a really important thing to do. And then we you've like got an egg wash? Cooked, yup. And we're gonna slit it. Oh my God. You can slit it first or egg wash first. This might be my new favorite thing. Yes, I love that for Wait, you, Wait, I can Chanel. be vegetarian if I can wow. do this. And then this goes in the oven for how long? So this goes in, oh it God. depends on your puff pastry. This would probably be 25 minutes. Oh, see, you know, you've pulled out all the stops. Listen. I'm just going to slit yours for ventilation. We don't want it to get soggy. It's That's a very right. important step. I need like the, the yes. steam Ow. escape. Are you the new salt bay? Pardon? Your salt bag. Get a little salt bag. Listen, whoever <laughs> at home, if you like, and that's the thing, you don't even have to be a vegetarian to love this. This no, is exactly. amazing. In fact, you Thank could put you. a little, little, little uh, rotisserie chicken in oh there. Rotisserie, so that's the other thing. What you can okay, use Thanksgiving on. leftovers. And then vegetable, I mean, uh, a dessert time. Exactly. Ooh. All right, you, we're all building them today. So you say mm -hmm. you have leftover puff pastry. Mm -hmm. This is a fun little thing. We're gonna, Come on, Chanel. Oh, now, oh, let's I'm get in here. Eating. We're going to layer some pear slices. Pear and cheese, or yep. you doing so two, two different things? Two different. No, we're doing pear and cheese. They actually oh, complement each other really sweet and savory. Well. Okay. Exactly. It's like the idea of a little apple and cheese. Yeah. That's such a great idea. And I love a good pear, so we're using Bartlett pears and mine. some creamy brie. You can use camembert. See how cute looks? So, oh. no, wait, question. <laughs> Before we run out of time, so then you questions. just do this and then just bake it. It's that simple. That it is that simple. We're gonna add a little honey and a little sea salt. Ooh, yeah. Yep. Honey bay and salt bay is, is Al Roker right here. Look yeah. at that. Oh, uh, this is nice. Oh yeah. So you get the sweet, <laughs> the salty. <laughs> salt. Ooh, wow, try it. Skylar, this is fantastic. Yeah, and Ready? if you want to jazz it up, you can add some prosciutto as well. Oh my god. Oh my god. You like it? Are you kidding me? No, I'm gonna hear you. It's like having your meal and dessert at the same time. Yeah, and this is a great starter or a great dessert, so you can do either which way. 
fantastic. Oh, yes. Sarah, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks for having Head me. Head to today.com slash food. Check out our Instagram page mm. at Today Show, where you'll see more from Tyler oh my and gosh. other creators. Day food 48 hours now. Uh, so now turkeys will be going in the oven, but there's still time to add some last minute dishes to your Thanksgiving menu. So, here to help us is our friend Chef JJ Johnson, the James Beard Award winning chef behind Field Trip in Harlem and right here in Rockefeller Center. JJ, good morning. Good morning. Hey. Always good to have you. So, it smells good. It smells good, right? Look, yep. at, look at these turkey look legs. At these, these are like these. state fair you know, turkey remember legs. Remember, Vicki Wynn said the other day if you want, don't want to do a whole turkey, be creative. Yeah. Now I get it. So my Aunt Jeannie, we make turkey at the table, and everybody in my family fights over the turkey legs. Yeah. So right when everybody would be fighting over the turkey legs, she would bring out a pot from the oven of just braised turkey oh. legs and drop them on the table. Wow. Oh, that's smart. So I think this year you should, if you haven't figured out what to do, you do should it. do some turkey legs. Yeah, so all right. Some salt. Okay. 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 Craig, put some pepper here. Yes, sir. Yep, yep, yes, yep. sir. Get some garlic work. powder. Okay. Some onion powder. Check, check, and check. Okay. Both sides, I'm assuming. So now you're going to put this in the pan here I can for do me? that, yep. Yeah. I'm going to put this huge. Well, put careful. it in there. Know, bigger than my face. Now, now, Aunt Jeannie's turkey legs weren't this big, so I don't know where, where you get these <laughs> where? from. <laughs> so today's show, JJ, is what we do. Then over here, my twist on it is apples, right? In my oh. house, we have apples are in season. What They're kind beautiful. Of these are some honey crisp. Okay. okay. Oh, good. They're in season. Right? They're in season. So some onions, mm. some lots garlic. garlic. Nice. Mm. Lots of garlic. You're a big garlic fan? Oh, yeah. Turn this up. Throw the tomatoes in. Okay. Okay. Now, mm. now, if you're in a Johnson household, you know, or in any household, I think cognac always floats yes. around. Yes. Oh. Plus, when you, when you cook with okay. it, you can sit, you can sip on it too. You can sip on it too. <laughs> so some cognac in here. Oh, wow, okay. Yes, all of it. Okay. Put it all in there. And it burns off all the. And it burns off all yeah. the alcohol. Yep. And then what you do is you have these beautiful turkey lakes here. We put them wow. back into oh, the. Back in. Back oh. in. Right. Wow. That's some okay. turkey stock. Okay. okay. I find turkey unless you make it yourself. Turkey stock's a little harder to find, right? Well, I you know no 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 plug in, no plug intended, but there is a great grocery store Trader Joe's that has. Turkey stock, okay. amazing right now. Turkey right. stock? Turkey hey. stock is great. Okay. Try this. this Try is, these. Look at these. This is good. Okay. Now, you know okay. me. I'm a rice fan. Yes. I'm pouring this over top of rice. All right. Oh, oh so you oh. take that and pour it right, right. over. So I'm bringing rice from Field Trip. I love that. And I'm putting it right on top. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, so grab the this is a massive turkey oh my leg. Massive turkey leg. You can feed three people with one leg. You got to eat oh, like this, though, Chanel. Now, yeah, some right. people tell me, some people tell me you can't bring oh, potato yummy. salad to Thanksgiving. I mean, <laughs> but that's a staple on the African American table is. during Thanksgiving. Bro. I stole this from my mother-in-law. Ah, that's funny because Craig said this looks like his mama's recipe. Yeah. So this ahead. is Mama Chapman's um, uh, potato salad. There's no raisins in a potato salad. <laughs> no raisins. No, no raisins. Yeah. No raisins. Yeah. No, no. So pickled relish. Okay. Oh. Right? That's it. That's some red onions. Yeah. Okay. Some mustard, mustard mayo. Okay. Some green peppers. That's her secret. That's Mama good. Chapman, don't come for me now. I'm giving it know, out. You're giving away her some secret. Some celery. That's good. Okay. Celery's right? the key. Yeah. And man. then is that crunch. The key here is white potatoes. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you're okay. in a supermarket, look for white potatoes. White potatoes. Oh, that's good. And that's then good. you want to cook them where they're not al dente, okay. where they're a little bit mushy okay. and a little bit soft. Mm -hmm. And mix Chapman. it all together. 
But what she loves to do is she'll take some of these eggs. Oh, and put them right on, on top. top. Just oh. like this. I love this and a little cracked right? pepper on the top. Mm. And some cracked black pepper. Oh, oh, yeah. It'll be good to oh, yeah. go. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of my family. This Jay is Jay. Good. And I hope, you know, if you're trying to figure out what oh, to do, delicious. but you got to have potato salad. This is doable. Table. I love how fresh this is. Because everything can get so like, heavy. hot and heavy. Yeah. No, yeah. Eat and overcook the potatoes. This yeah. is fantastic. That's, the That's what it's about. JJ, every time you come, you knock it out of the park. Listen, happy Thanksgiving. This is good. Thank Al, you. I hope you're watching. Happy Thanksgiving anyway, to you. you For sure. Thank, Thank you. you. For these yes. recipes, head to today.com slash food. We'll be right back. I gotta take notes and host this segment at the same time. We're back with Today Food. This morning we're joined by Aaron French, chef and owner of the Lost Kitchen restaurant in Freedom, Maine, of course, also star of the Lost Kitchen series on Magnolia Network. She's sharing two of her favorite Thanksgiving recipes to get us all ready for the holidays. Chef, great to have you here. We've all been talking this morning about turkey is tough. You know, like, I, the, 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 the light meat is really dry, typically. The dark meat people like, some people don't care for it. Savannah and Hoda are here to eat, but walk us through mm -hmm. your recipe for turkey. It's not tough. It's actually mm -hmm. so easy, and it really comes down to the brine, baby. It's mm -hmm. a little mm -hmm. So um, it's, This is day before yeah, sort of stuff, well, no, right? No, you start this on Monday. So start your brine on Monday. Oh, you literally really? have like very low hands on. So water, sugar, and salt. You get that boiling, and then I like to add in this tea, and this is a smoky lapsang sushang tea, mm -hmm. which is gonna make it nice and smoky, and it's made with black tea that's smoked over pine. Okay. And so you remove that, you chill it overnight, and then the next day you're ready just to like throw your turkey in a bag. So you've got the brine here, it's nice and chilled, and you can use a brine bag, mm -hmm. or I like to use my big old stock pot if I want to, mm -hmm. if I can fit it in my fridge. Cover this with the cold brine. You know what's good too is the brine cold Oh, yeah, I know what you're just, after. Just to drink. Uh, Good. Chug! <laughs> it's Thanksgiving. You need it, right? Yeah. So you, you, you put this oh, in overnight. Like so you've done this on Tuesday. So come Wednesday, this yep. has been in the refrigerator That's for 24 right hours, uh -huh. and it's all seasoned because the hard thing about cooking is seasoning. So it's all ready for you. you Wait, Chef, does the brining, does that help ensure the deliciousness of the meat, or is that yes. just about getting the skin crispy? It's going to be juicy. It's going to be filled with flavor, so it's going to be perfectly salty, okay. perfectly sweet. You've got all that flavor. You pull it out on Wednesday, and yep. you let it dry. Dry overnight in the you refrigerator. You can see it. It looks different. So it's nice and dry. You're going to stuff it. When you're ready to roast the next morning, you pull it out and it's ready to go. Stuff in some oranges. Stuff in How about today. stuffing in the yes. cavity? Where are we on that I these days? I don't put no my stuffing in the cavity. No. Just okay. We did that growing up. We put flavor. stuffing in the cavity. Oh, we, we, we would eat it. Did. Oh, that's, that's exactly a no -no now? That's why it's called stuffing. <laughs> right. They don't do, they're not allowed to do that it. anymore. Up there. Can't stuffing do that anymore? Stuff. Okay. Is that against the law now, Aaron? To um, stuff it I, up? I make my stuffing separate. I stuff it with all the things. I want this uh -huh. turkey to be flavorful. So right. a little apple cider on the bottom. 
and then I put a little bit of water mm -hmm. just to make so there's this nice like steam mm. going on. It's so there's like, citrus and there's onions and all sorts oh, of goodies. Amazing. And then mm. I, I'm such a butter fan, but this is where I stray from butter, mm. and I just put olive oil because it See, has I a know this higher is be good. smoking point, and it's mm. going to come out just delicious. And um, you want to bake this in the oven, 350. 13 to 15 minutes per pound for your turkey. So, you okay. is it a far drive for you to get to Long Island? Yes. <laughs> You're in okay. trouble, but pay attention. So, I, would, um, well, I can't make that. Yes. All right, so this, well, 165 this is... degrees is what you're looking for. So, okay. watch your turkey. Yep. So, now we're making pie, and this is um, an unfussy apple pie um, because there's nothing worse than just stressing about pie. And you want right. to be in your, you want to be with your friends on Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. not in your kitchen. So, um, some flour and sugar, a little bit of salt. We, we pulse this with some nice cold butter, super, mm -hmm. super cold butter, and that's just gonna make this um, delicious, delicious pie. crust. Oh, you're making it. Um, it you just pulse chef, it. Is pie inherently harder? I feel like people make cakes, no problem, mm -hmm. all day, every day, but no one makes pies. Mm -hmm. Pie's hard. Is well, you difficult? don't have to worry about this one because you can either make your own crust like this or you can come on down to the grocery store and get some Pillsbury yep. like yeah. that. Wow, that's delicious. Yeah. Exactly. Um, oh my God. So this pie just has some sugar, and it's got some wow. almonds and some flour. So this is the base. Uh -huh. And you just mix it together. Mm. You're going to lay it out on your flat pie surface so you have no stress. Wow. Mm. Try and the pie, guys. It's really good. I just tried it. You just lay your apple slices mm -hmm. down. And then you just sprinkle it with yep. sugar and a little bit of butter. What kind of apples do you like for um, pie? You can use mm. Fuji. You can use Macintosh. Mushroom. You can use Cortland's. <laughs> any of those. Where's my beer half gone? Uh, <laughs> oh, what? You, you again? Oh, what? my God. No, Anna's it. been up for 112 hours. We give, her, we give her turkey. Give her turkey, so she's, she's going to crash <laughs> immediately beer. after this. So. so, how long is this pie? Take? You're going to pop this in the oven for about um, four. Uh, this is 20 minutes at yeah. 400 degrees. And, and it's just a little so, easy yeah, fold you just make this easy, easy fold once oh. you have all Nothing of your apples. Nothing too fancy. On there. You don't need too much technical Nothing skill too fancy. for that. So, mm. that's all filled with your apples. You make the crust, and then um, you more butter on top. More butter on top. Right. A little bit of sugar. And how long do you cook that bad boy about for? About 20 minutes in a nice hot 400 degree. Erin, can I just so. comment on your turkey and yeah, mashed potatoes do. and gravy? It's I'm heaven. Trying. And the sugar in the brine, I never even heard of, but maybe yeah. that's what gives you it that a little sweetness. A little sweetness. sweetness. And the flavor it that adds a little. Mm, yeah. And nice it's and juicy. Not it's just a quick mashed potato trick. Like, why, yeah. how are they so creamy? You, need, the butter? you need to Cream? have a, a vegetable uh, chinois. Okay. Push it through a there. Chinois. What's a chinois. What's a chinois? Can I one click that on Amazon? Very fine sip. And make your husband. We got a one click chinois, everybody. You can find the recipe at today.com slash food. Okay, so right about now, you're probably rounding out your menu for Thanksgiving. Make it a grocery list. but. Do not go food shopping until you see this next no, dessert. Because our pal Dono Skian has a beautiful apple crumble cake that your family will devour. And Dono has a new cookbook out called Everyday Cook, Vibrant Recipes, Simple Methods, Delicious Dishes. He is joining us from his kitchen in Dublin, Ireland. Dono, congrats on the new book. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. It's good to be back. I hope you're well. I'm missing you in studio. Well, we miss you too. Um, I know your book seems to make it easy for everybody, which we love. And we can't wait to see this dessert you're going to cook up for us. So what are we going to make? We're going to make an Irish apple crumble cake. The book is filled with family classics and there's a whole dessert baking section in there that celebrate the sort of things we want to cook around this time of the year. So we're going to make up this Irish apple crumble cake. And the first thing you got to do is soften down your apples. So I'm going to take some uh, peeled, cored, and diced apples, pop in a little bit of water. There's a hot pan over here. Um, a little bit of water. They're going to stew out. And we're going to literally, oh, that's a very hot pan over there. <laughs> we're going to stew them out with a little bit of sugar and basically cook them out until they're really nice and softened down. And what you should be left with is something that looks like this. It's still holding its shape a little bit, but it's gone sweet, soft, and mushy, and gorgeous hey, things are happening in Donald, here. Donald, is there, yeah. I mean, I know there are a million kinds of yes. apples out there. What, what do you like? What should we use to bake? I always get nervous when I say this in America, but do you know what a Granny Smith is over there? Yes, we, we love do. Granny! <laughs> Go with the Granny Smith. It's gonna okay. be gorgeous in here. Okay. It's crisp, it's tart, but it's still got a bit of sweetness, and it's gonna be lovely in this batter. Now, for our batter, I have creamed together some butter and some sugar. I've added my eggs. I've added a little bit of flour in there as well. And we're going to get that stewed apple in alongside oh, oh, a little bit of flour. And now, of course, it's fall. We're thinking of Thanksgiving around the corner. You've got to go with a little bit of cinnamon spice in there. So go as heavy as you fancy here. It's really something that works well with apples. Okay. And for a little bit of rise, we're going in there with our baking powder. We've got a little bit of flour as well. And basically, you're going to bring that batter together. It's quite a dense but sweet mixture, yeah. and it really is a foolproof recipe. Like a lot of the recipes in the book, 
This is about getting results and making sure that if you go to the trouble of cooking, you're going to get a seriously gorgeous result. So with this cake batter, once you've mixed that through, the moisture of the apple is going to get in there, the cinnamons, mm -hmm. all those great mm -hmm. things are going to happen. You're going to pop that into two springform cake tins, uh, cake, cake tins with a little bit of parchment paper. Mm -hmm. It's going to bake off for about three, uh, at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes wow. until a skewer is clear. Um, and beautiful. then you're going to have the four ingredients that bring together this cake. So I have my cake that uh, is slightly iced. For our icing, um, you make up a very simple batter. Um, oh, it's just a buttercream frosting. I put that on top, but the finishing touches of this are the crumble that we're going to create. So wow. I've, put, I've, pre I've just with my fingertips pushed together some flour and some butter. To this, we're going to add some chopped hazelnuts yeah. and then a nice bit of sweetness in the form of some brown sugar. So get that in there, Love get that mixed through, sugar. and this is going to go into the oven as well. So you get this gorgeous sweet crumble mm. mixture that's going to go beautiful over the top of that. So that's our topping into the oven, get that baked off, and you should have something that's crisp Can and crunchy see? and oh, gorgeous. Oh, face wow. over Wait, the you top. bake that you stuff. You bake it. Ah, okay, got it, got yes. it. Yes, yes, and it's sweet and it's crisp and it's crunch and it mm. adds that, you know, because you've got a dense sweet thing going on over here. You're yeah. talking about textures and flavors. And the other thing we're gonna do is slice what up is some more Granny Smith, soften it down with some butter and some sugar and a little bit of water. And then you get these beautiful little strands that are gonna be part of our decoration on top. Oh, but cool. when you have your buttercream frosting, yeah. the trick here and what gives a beautiful sweetness is dulce de leche stirred oh, cream. Are you with me, ladies? Dolce are you with me? I love that. So what do you do to don't, make that okay, dulce at, de leche? Look at that. Buy it. Don't, don't make it. Don't even worry about it. Go Just and bake. Go it. and buy it in the Just store. This it. is Thanksgiving. You're up to your ears this already doing things. Tired. You don't want to be making dulce de leche. It's an easy one. But, you know, at the same time, let's take the shortcuts that we need around this time of year. So we're going to finish the cake with our frosting that's spread over the top. Mm. Those lovely little apple strands, they're going to place in and around here. So you get a bite of sweet apple in every single slice. And then we're going to top it off with our finishing layer over oh, the top. Show us. So Look at place that. Place that on top. Oh. And then literally, you build, you build, you build until you have something that looks as phenomenal as this. Now, can you imagine? Your oh Thanksgiving God, table. No, we can't, Donald. Right we really deck. can't. That is beautiful. <laughs> oh my God! I you've wanna, got it. Oh, you're cutting it. Literally. That's really Donald, not did you, nice. Did you send us one from from Dublin? I, a, a, just a slice? It, it, are you telling me it didn't arrive? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> it must be stuck in the cargo ship thing. You know what? I'd say Al Roker's has his teeth into it already. Oh, yeah, you might just pull it. Donal, thank you so much. What a lovely <laughs> dessert. You, to get this recipe, you can head to today.com slash food, or you can check out Donal's new cookbook. It's called Everyday Cook. It's at today.com Thank you, Donal. That shop. looks beautiful. And we'll be back after this. We're back with Today Food. This morning, we are in for a treat. Not only is Harry back, doing a cooking segment with me, yay. Erin <laughs> uh, French is here. She's a legend, isn't she? 
for sure, at least a legend. Uh, a culinary mastermind from Freedom, Maine, Aaron has built a restaurant so popular you have to mail in a postcard and get picked in a lottery. In a lottery. To get a reservation, right? It's called The Lost Kitchen. Aaron also stars in a Magnolia Network show by the same name. Hi, Aaron. It's so nice to meet Good you. Good morning. Well, Harry made us all fall in love with you when he did that story on you a little bit earlier this year. Yes, when he came to Freedom. And um, I, I told you right before during the commercial, I didn't think I could be excited about squash. Oh, okay. Well, we can change your mind because if you like donuts, then you'll like this. It's I like exciting. donuts, guys. Donut yeah, squash. I mean, want to tell you, already into it. it's yeah. crunchy. It's insane. Go, SG. Okay, you're going to love it. Okay. All right, oh, so, okay. um, yeah, so we're making these squash rings, and yes, Harry, you're right on it. Um, you just want to... Delicata squash is great. You can cut them into these little rings. You're going to seed them. If you can't find delicata, another good one would be butternut, and you could just use a donut cutter mm -hmm. and which kind of one is delicata the there? Uh, delicata is At here, and then your one? butternut okay. here. So right. you have a couple. And, but how do you get your seeds out? You just use your spoon, Harry. You can yeah. get right in there, and don't be shy and okay. take them out. Um, the Something great thing like about that. delicata is that the skin is actually edible, so oh, it's okay. tender, it's edible. You, you can roast it. it just oh. like this. Oh, it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Very nice. What you want to do is just drizzle it with a little olive oil, mm -hmm. um, lots of good salt, mm -hmm. and then um, pepper. And then a little bit of fresh nutmeg. So you just want to grate that. That's like the taste of fall. So Ooh. that goes in the oven. How long? Um, until it's done, about 25 minutes or so. Okay. It's okay. pretty okay. easy. So you pop it in the oven, it's done. Um, then we're going to make this salad. We're basically stuffing this. So we have pears here. Mm -hmm. And you can use a mandolin, but if you're scared of a mandolin, a good old knife works. <laughs> It's okay. I'm scared of all sharp objects. Don't be afraid. It's pretty simple. I opened a finger with a mandolin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I've got a few scars to show idea. you, too. <laughs> so all this is is just um, some, some fine-cut pears, and then in the bowl, we have some um, nice, salty feta cheese. Mm -hmm. There uh, are some dried uh, cherries. You can use cranberries if you want. Dried you could cherries. use apple if you want. Okay. You really? Just, you can add yeah. sub, sub apple in there? Make it your I own. I like the spice from the pear. Though. Make it your own. It's right? whatever it is. So nice fall flavors. What's okay. the magic? This there? is my secret sauce, and I think I told you about this when you came to Maine. We made this. So this is my secret sauce, which is shallots and rice wine vinegar. We just it. So that's it? And oh. a little olive oil. But okay. the rice wine vinegar is a little sweet. Mm -hmm. You macerate the shallots game when they get changer. soft. Totally you didn't change. pour the whole thing in there, though. Well, no. you kind of just... Okay, you just eyeball it. <laughs> you, macerate, you macerate the shallots? Macerate the shallots. How, how does one macerate a shallot? You just add a little acid to it. It softens mm. it. It brings up the flavor. It just makes things not so just oniony in your face. It's mm -hmm. just sweetness. Oh, awesome. So the next thing we do over here is we're going to fry the squash. And this mm. is really simple. Oh. Um, Harry, I'm going to have you make the tempura, which is just a bit right. of flour. Right. You're going to whisk this in, and it's just a bit of uh, club soda. Oh. So super, super, super simple. And then what you do is you have, um, you have the squash here, the squash mm -hmm. rings. We've just dredged them in a little flour. And then once Harry makes this up, we're just going to get these right What should it look Close. like? Like sort of a like joey looking Like a pancake thing? batter. Okay, yeah, yeah, like pancake a pancake batter. batter. Okay. So you're just going to get these dredged up, and then we're just going to drop them right in the fryer. Okay. Look, so we get them fried. Clear. Wow. I love anything in a fry later. You don't have to fry this. If you don't want to go through the mess, what would you do then? You could just serve it roasted and it's fine. No, okay. Fry it. Fry it. Fry it. Yes. Oh, nice. fry. But if we want Please. donuts, we want fries. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> we need to go fried. So I grew up in a diner, so give me anything fried. Yes. And, and I'm in. So just um, kind of just cooking them until they're nice and toasty brown. Mm -hmm. They'll come out and they'll be beautiful and they end up. So this okay. is what we get, our friend. Oh, our friend yeah. Guys, I want to watch you. You just put the beautiful salad it's right inside it. Wait, tuck it. the salad okay. inside and then pop it Here's with a little bit peanuts. of these. Yeah. Um, so before we go to the pie, peanuts. can I just say, Finding Freedom, the book, unbelievable oh, read. Okay. That's what we talked about last we April. Did. We did. And there we it is right there. Very if you're looking for a Christmas gift, Get okay. one of those, yeah. you'll, and, a, and lots of clean. Oh my gosh, Stop I told right you. Now. Let's Let's get out of here. Harry, fry it. No, you're it's die. so good. So squash you can is serve the best this squash. just as like simple, serve it up like this, individual, or if you want to make like, put it on a platter, you can mm -hmm. serve this it's as so a good. That is side dish. Is there an extra one. one over there? Okay, wait, wait, more there's coming. more. Pie. We have pie. Squash pie. You have to finish with pie, and this is like, this is my mom used to make this, and it is like pumpkin pie meets cumulus cloud. It's like fluffy. What? Donuts cloud? Yeah. So it's yummy. Cool. It's very okay, simple. So what you do? You have mm. pre-made pie crust, and then you just make, this is all the flavorings of your typical uh, pumpkin pie. Mm -hmm. And then um, the difference is you add a little gelatin to this, oh, and you, you don't have gelatin. to bake it. Gelatin. You don't have to bake it, and it's huh. the egg whites. Mm. And then you just let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. It's ready to go the next day. It sets up, and you have this beautiful pie. Wow, so we get in, just, get in there. You just top it. Quick question. Like cool whip cream. What's your pie crust secret? Okay, pie crust secret, lots of butter. Cold, cold, cold butter. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Delicious.
But wait, is that squash? I'm so confused. So this is squash. So I make this with um, a, a, you just roasted squash and mm -hmm. make a puree. I mean, you're going to make puree wait, for... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Squash. Savannah. So yummy. That squash. look on your face? Are what? you a squash? I love convert? squash. I have seen squash. <laughs> got squash no, no, so in two Aaron, ways. You use the pumpkin spices, but, but squash. I roast squash. If yeah. you want to make it your own, but guess what? You can also use a good can of one pie. If, you know, you okay. Just, Aaron, this, this I got to say, this is a 10 the, plus plus. Yeah, right, this right. pie, everything. everything. So so, you sold us on squash. Light. Light uh, if you want to get these recipes, go to today.com slash food or send a postcard to Aaron. That's the only way to get to the last oh kitchen. <laughs> Except for you can watch it on Discovery Plus. Yes. Thank you, Aaron. Great you. job. Thank Come you. back. Are you ready to get cozy this winter? I'm Today contributor Alejandra Ramos, and I can't wait to bring you four delicious dishes that will brighten up your busy holiday season. From delightfully delicious sides to a surprisingly simple yet elegant main, stay tuned because we've got you covered. This is Winter Essentials on Today All Day with our sponsor, Better Than Bouillon. Mac and cheese is one of my go-to crowd pleasers. You truly can't go wrong with this creamy comfort food, but as much as I love the classic recipe, sometimes I wanna mix it up and try something a little more exciting. This Manchego mac and cheese with chorizo hits all the right notes. It's cheesy and decadent with the perfect hint of spice. Let's get started with our sauce. So the secret to a great creamy mac and cheese is a bechamel sauce, which is what we're gonna put all that cheese and delicious flavor into. We've already got a stick of butter melting in here, and you wanna do it over kind of a low to medium heat, and then you can add some regular all-purpose flour in there. I like to use a whisk for this so that I can remove any kind of lumps. And the point here is to really cook down that flour so you're getting all the taste of the raw flour out. All right, we're almost there. It's starting to smell sort of rich and nutty, so you can tell that that flour has started to cook down. And now we're gonna slowly, slowly add our milk. Make sure that you keep whisking so that that flour butter base doesn't turn into any lumps. All right, there we go. All right, so we need to simmer this for about 10 minutes. That flour and butter is gonna thicken the sauce and you'll see how rich it gets. And now I'm gonna tell you the perfect way to make sure you have the sauce ready to go is you use a spoon. You wanna swirl it right through. And as long as it can hold and coat that back of the spoon, you can even do a little swipe like that. That's how you know it's perfect. And take this off the heat. So we're really gonna pack in some flavor by using the Better Than Bouillon Roasted Chicken Base. I'm using a heaping tablespoon of this, and this is gonna add seasoning and a little bit of depth to our sauce. As soon as it hit the sauce, I could smell that delicious roasted chicken aroma. So cozy. Now we're gonna add some smoked paprika. This adds color and a little bit of that smokiness. Another one of my favorite flavors, and it works really well with the chorizo. And now the star of our show, it wouldn't be mac and cheese without some cheese. So we are using two kinds of cheese today. I'm using Gruyere, which is really great for melting creaminess, and then the Manchego, which is a little bit sharper and adds this amazing kind of grown-up complexity to our sauce. And they both go in at the same time. And to start in, the heat from the bechamel is going to melt that cheese. All right, so this looks great. Now we can work on the chorizo. This is one of my favorite ingredients. I use it all the time, and this is a fully cooked chorizo. It's different than the fresh Mexican chorizo, so make sure you get this one because the flavor profiles are totally different. For this, I'm just going to cut it into sort of a dice, and then we're just gonna go through and cut them into little cubes. All right, so my pan is turned to medium high and I'm gonna saute that jody, so it just takes a few minutes. All right, and you see, once it hit that hot pan, the fat started to come out. There's no need to add any olive oil or butter or anything to this. The heat is really gonna render the fat that's already in the sausage. It smells amazing. It's gonna be so crispy and delicious. The one rule is you can only try like one or two pieces. Don't eat it all before you add it in the mac and cheese. That's a rule I always break. This looks perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. I can. Turn off the heat now. And then I'm just gonna use a slotted spoon to take out the chorizo. A little paper towel on the plate is great just to kind of absorb that extra fat. There you go. 
last bit. Pro tip, fry an egg in this, it's gonna be delicious. Now we are gonna bring all of these flavors together. It is about to be a mac and cheese party. So we've got the sauce, and if you wanna just give it a little stir, just to make sure it's nice and loose. Oh, it smells fantastic. I'm going to add that chorizo now. All of this goes in. Ooh, so gorgeous. So fantastic. That's nice and evenly distributed. And now we can add the pasta, which I've already cooked. And the trick whenever you're making mac and cheese or any kind of baked pasta is you wanna go two, maybe even three minutes less than what the package instructions tell you to do. Because remember, it's gonna continue to cook in the sauce, in the oven, and nobody wants mushy mac. All of that goes in. I'm using orequiete, which is my all-time favorite pasta shape. It means little ears. And remember, anytime you make pasta, you want to save a little bit of that pasta water. This is liquid gold, and this is gonna help you kind of loosen it up a bit. So just add it as needed. The texture you're going for here is kind of like a creamy sort of stovetop mac and cheese texture. For this, I am using just a regular kind of baking dish, ceramic, whatever you have, but you do wanna make sure you butter it first. Make sure every last bite goes in. Not wasting a single bite of delicious mac and cheese. Gorgeous. Then just use your spoon to kind of flatten it out a bit. Make sure it's nice and evenly spread out throughout your pan. And now for a final blessing. We've got more cheese. Just sprinkle this all over. This is the manchego. And little dots of butter. They'll melt and bubble as we cook. All right, this looks perfect. It smells amazing. And now for the finishing touch, we're gonna pop it into the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes or until it's bubbling and golden on top. Some easy ways to make weeknight meals feel special are lighting a candle, being intentional with your meals, plating them nicely, putting the phone down, and really just enjoying the food and the people that you're with. This looks amazing. Once this comes out of the oven, you can let it rest for about five, 10 minutes, and then you can dive right in. All right, I'm ready to try this. I'm gonna serve myself a nice healthy portion. Oh, so good. You can smell that delicious smoky sauce, the chorizo. The sauce and cheese is so creamy. This is everything I want in a mac and cheese. Okay, gotta get that perfect bite, so make sure you get some pasta and some chorizo. This looks good. Mmm. Mm. So delicious. It's creamy, cheesy. It's got a little bit of a hint of that smoky spice from the chorizo. This is the perfect grown-up mac and cheese. Up next, you don't want to miss my savory braised short ribs. My definition of a comfort food is something that feels cozy, nostalgic, and tastes incredible. In the colder winter months, I love making hearty, aromatic dishes. 
These braid short ribs are perfect for entertaining, but they're incredibly easy to make. Plus, the leftovers are perfect for any weeknight meal. Let's get started with our braising liquid. So we're starting off with one whole Spanish onion. Just pop that back in. You wanna do just like a nice rough coarse chop, nothing fancy. Then we're gonna do one can of pumpkin puree. This is a delicious winter favorite and I love how it adds a little bit of sweetness to our short ribs. Get all of that in. We're also gonna do some tomato paste, which adds nice, rich, concentrated tomato sweetness. And the star of our flavor party, we are using the Better Than Bouillon Italian Herb Base from the Culinary Collection. This has garlic and herbs. It's so rich with flavor, and it's gonna add all of the seasoning to our sauce. For this, we're gonna do a quarter cup, and I'm just gonna spoon it out here. And that just all goes right to the blender. Perfect. And now some red wine. I'm using a dry red wine. And you want to put in about two cups or so, depending on the size of your blender. And we're just going to puree until everything is nice and smooth and evenly combined. This looks perfect. It's nice, everything's creamy, evenly combined, so that when those short ribs are braising in it later, you know they're gonna get all of that flavor action. Speaking of short ribs, it's time to sear these off. So I've got a nice, heavy Dutch oven here. You really want a good, heavy pot because you're gonna be cooking these for a while. My pot has heated up to a medium-high heat, and I'm just gonna add a few tablespoons of vegetable oil. You want a nice, neutral oil here. And we're gonna start adding our short ribs. And so for this, we're gonna brown them a couple minutes per side. So typically, when I sear short ribs, or really any kind of meat, I would add salt and pepper before doing so. But since we're using the Better Than Bouillon Italian Herb Base, this has all that great seasoning in it, and it saves us a step. So what we're doing here is we're rendering that fat. We want to see that meat shrink up a little bit and get kind of crispy and brown on all sides. All right, these are looking great. You really want, oh, see that gorgeous color on the side there? All right, these look gorgeous, perfectly browned on every side. We can take these out. We're just gonna let them rest and hang out while we do the rest of the batch. So searing those short ribs rendered out a lot of that fat, and I want to remove most of that. You want to take out about, ooh, maybe like three-fourths of whatever you have in the pan here. Just pour that out. This. There you go. Leave a little bit at the bottom there. And now we can put the short ribs right back in. Just nestle them into that pan. Beautiful. We're going to add our braising liquid and just pour this right in. Look how rich and luscious this is. And we're gonna do the rest of our wine just all into the pot. Again, this is a dry red wine, but if you don't like to cook with wine, you can even use something like pomegranate juice or cranberry juice, that would be delicious here. And then we're gonna add some water, about two cups, and some delicious aromatics. This is some fresh rosemary and bay leaves. But the trick is remember how many you put in so you can remember how many you need to pull out. All right, so now we're just gonna cover it Bring this up to a boil, and then once it's bubbling and boiling in there, we can reduce it to a gentle simmer and let those babies cook. You want this to simmer about three to four hours, and that's gonna vary depending on the size of your short ribs, the pot that you use, and of course, just the strength of your stove. This looks amazing. That sauce is thick and rich. The short ribs are super tender. Some of them even fell off the bone, which is fantastic. That's exactly what you want. So now you want to just pull out those herbs. So make sure you get the little stems from the rosemary, all those bay leaves. This is why I tell you to remember how many you put in. Anytime that I cook something on a slow, low braise, I like to freshen it up at the end. And the perfect way to do that is with some lemon. So I just add a little bit of fresh lemon zest. I just kind of go in like this. I sort of collect it in the top. There's so much amazing flavor and aroma in the lemon peel. This is just really gonna brighten up our dish. Fantastic. And then we're gonna use the juice too. Squeeze this right in. Think of it as like splashing some cold water on your face after a nap. It really just kind of freshens everything up. 
Time to give these gorgeous short ribs a try. You know I love a garnish, so let's add a little something fun on top. I've got here some creme fraiche, which I think is just so fantastic because again, there's a little bit of acidity in the creme fraiche that is gonna be so great with these rich short ribs. I just dollop that on top, so pretty. And then we're gonna do a little bit of fresh parsley on top. If you prefer cilantro, that works too. I love that. Just, again, a little bit of freshness. And then the perfect finishing touch, just a little sprinkle of flaky salt. How gorgeous is this? What a perfect winter meal. See how tender it is? You don't even need a knife. This falls right off the bone. Mm, it is rich. There's a little hint of sweetness. You're getting all that gorgeous garlic and herbs from our Italian herb base. I love dishes like this this time of year. It's rich, it's hearty, it's super cozy. The perfect way to end your day. Up next, I'm gonna introduce you to one of my childhood favorites, tostones. Stick around. Welcome back to Winter Essentials on Today All Day. One of the first dishes my mom ever taught me how to make is tostones. These salty, crispy fried plantains have a place in just about every Puerto Rican meal. While tostones are perfect with just a sprinkle of salt, they're even better with a couple zesty dipping sauces. So let's whip those up first. First up is mayo ketchup. Here we've got some mayonnaise in a bowl and then we're just gonna add some ketchup to it. And then we're gonna spice it up a little bit. We're gonna add some fresh lime. And then of course, it would not be a Puerto Rican recipe without a lot of garlic. All right, this looks perfect. I'm gonna set it aside for now and let it hang out. Now we're gonna make a garlic citrus mojo. We're gonna start off by mashing some garlic. So I'm gonna add a little salt here and this just creates some friction. And then we add our garlic cloves a few at a time. And then we just mash. You really kinda want this to be a nice sort of a coarse paste. Thing that looks like this. Oh my gosh, this is the most fragrant smell. Would wear this as perfume. I don't know if my husband would like that, but I'd do it. And now we're gonna add a lot more fun flavor. Some dried oregano and some cumin. Gonna mix that in. And now we can start adding our liquids. We're also gonna be using our citrus juice. Classic mojo is made using naranja agria, which is sour orange. And those are these guys right here. They are different than the typical orange. I'll show you inside. 
It's not super juicy, but the juice in here is very, very tart and it's absolutely fantastic. It's almost like two citrus combined. But if you don't have access to these, you can also just use half lime juice or lemon juice and half oranges. It works just as well. So you can pour those in. So whisk that all together. And then we're gonna add our olive oil. And I like to kind of drizzle this a little bit at a time as I whisked to kind of emulsify it a little bit, which really means just to kind of combine that citrus and the oil together. Beautiful. And we're gonna finish this off with a little bit of freshly cracked black pepper. All right. This looks amazing and ugh, smells even better. Creamy. We're gonna start making our tostones. Tostones use green plantains. I love plantains. They're sort of a starchier version of bananas. They're definitely in the same family, but they're not like the breakfast banana you usually eat. These are green because they're not super ripe, and that means that they're not very sweet. To cut plantains, you wanna start off by trimming the ends. The best way to take it off is to kind of run the edge of your knife along the peel, just to kind of loosen it up. And then you sort of stick your finger in there. It can be a little sticky. There we go. And just sort of force it off. Once you get in, then it comes off pretty easily. And then you just keep repeating. Beautiful. Tostones are fried twice. For that first fry, we wanna cut these into about two inch pieces. And I like to add a little bit of a bias, so basically just a little bit of an angle there. So we've got our oil up to 325 degrees and we're just gonna drop them in gently, just like this. And you wanna see those bubbles start to form. Gorgeous. All right, those are bubbling there. We're gonna let them go for about two or three minutes. You don't need them to fry completely because we are gonna bring them back in. So you really just want them to get a little bit darker, like a golden yellow. All right, these look ready to come out. And I just like to drain these on like a paper towel lined baking sheet or plate even. That's what my mom would do. See how they have that slightly darker golden color? That's exactly what you're looking for. Gorgeous. And then we repeat with the rest of the batch. All right, so make sure you keep that oil warm because we're gonna use it pretty soon. And now it's time to smash these plantains. You wanna work with them when they're still warm. And if you have plastic wrap or you can use parchment paper, which is what I like, that's gonna help keep the plantains from sticking to your surface. So a little parchment paper, a little plantain in the middle, kind of put it in the center there. Smash it. Just a little twist is all you need. And voila! Perfectly smashed plantain. Don't feel like you need a perfect oval or circle or anything like that. In fact, I think the best tostones are the ones that are like a little bit crazy shaped. Perfect. All right, that's our last one. Now these are ready to go back into the hot oil for that second fry. The smell of the plantain frying in the hot oil just reminds me of my mother's kitchen. These are gonna fry for about one to two more minutes. You still want it to be nice and golden. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. Oh, these look amazing. They smell so good. As soon as you take them out, you wanna hit them with a little bit of salt while they're still hot so that the salt can stick to the tostones. Perfect. Now I'm gonna repeat the rest of the batch. All right, we've got our sauces, we've got our tostones. Now it's time to taste. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of each of these sauces into these cute little serving bowls. Make sure you get some of that garlic in there because that's where all the flavor lives. Oh, I can smell that citrus, I can smell the garlic. This is just one of my most favorite things. You've got the salty, crispy tostón and our fantastic dipping sauces. Uh, I can't choose which one, so I'm just gonna go for a little bit of each. Starting with that delicious mojo. Mmm. Spicy, salty. Let's 
give them mayo ketchup a try too. Oh, these are amazing. Who made this? So salty, crispy, spicy, delicious. These taste like home to me. Up next, we've got a holiday drink that comes to life during this magical season. A tradition during the holiday season for my family, and I think for a lot of Puerto Rican families, is making coquito to give away. So you make a big, huge batch of it, and then you put it in bottles with little labels, and you can bring it to friends, to neighbors, family members. Growing up, my mom was in charge of making coquito, and my dad would bring batches of it to work with him. But in recent years, I've totally taken over the job, which my mom is actually glad I've taken over that task. <laughs> she was happy to relinquish the duty. Welcome back to Winter Essentials on Today All Day. Coquito has its own rich culture and traditions behind it. Just one sip and I feel like I'm on the island celebrating Navidad with my family and friends. If you love coconut like I do, this is going to be your new go-to drink around the holidays and maybe even any time of year. Coquito is very simple to make. Basically, if you can open a can, you can make coquito. For this, we're using just a few pretty easy to find pantry ingredients. We're starting off with coconut milk. That goes right in. Next up is some evaporated milk. This is cream of coconut. And now for some condensed milk. This is a very decadent holiday drink. Oh, I love that. How good that looks. And so this is the base of our coquito. Now we can add a little bit of flavor. I love adding some cinnamon, pure vanilla extract. That goes right in. And then I love to add a little salt. And a lot of people don't add the salt, but I like this because I think it really balances out all that rich sweetness and it just sort of makes the flavors pop. All this into your blender and you just want to mix it up for about a minute just so every ingredient is really, really combined. Perfect. Oh, you'll see it's going to be like a little bit frothy on top. So fantastic. Now this you want to pour it into a large pitcher or a really large bowl. And now for the fun stuff. This is white rum. Obviously a Puerto Rican cocktail would not be a Puerto Rican cocktail without rum. I admit that I'm very generous with my rum and my coquito. I do a full three cups. All right, wanna give that a little stir. And I'm also gonna drop in a couple cinnamon sticks. These will infuse the drink with some additional cinnamon flavor. Plus, special little touch. I love adding a whole vanilla bean. So this is the whole vanilla bean, and in order to get that flavor out, what you wanna do is you wanna hold it down with one finger here, use a paring knife like this, just to split the bean, go all the way down the side, and that sort of releases all that delicious flavor in there, and we can just drop them right in. One, two. Now, coquito is best served chilled. I like to pop it in the fridge for at least two hours before serving, but you can make this in advance the day before, a few days before, as long as it's nice and chilled. After chilling is for a while, the coconut milk can sometimes thicken up a bit, so it's always a good idea to give it a good stir to make sure everything 
is nice and loose and you get all those wonderful flavors. Because of the richness, I also really recommend serving it either with ice or even in just a very small cordial glass. Today we're gonna go with ice. Let's pour it in. Beautiful. And I love a garnish. <laughs> so we're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon on top just to dust it over. And a cinnamon stick. Look how festive this looks. Take a little sip. Mmm. The coconut, the rum, the cinnamon, all of these flavors taste like Christmas to me. This is the perfect holiday drink. I hope you try all the delicious dishes we made together today. I had so much fun sharing them with you. Salud! Uh, this morning on Today Table, the perfect dish for your Labor Day weekend celebration is going to prep those end of summer parties with a recipe from today contributor Alejandro Ramos, who's got something for everyone. Nice little surf and turf, uh, yes. niswap platter. Alejandro, here we are. What do you think? All right, let's get ready. All right.